Welcome into the Insiders. I am James Ham. Joining me, Jesse Tapia, today. Kyle is on vacation. We're finishing up the week without Kyle. And Jesse, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Is it falling or did it fall? Has it fell? <laughs> Has it already fallen? Has it already fallen? Are we past that? <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is one of those moments in time where you got to take a step back and actually think about what's happening and, and try to like put it in perspective and, and try to like kind of, this is tough. And I, and I think today we get a lot to cover. Um, the Sacramento Kings fell to the new Orleans Pelicans, one thirty-five to one twenty-three. Uh, absolutely brutal loss. It, there were times where the Kings were down by a ton. Um, there I mean, were times... after after that first quarter, I figured, oh yeah, it's going to be ugly today. They yeah. did fight back, but ultimately, I mean, New Orleans pulled away again. Yeah, I, I mean, it really felt like every time it was such a game of runs. Like it was the strangest thing I had ever seen. Like in in the early part of the game, like there was multiple like six point and nine point runs. Then there was a fifteen point run. Then the Kings have a fifteen point run at the end of the first and early second. Then they get hit with like. This monstrous run by the Pelicans. It, Basketball. It's a game of runs. I guess it was a game of runs. Uh, but look, I, I think this is one of those moments where you you do have to kind of step back and have some sort of perspective. And uh, we've got, again, we've got tons to talk about. We're going to get to six quick thoughts. We're going to preview the King Suns game because this this thing isn't over. Yeah, season's not over. No, it's not over. Still a chance at the playoffs. Yes, it was ugly, but I mean, there's games to be played still. Yeah, and and I think uh, for fans out there, like we'll do a little bit of a counseling session later in the show, um, because I think that there is there's something about like the fan perspective versus the team perspective here, and I know that that fans have like 16 years of angst built up because of the lack of playoffs forever. And then you finally get a taste of the good life, and then you feel like your team is letting you down. Yeah, it's just you don't want to go back either. Yeah, I, I totally get that. But at the same time, you have to remember that the fan perspective is so much different than the perspective of the team because this is year two for the team. Now, De'Aaron Fox has been there for like seven years, right? But this is his second year under Mike Brown. This is his second year with Demonis Sabonis full time. His second year with Keegan Murray full time. Like this is the first like iteration of this team. And th I think they know there needs to be changes this off season, but at the same time, like you have to give them the like sort of the leeway to, to find themselves here and, and to under, and to go through this process. Yeah. Well, I mean, Darren Fox is in the locker room talking like the fans in the chat house. Yeah. I might need to upgrade off HB in the off season or anything like that. No, they're like, come on guys, we got to figure it out um, and just do it like ourselves and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Like, yeah. They're trying to get it on their own. Well, that, and they haven't given up. And, yeah, and, no. and I think that that's the, the deal. Like, uh, I think, you know, kind of a weird analogy would be, you know, if you if you have kids that are like they're different, you know, they're the age gap between your kids is kind of wide. Right. And you you have all these expectations. You're a parent, you're a parent, you're a parent with someone and, and, and they get to a certain age. And then and then you have the other one that's coming up. Your expectations for your second child is usually or your third, whatever it might be, your fourth it's usually going to be somewhere around what the expectations are for, for your olders, but they all go through something different and they, and you can't expect the same thing. And, and everybody like, you know, some kids are smarter than other kids and some kids are, are more social than others. And there's all these things that you just don't want to acknowledge. You just want to say, okay, this, it worked the first time and, and now it's not working. And, and I think with, uh, with a lot of, Kings fans at this moment, they're just so frustrated and, and the angst is building. And well, yeah, they haven't had a moment to be like, oh, yeah, Kings are playing well. Like, everything's going good. They haven't had that moment at all this season. It's just more so like, oh, we're not playing well. Oh, they won two games. Oh, not playing well. Won two games, not playing. It's just been, it's just, yeah, there's been no moment for Kings fans to really just be like, oh, like, enjoy this team. I feel like, yeah, you know what? I think maybe that's part of it. Like, there, there hasn't been the ability to enjoy it. Where last season it was like, Last season was all vibes. Like once we got to the second part of the season after the All Star break, yeah. Kings turned it up. We're like, oh yeah, who are we playing in the first round or whatever? Like, oh maybe who are we get in the second round and stuff like that. It was I, all vibes last year. I even think like the first half was like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. Like somebody pinch me. Yeah, there's six games over five hundred. Now there's seven. Yeah, yeah, and, and so I think it's just like a little bit of like step back moment here, right? And like there's gonna be a post mode. Po post-mortem on this season there there always is unless your team wins a championship there's always going to be like this long discussion afterwards and 
we're not there yet. We're not there yet because the Kings still have an extremely important game against the Phoenix Suns tonight. They still have an extremely important game against the the Trailblazers on Sunday. And then, like, look, one way or another, they're going to have a play-in game. Whether it's a home play-in game or a road play-in game, we don't know. Whether it's one play-in game trying to fight for a second one or one play-in game trying to avoid fight, playing for a second one, we don't know. We don't, yeah, they're going to have that opportunity. We know that. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, yeah, lo again, lots to uh, to dive in here. Um, so people understand what's happening at this point. With the loss last night, the, the Kings slid into a three-way tie with the Lakers and Warriors. They all have the exact same record. They're all sitting. They're tied for 8, 9, 10. The Kings are 2-2 two and two against the Warriors this season. They are... Uh, four and zero against the Lakers, and so uh, they're division rivals. So not only do they they have tiebreakers because of uh, like like no matter what they're going to have the tiebreaker. So the Kings have the best division record in the Pacific, right? Yes, they do, and they they also have the best conference record, and they also have because of their four zero victory over the Lakers, they also have the best cumulative uh, win percentage against the three teams, right? Uh, of of the three teams. So if they all end up tied, the Kings would get the higher seed of that group. Um, but there's also the possibility that the Kings can climb back up to the seven. So what they can do is if they beat the Phoenix Suns tonight and they beat the Portland Trailblazers on Sunday and then Phoenix loses to Minnesota on the final day of the season. And again, Minnesota has a ton to play for. They're, yeah, still they're, playing for the one seed. They're fighting for a one, two, three seed. I mean, you don't want to drop to the three. You want to be you want to be as high as possible, right? Uh, so, um, if Phoenix loses and the Kings went out, the Kings would actually go up to number seven. They would host a play in game sometime this next week. And then if they win that game, they become the seven seed. If they lose that game, they would play the winner, uh, the winner of the nine, 10 matchup. Now, again, I don't want to get way ahead of ourselves because we're not there yet. Uh, there's also a possibility that the Kings fall into the nine, 10. There's also a possibility. Hey, the Kings lose, uh, one game. And both the the Warriors and Lakers went out, and the Kings are the 10 seed. And now they're going to have to go to LA or they're going to have to go to Golden State for a play in game. And if they win that game, they would play the loser of the 7 8 game. If they lose that game, they'd be out. And so it, it's complicated. There's a lot going on still. But I also don't think it's time to just throw these guys out. Like, like just say, hey, this isn't. We know who they are, and we know that if they, even if they make it through this, that there's not a huge likelihood that Malik Monk is going to walk through that door and save the day. Um, and barring that, I don't think that the Kings have a whole lot of other options. Um, Jesse, I also, uh, last night, since we get through the, the play in sequence here, um, we actually got Kevin Herter on his injured shoulder. Uh, and like Kevin Herter is not walking through that door either. Kevin Herter is out for the season. He had surgery. Let's let's play the the clip of at least the first couple of minutes of of Kevin Herter from last night in the locker room with his sling on uh, post surgery. Yeah, I don't think you should get used to sling. So I would I would rather not. Just what what do you overall what kind of goes through your mind having this operation and kind of not being able to be here? Yeah, uh, timing obviously sucks. Uh, no other way to put it, but. Uh, successful operation. It's uh, something I felt like we needed to do for my you know, long-term uh, health and me not having issues with it moving forward. And uh, squad I got it hopefully behind me and looking forward to a good summer to get back. Kim, what went into that decision to whether, I mean, was there even a possibility of not having surgery or once you got all the information, it was like this was the only route? Yeah, it was, uh, it's an issue that I've had for, Couple years now, um, you know, nothing that was significant enough for me to to have to fix it and get surgery on something that I've played with and felt like I could get back to 100 percent and uh, haven't had issues with in a couple of years. And uh, you know, this one most recent, I would I'll call it episode uh, injury became more significant, and so then the decision became you know playing through the injury obviously or, or completely fixing the surgery and. Where it was currently at, it could be 100% fixed with surgery. And the next time I injured it, every time you pop your shoulder out, your tear gets bigger, your, your bone could chip, or your cartilage in your shoulder, you could continue to wear that away. And so then it became 
you know, if I'm just waiting for the next time I get hurt, then there could be damage that I can't fix with surgery. And then you're never the same. And so uh, because of the significance in the surgery, it was something that doctors were, uh, a couple of doctors were fairly certain it would pop out again. Like there was, there's an injury there and that was what, okay, if you're going to play through it, there's this risk of you're going to continue to do it and pop it out and how fast can you get back from that? And so it became more of not a if, just a when. And, you know, for me to have the option to get fully 100% healthy and put this behind me, it was just became, I just got to do it and get it done with. Yeah, that's Kevin Herter. Um, uh, interesting stuff, Jesse. Uh, how long did he say he's been dealing with that? Okay, so he went on to say afterwards to actually say he injured it uh, against the Denver Nuggets, I believe, when he was playing with the Atlanta Hawks. He said a couple of years ago, and he had problems. But he also told us that it's something that he injured when he was like 10 or 11 playing football, and he had a dislocated shoulder. And so that's the first time. And then he's progressively, like, he's had it happen a couple of times in the past. But then this time it was like, okay, look, like, we're getting to, I mean, Kevin's 25, but you're getting to an age where, like, it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. And, and the likelihood of having reoccurrences is getting higher and higher. And so at some point, we got to go in there and, and fix it. And, you know, like, we've talked about that that entails. They go in, they they sew up the labrum. Um, basically it's almost like, uh, like a jelly donut, like, right. And so the jelly and, and the outside of the donut is pulled apart and they've got to go in and stitch it back together. But then also they put in little, they drill holes into the bone and they put in little pins to hold it in place there. Uh, while that is a wild analogy comparison, but it works with a jelly donut. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it's, uh, it, it is what it is at this point. He made the decision to, uh, to go shut it down. And, you know, if you waited an extra three or four weeks, then maybe we are looking at postseason. Uh, I mean, maybe we are looking at training camp or maybe he can't play at the beginning of next season. It, it's a long surgery recovery. It's four to six months. And, you know, so you got to do what you got to do at some point. Yeah, you uh, wonder how much something like that's been bothering him, too. Because, I mean, the guy just never really got into it this season. Yeah, I, I don't think it bothered him throughout the season until he actually had the injury. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... All right, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to step aside. We're going to uh, take a, a couple of minutes to have a break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to hit six quick thoughts. We're going to go through last night's game. There's some really good things that happened in this game. There's also some really bad things that happened in this game. Um, but we'll get into all of that. We are the insiders here on ESPN 1320. I'm James. He's Jesse. We'll see you in just a minute. It is Donut Friday. Uh, they're here in the chatty house. So, uh, although I don't know that there were any jelly donuts in there, never had a jelly donut in my life. I don't think I ever will either. What? No, don't do that. Jelly donuts are disgusting. What? They look disgusting. Oh, you're crazy. Uh, were you like a surgeon in a past life too? Because you do like, like you do no surgery. Well, no, I go and I do the research. It's just, gotcha. it's just the way my brain works. Like I, like when there is an injury, I like to dive in and figure out what exactly. It is, and like, you know, I don't know. Plus, I also have a bunch of ailments. I'm always beat up, and so it's good to know why it is and all that. Alfonso, stop. I guarantee the majority in the chat agrees with me that jelly donuts are disgusting. No. No. Uh, Jalen, I will have a cream-filled donut. I, I'm, I, There's no shame in saying that. <laughs> I've been flagged. <laughs> Respect the game, James. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing a poll. I don't know how to do that. I don't touch buttons. Them are the rules, Lizzie. Uh I don't know about you guys, but the allergies are starting to like get to my eyes. I don't know. We have this great donut spot that we stop at, that I stop at um, just about every Friday. I think it's Dunkin' Run in Auburn, California. Shout out Mr. Cheese, but that's the, that's the best donuts I've ever had. Oh, okay. The The people are really nice, and, you know, it's like mom and pop shop, old old style donut shop, and they do a good job. Yesterday was uh, was a cinnamon roll day. And that is the baker and the 
and the cake maker, the baker and the cake maker in Auburn. Is that the best cinnamon roll you've ever had, Jesse? Yeah, it was pretty good. That was a big ass cinnamon roll too. It's big, at, yeah. Like the best part about that cinnamon roll is there's cinnamon all through the whole thing. I think that's the key to a good cinnamon roll. Uh, oh yeah, Lizzy, you lost on that. Yeah, sorry about that, Jalen. I'm not gonna highlight your comment, but yeah, that was crazy, bro. I Lizzy, I, I my prize pick. The only one of my prize picks that actually hit was the over on Harrison Barnes rebounds, which was a a demon at three and a half. Welcome back in to the Insiders. I am James. Jesse Tappy is joining me. He is uh, the potatoes of uh, what we're calling it this week, ham and ham side, side dishes. dishes. Ham and side dishes. So you're the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. See, and this is why you're the potatoes. Because you just fill in. Yeah, you're like, here yeah, you, you are. Yeah, you texted me yesterday. Hey, you're in the, Um, you're in tomorrow? Cool. Yep. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. That's it. There's no, there's no fighting with me. He's just like, yep. All right, we're in. Get to be on the radio tomorrow. Cool. That's right. Uh, it's it, hey, I like having you here. Like it, it's good. This is this is good stuff. Yeah, man. it's always fun stuff like that. It's good work for me. Yeah, you know, being on the air and stuff like that. Get some get some development. Get some development time. You you you're uh you are not the Colby Jones of this situation. That's for sure. Um, you're more of the Keon Ellis of this situation. That works. That works. Okay. We started street team in the G League or whatever, and we've kind of just worked our way up as the years have gone on. That's right. That's right. I, I like this analogy. Um, let's get to six quick thoughts. We we got all kinds of stuff to talk about here. How'd yesterday's Kings game go? Horrible. Kings insider James Ham has six notes you need to know. Here are James Ham's six quick thoughts. I right, was getting number one right here. We have a black Fal Falcon signing. Sighting. Jesus. Harrison Barnes struggled through the entire road trip and hurt his team's chances to win. He looked refreshed, motivated. 22 points, a 9 of 15 shooting, Jesse. Uh, five rebounds, four assists in the loss. I don't remember him having four assists in a long time. Um, he was so engaged and gave them a different look and a different element. And it's like, man, I appreciate that you were able to do that, but where were you the last five games? I mean, that's just the question we've been asking all year. I feel like just like, it's just this, the extremes. I was talking about the extremes. Like, it's just. You're here, and then, oh, you only took two shots yesterday. And of course, like yesterday, um, we're always going to praise that and stuff like that, but just more so, can you do that tomorrow or tonight too, and maybe Sunday? That'll help. Well, I mean, the only chance the Kings have against the Suns is for this Harrison Barnes to show up. Yeah, at this point, without Mong, you can throw in Herder too if you want. Like, it's just, it's all hands on deck. Everyone has to show up. There's literally no room for error at this point. Well, that and Jesse, I think some of the things that he did in this game were you know, they kept doing the double team thing on Sabonis, right? They kept trying to take away Sabonis. And as opposed to the spray three, Harrison Barnes snuck underneath the basket and Sabonis was able to find him for like wide open looks. And that's just like, where has that been? Because that was in the offense last year. That's that's the play where all of a sudden they ran that play like six times in a row against one team last season. And, and it was like the talk of like the media session afterwards. Okay, man, like, where is that? And so, like, I thought, again, he was he was very, very good in this game. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to see that again and again and again. Just be consistent, man. Yeah. All right, thought number two. Uh, De'Aaron Fox took a minute to settle in, but he went to work uh, against a tough defense. He got angry in the third. Typically, when he gets angry, it's a good thing. Um, he flung a ball at an official and he's actually lucky he didn't get tossed. Yeah, it was at the fourth or the third quarter when he got that tech. I think it was a late third. Okay, yeah, because you kind of like was a foul, an offensive foul, at least the corn looking at the replay, I thought it was a foul on Fox. I just kind of didn't understand like what are you doing at that point? Well, he felt like Dyson Daniels, I think that's who it was, had grabbed his arm before. And then he's just like, Okay, if you're gonna grab my arm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like truck you. And so I like, get the frustration, but it's like it's just can't let the refs dictate. Well, that and then he threw the ball at the official. Yeah, yeah. Like he's very, he's very lucky that that. And he said, "Oh, I, I bounced it to him." It's like, eh. we know, we know. Come on, we know how the game is played, Darren. Come on. 
I, I, I would just say the official was not going to be able to catch that for a wide open. It wasn't a pocket pass for him to like, like launch a three. Like, no, no, it was a skip pass. Like, like basically hit him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just like uh, he let the frustration take over and, and I get it. Uh, but 33 points, eight, is, eight assists, five rebounds. He had two steals. The problem that he had, is it that took him out of like his mental state that he needed to be in, and he had six turnovers, uh, one or two of which were just egregious, like right around that area where you're like, "Come on, man!" Including the offensive foul is one of his turnovers. All right, thought number three. Devonis Sabonis had a few turnovers early, couldn't find his rhythm. Uh, he recovered, but 18 points, 10 uh, 10 rebounds, four assists, in a game of this magnitude, man, I, like. It is what it is. Like Sabonis has to be better. Like I, better is in scoring more points or better everything. Because at, at this point, with the whole Sabonis needs to score more, be a better second option and stuff. I think I've just come to peace with the fact that's just not him. And maybe in the off season or whatever, the Kings just can, maybe got to add another score. Whether it's putting Malik in the um, starting lineup next season or whatnot, but they do they do need that second score. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, they do need to address scoring, and and I do think that Keegan Murray will take another step next year. And if you have Malik Monk back, he can take another step forward too. Um, to me, uh, first of all, the Kings got out rebounded, what, 32 to 40. Um, and and Sabonis only had 10 rebounds. This was a game where, again, you needed like an 18 rebound game from him. You needed him to be so dominant. Uh, even if it was 22 points, that would have felt better. Uh, 22, and, and then the assist numbers. Um, he didn't get a bunch of assists because the Kings didn't hit all their shots, but uh, they did shoot 16 of 38 from three for 42%. They did shoot 55% from the field. This is a game, again, you score 120. This is only like the fifth time this season they've lost when they scored 120. Is this, I'm just asking the question, is this a recurring theme for Devonta Sabonis? Like throughout his career? As far as, I mean, we could call it with the Kings or throughout his career because we've all watched them and stuff like that. But um, as far as like, because we see in the chat, we heard it last in the Warriors series. I'm just asking the question, like I said, I don't necessarily believe it yet, but more so like, does he show up? for the big, big time moments and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know that that's an issue yet. Uh, I, I do know that he's a focal point that, that teams try to take away. You run all of your offense through one guy. Um, that means that it, it limits like number one, your offense, but it also, it makes it easier to defend. Like if all you have to do is really try to take away one guy and then leave De'Aaron Fox to be the creator. The problem that the Kings have is that they don't have Monk. And, and I'm okay. Like uh, me and Sean Cunningham get into this, this discussion all the time on the Kings beat. I, I am a okay with Demonis Sabonis averaging 19 to 20 points per game. I think that that's who he is as a player. Yeah. I think I'm fine with that too. It's just a matter of, okay, Monty, you got to go fix what we're missing then. No, totally. Yeah. That, that's where you can't expect more from this guy. You need to put the pieces around him that support him better. So, all right. Uh, we're at thought number four, correct? Uh, we are uh, on number four. Second half, Keegan. Uh, for some reason, Keegan Murray is waiting until the second half now to get it going. Um, it started late in the third. He had a pair of three-pointers, and it, it actually got the Kings going a little bit. Uh, and then he caught fire and hit three more in the fourth quarter. But it's like, okay, man, like a little too late. And I get that you want to let Fox get into the groove. You want to let Harrison Barnes find his game. You want to let Demonis Sabonis figure it out. But at the same time, like, this does not have to be a shared, like, a, a, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn type of situation. He needs to come out and and look for his shot and be aggressive. And for that matter, he needs to come out and hit a shot. Because I think that's where, like, he goes 5 of 10 from 3. But f 5 of those 10 makes came in the 3rd uh, and, and 4th quarter. Like, it's kind of been the conversation since Kings drafted him. How do you get the quiet guy to get be more aggressive, though? Yeah, you I know. feel like Mike Brown is Mike Brown's probably yelled at him. Darren Fox has said it. Um, been press conference, but like, want Keegan to do more. Like, how do you get the quiet guy to just be more aggressive? Yeah, I know. Um, years ago, years ago, Paul Westfall told me about Demarcus Cousins. He said it's so much easier to try to tame a fire than to light a fire under somebody. And he's like, so while Cousins, yeah, that's a problem, right? But you'd rather have someone with passion and with fire and that you have to like try to work to tone back. Now, I don't think at the end of the day, he he didn't believe that on his way out the door. Paul didn't. 
Um, but initially he had faced player or, or been on team, been teammates or, or coach players that had that like too much fire and you had to work with. And uh, it just cousins was a different beast. Maybe we would just put up billboards all around Sacramento, just in bold lettering Keegan take over already. Or yet yeah, Keegan take the shot. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, cause that's what they drafted him for too. And that's how they talked about him since they've drafted him. Like, yes, yes he's going to be part of this court. He is one of the guys. This I, I is think, more so. I don't know if Keegan has just heard that yet, but he's also, I think your, your key there is they have said it like, this is what their plan is. And if their plan is that, and then you can't get to that point, then it really does put the, the franchise in a weird position because where do you go from there? And that's tough. Yeah. All right, let's get to number five. Stepped up. Uh, again, I'm just going to keep heaping praise on Davion Mitchell. Like I I've been on uh, hard on Davion Mitchell plenty of times, but when somebody does something great and, or, or really good, um, like, look, that's, that's, you gotta be honest. Right. And, uh, and I thought Mitchell was absolutely like, he brought so much to the Kings last night, five of eight from the field, two of two from three finishes with 13 points and, and five assists. He even had like an incredible big rebound late, which is not his game at all. And, uh, I just think he's, he's doing a really, really nice job of, of whether it's in Sacramento or it's somewhere else of saying, I am an NBA rotational player. Yeah. With Monk out, I don't want to say he's done the job of like just taking his place or whatever. Cause we know Monk's impact and um, it goes beyond coming off the bench and all that, but Mitchell's done well, I think to help keep the bench steady and not, I mean, more so like it's not the bench that's always killing them or anything like that. Like he's done well just kind of to hold them steady, like I said. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. All right. Let's get to the final one. Reality check. Uh, with the loss, all hope is lost for avoiding the play-in tournament. The Kings currently sit two games behind the Suns for the number seven spot. They are also tied with both the Lakers and Warriors for the 8, 9, 10 spot in the Western Conference standings. This was not a good day for the Sacramento Kings. That game was, uh, like you said, a reality check. It was a gut check. It was just more so, like, they hung around, but like anytime they got close, the Pelicans just pulled away every time. And it's just, it was a, the Kings' first wire-to-wire -wire loss. Two shout-out Ernie Johnson saying that's that yesterday after the game. Oh. And it's just more so, like, they just, Kings are just not on the Pelicans' level right now. They're just not that good without Malik and those guys. They're just, I don't know. They're just not know. good enough right now. That's just all it comes down to, honestly. They're just not good enough. They're not good enough, but I also, like, there's something about this Pelicans team that that they just don't match up with, and that's going to be something that they, they again, need to address in the offseason. Um, okay, we're going to step aside when we come back. Uh, we're going to preview a little bit of this uh, Kings -Sun match, uh, Suns matchup tonight. Um, we're the insiders here on ESPN 1320, brought to you by Jiffy Lube. This hour of the show is brought to you by Power Market. Everything you need Jesse. right around the corner. Jesse. Oh, thank you. Whew. My fault. My fault. Oh, that's no stress. Oh. Actually, like this is, um, I'm going to pull this one up. Deborah Mento, uh, Warriors' worst season is somehow equivalent to the Kings' records right now, sending wishes to all Kings fans. I think that's that's really interesting because the Warriors have not been good all year, and but they've won enough of the games that they had to win, and here they are, the same record. Like, again, I don't, even right now, the way the, the Kings are constructed with, with the injury, I still don't think that uh, that the Warriors or the Lakers are a better team than the Kings. Like I, I don't know. Like I don't. Well, can they beat the Kings? Yes, they can beat the Kings. But I'm not. I just don't feel like they're a better team. Um, Chris Juvenal, how do we feel about Mike? Should have pulled the starters six minutes left. Um, no. Normally, I agree with you, um, but I'm going to say this. The the momentum that the Kings built, the shots that they hit, the Keegan Murray hitting three straight threes, I feel like that's going to matter tomorrow. And I also feel like the last thing you want to do is two games left in the season is to have your team booed off their home court uh, by their home fans. And we probably should have saved that for the air. But um, like to me, I, I get what you're saying. And I get that, you know, again, Damana Sabonis played 
35 minutes. Keegan Murray played 35. Fox played 41. I get what you're saying, but I also think that there's a tremendous amount of value in not having your fans turn on your players in, in a moment where your players are already feeling really bad about themselves. And you come out of that with at least some positivity. You got some momentum that you can, you know, turn to. And uh, like, if that hurts them tonight, it hurts them tonight. But I don't, I don't know. I think either way you needed something positive coming out of it. Uh Oh, Oh, there we go. Yeah. Maybe don't do food on the court next time. That there was a that was chicken. It was chicken wings. Kevin Harlan, great call by the way from him. Oh really? Yes, classic, classic Kevin Harlan. I saw somebody run out and scoop it up, whatever it was. Yeah, it was chicken wings. Oh, that's lame. It was a classic Kevin Harlan, like he was. Yeah, you know, like when there's just nonsense going on during the game, and Kevin Harlan just commentating about it. Yes, it was perfect. Oh man, I you know I didn't see Kevin Harlan last night. Like in, in the like because we don't sit there by them, but I didn't see him in pregame or anything else. I love Kevin Harlan. Yeah, he's the best. We did have uh, the incredible Howard Beck in the building last night, and and um, also Baxter Holmes from ESPN. All right. Welcome into the Insiders. I'm James Ham. Joining me, Jesse Tapia, today. Kyle Madsen is on vacation in England. Um, I haven't talked to Kyle, but I'm sure he's having a great time. I think he posted a picture this morning of him standing in front of a big gate, so things got to be going good. I'm assuming. Oh, okay. A a at least he wasn't behind a big gate and like locked in. That's always the thing. Yeah, if your buddy is always taking the picture in front of the gate rather than behind, we're we're solid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to see Kyle behind bars of any kind, even like Buckingham Palace. Just imagine. Kyle oh, the, yeah, the dudes with their hats are just guarding them. Yeah, Kyle did something silly, and the the Buckingham Palace guards broke. Uh, sort of broke character and tackled Kyle. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, no. Um, everything is not over. The Sacramento Kings still have an opportunity here to not only like secure a seven spot in the play-in tournament, but also, hey, look, anything can happen. We talked about it. it's a one-game series. It's a, it's one game. And it's if a you scary win, game, James. Scary it, one game. It's scary, but the fact is that if you win, you move on. And, and the Kings still have that ability to make the playoffs. And I know a lot of people are very like down on the team at this point, but there's also always a possibility. We've seen this team show resiliency at some of the darkest moments, uh, not just this season, but last season as well. And I, I'm not ready to just say, hey, this thing's over. And I'm not because we still got two games left. And tonight is... We keep saying this. One of the biggest games ever in Golden One, uh, Golden One Center history. We can just say, say, um, pay it forward on um, Sunday as well. Biggest game of the season. That's right. That's right. Uh, it would be Classic Kings to somehow win tonight and then lose on Sunday. And uh, and we're just sitting here shaking our heads on Monday saying, I don't know what to say. Uh, but the Sacramento Kings face the Phoenix Suns tonight. 7.30 start, I believe, at Golden One Center. It's another big, I, I believe, nationally televised game. Uh, they currently sit tied in the season series with the Suns at 2-2. Two and two. Um, They also trail the Suns by two games with two games remaining in the standings in, in, on, on the schedule. Uh, this is about as big as it gets. Again, we talked about this before, but the, the Phoenix Suns play the Minnesota Timberwolves on Sunday. Their path to, to the seven seed. A lot more difficult than the Kings. It is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say that they get to go through the Kings, so that might make it slightly more easy. I'll give the Kings their respect. They, they, they're they they're they're right there with each other the same way we got to play the Suns. They got to play the Kings. Yeah. And I would also, Jesse, I would point out that early in the season, the the Kings had no problems with the Suns. The, they went up 2-0 in the season series and everything looked like it was on the up and up, you know, and then we had this game that didn't go well at all. And that is a game where they led by 20 with what eight minutes left in the game, 22 with eight minutes and the Kings melted down in a seriously embarrassing way. I think that's still the worst loss of the season for me too. Is it the worst loss for, for me? It is for me watching that. I've 
I don't think I, anything frustrated me more from the Kings this season than just blowing that game. Okay. Uh, just because of how little time was left, how big of a deficit there was for the Suns. And like it was just, it happened all so fast. Yeah. I, I totally understand why, why that would be a frustrating piece and why it would probably be the most frustrating uh, moment of the season. If you win that game too, it helps you out a lot more right now. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, if you if you had that win under your belt, uh, then you're only down one game, but you already have the season series. Uh, yeah, it's it's to me it, it's really crazy to to look at this series all year long. The Suns have great players, right? All time great players. Yeah, they do. I mean, they they have Kevin Durant. Uh, Devin Booker's turned himself into a great player. I know Bradley Beal. Um, he's only played against them, I think, twice, and one of those games he left midway through the game. Um, which is, you know, not atypical, got to be honest. Uh, but they've also, Grayson Allen's busted up the Kings a couple of times. Yeah, he's kind of been their boogeyman, weirdly enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a big game. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking for from from the Kings in this game tonight? Um, they got, they got to be perfect. Darren Fox has to carry this team. Like, he's got to put up 30-plus, I think, for them to have a chance. Then you're gonna need Harrison Barnes to do what he did yesterday. Keegan Martin's not to be um aggressive. Like it's just everyone has to show up. There's there's no room for error. I think with this. Yeah, I mean your room for error on the season is gone completely. Um, but I I'd also say that uh you know I, I was actually I was on with Phoenix Suns Radio this morning. I was on in Phoenix and they were asking questions about this stuff too. And and I think it's really interesting. You look at their season. Um, Kevin Durant. Uh, the you know he's a legend, right? He he's one of the top 10 players ever in the history of the game. Um, he's just, you know, this uh, aberration. Like his he's length. all time in scoring. Yeah, his length, his athleticism, everything is crazy. At 35 years old, though, Jesse, you know how many minutes he's played per game this season? No, sir. 37.1. He he He's kind of defied all the narratives about him and injuries, I think, the last few seasons. Like, he's been around this year. Yeah. Okay. So, and you, you talk about last season, last season, he played 47 games a year before he played 55. The year before that he played, played 35. Uh, the year before that he missed with an Achilles injury. So for him to play 73 games with two games left. So at his age too. Yeah. At his age, he's going to likely get, Oh, well, uh, it's possible that he wouldn't play in the final game of the season. If they beat the Kings tonight, because if they beat the Kings tonight, I don't think they can be caught for the number seven. Right. So this game does have a little extra importance. Um, but that's crazy. We're we're talking about a a superstar in the twilight of his career playing 37 minutes a game, averaging 27 points per game. I, I'm intrigued to see what he looks like in the playoffs. I want to see what Kawhi Leonard looks like in the playoffs. I want to see what Paul George looks like in the playoffs. I want to see what these aging stars look like, even even Steph Curry, who's had to backpack his team all season long. Anytime he's playing, they, they've got a shot. When he doesn't play, they don't have a shot. I want to see what these guys look like after the NBA mandates a 65-game season for players if they're going to qualify for postseason awards. I'm real curious about Phoenix, too, in the postseason because I feel like they were built for the playoffs. Like You mentioned the regular season struggles and all that, but I feel like they're not. They're not a team that's going to be um, high seed or anything like that. They're more so built. All right, we got to the playoffs or whatever. KD, Booker, Beal, like take us home now. So I, I but think that also, I don't know how much that works. I feel like that's been the Clippers MO for the last few years and it just hasn't worked out. No, it hasn't. But, you know, it did work out for the Lakers last year. It's true. Where it's just like, hey, let's get in. And then I would even look at, look at who the Kings are surrounded by. Like it's a crazy, you're surrounded by the Pacific Division, right? So again, you're tied with the the Lakers and the Warriors for the the eight, nine, ten. Uh, but the other team is right there is the Suns. How many Hall of Famers do we have between these teams? You imagine at that? least six. I th- I said at least six. No, it's it's probably more like ten. Yeah. So because you get the Warriors have well, they got three. The Warriors have three. No, the Warriors have four. They have Chris Paul. Chris Paul. Well. I forgot Chris Paul's out there. So they have Paul. They have Curry. They have Clay. They have Draymond. And then you're talking about Booker and and uh, Katie and Katie. And I'm going to put Booker in that category now. He's on his way, I think. Yeah. So what is that? That's six. And then LeBron and AD. Well, and LeBron and AD. Yeah. Yeah. So what puts it at eight? Uh, eight, eight. Well, that's the thing. Things. It's kind of like for the Kings in the play and kind of just, oh, go ahead. Pick whatever door you want. You can either take this top 10 all time player. You could take this top 10 all player or you could take this top 10 all time player to play against. Exactly. 
I mean, it's the tough. the other three teams that you're competing with right now for the final two playoff spots have each every single one of them has a top ten player of all time. Yeah, yeah. And then it's not like they're falling off. You like they're old older players, but Steph Curry can still light you up at fifty. Same with KD, and we all know what LeBron is. Yeah, uh, that's 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 not great. That's not great. Um, so tonight the uh the Phoenix Suns they will start um let's see, Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, Royce O'Neal, KD, and uh Yusuf Nurkic. Uh Jesse, what is your matchup of the game to watch for this one? Let's go Keegan versus KD. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean this is big, right? This is where Keegan has to show that he's able to take it to another level, right? That he he can't wait around. And Durant at, you know, and prime Durant is one of the best defensive players in the league. Non-prime Durant is not. I mean, he's still solid, but I, I kind of want to see what Keegan has this late in the season. He's been struggling with a calf injury. Uh, he's been questionable the last two games with a, with a sore calf. Um, but at this point, the way he shot the ball last night, the way that he finished the game, I want to see him carry over how he finished right into this game. And I want to flip that on the other side where King is defending KD. King is the only person I think um, on this Kings team that can make anything, like, make life difficult for Kevin Durant. I don't think if they put HB on Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant's going to get his. Anyone else will get his. Keegan is the only one I think who can maybe limit him tonight. Okay. I I've also, like watching Durant this season, I've kind of felt like he's not, he's no longer prime Durant. And that even though he does put up 27 a game, a lot of the times it's not as impactful as like him in his prime where I think we'll probably see Keegan Murray play a little bit on, on Devin Booker as well. And then sort of the wild card is always Bradley Beal. Like again, the Kings really haven't faced like Bradley Beal for a full game, except for one time of, of the four previous meetings. And so, yeah, I, I think this is going to be, it's going to be a game that you have to you have to watch all the way through. Well, yeah, I feel like we know too. Like if the Suns win this game, it's going to be because their stars lit you up. And the other yeah. way, like with the Kings, like if they win this game, it's because yeah, everyone happened to show up today. I feel like we just kind of know it's just which one's going to happen though. No, that's true. It's true. And uh, you know, the last time, well, especially the 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 game where they they lost a twenty point lead late, um, their secondary players beat you, and, and that was a problem. Like you had Royce O'Neal hit a couple of threes. You had Nasir Little hit a big three. You had Josh Kogi hit one or two threes, and then you had Grayson Allen just go go plaid nuclear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to come back with uh, with more thoughts on tonight's game uh, a little bit later in the show. We'll have keys to victory, um, but Jesse, we we've got more topics to discuss here, yes, sir, uh, with the Sacramento Kings um, from last night's game, and uh, like. One of the the things that pops off the uh, the box score, Sabonis just he took just three shots in the second half, and I I know he got fouled a few times. He he went to the free throw line, um, but the shots the the sheer number of shots I I looked early on and I'm like, oh okay, he's got nine shot attempts in the first half. That's what the Kings need him at 18, and then he finishes with 12. Yep. Just, what's going on? What's going on? This is who he is. That's it. I mean, we can all accept it at this point. Okay. Like, this is, like, not in a bad way either. DeMontis Sabonis is an all-NBA player. He should be an all-NBA player this year. He's a top 15 NBA player. But he is not the guy who's going to go out and probably get you 20 shots, 25 points, or whatever. I think it's just time we accept that. It's not an issue where it's like, oh, now the Kings will never win. It's just more so Monty's got to work around the roster now and put the pieces around him. That'll work. Like, I'm not – what am I going to get mad at Sabonis for only taking three shots in the second half, which is, like, that's just who he is at this point. I totally agree. I, I just think that against Nurkic, that's not who he can be. Like Nurkic has done a good job of keeping him off the glass a little bit, but then he usually gets in foul trouble and then it's like feasting on this team. Um, so I actually think that that would be a good thing for the Kings. And then on top of that, we've had this situation where if you remember, they went small. The They actually use KD on Sabonis. And I need to see Sabonis just like figure that one out quickly. Like Kevin Durant's tough because like he can from a standing position like untie your shoes. Like he doesn't need to lean over. We'll put so bonus in the same classroom as Keegan and we'll both just it's aggressive class. Okay. All right. Get to the hoop, 
Like just like I don't know. Like we talk about it all year, and it's just at this point, it's just kind of like not with Keegan. Keegan's a young player and stuff, but with Sabonis, he's old. Like not old, but he's in his prime. He is who he is at this point. It's just kind of like we talk about it. We talk about it. It's just it's not changing. Okay. All right. No, I mean that makes perfect. You sense. get what I'm saying, though. Yeah. No, I, I do. I do. I get what you're saying. Um, let's get to another topic from last night's game. Uh, these are outside of six quick thoughts. Um, I felt bad for Colby Jones. Um, Colby Jones has been thrust into a role with the Kings, um, after not playing, you know, most of the season. I mean, he, he's played so few minutes. It's, it's crazy. And then for him to all of a sudden have to be part of a rotation. And the reason why he's part of a rotation is because of injury and because he has a skill set that other players don't have. And so you're, you're trying to see if you can capitalize on, some of his skill set without having him make major major mistakes and then you get to this this huge game last night and like look i'm not pinning the loss on colby jones but i will tell you that that the dude played three minutes and ran a negative 15. i mean that's kind of like dealing with a toddler and stuff like that not to call bit colby jones a toddler or whatever but like to what i'm saying here it's just kind of like he's a he's a he's a second round pick coming into the league the high pressure situation, like that's on us, not on him. And us meaning the coaching staff. Like, uh, what do you expect? I, I totally agree. It is on the coaching staff, but also at, at a certain point, like it's all hands on deck. And and I like Mike is grasping at straws and he's grasping at straws because that's what he's got. Yeah, yeah. Like at this point, you gotta play Kobe, but yeah. I'm not gonna fault Kobe for just no, looking lost. No, yeah. Well, uh, so Colby comes in the game, um, and, and the reason why, like, again, I don't think plus minus is a great stat, especially for an individual game, but I will tell you that he came in the game and he turned the ball over. Then he went down on the other end, and he fouled a three-point shooter at least a half second after the ball was Oh, released. yeah, that ball was already hitting the rim, bounced a couple times, and then boom, he hits him on his hand. And, and then, you know, he's saying I high-fived him, I high-fived him, and it's like, no, you slapped him from the side and knocked him sideways. Like, it, it wasn't a good foul. And then he went down on the other end, and again, I'm not sure I was comfortable with him being the primary ball handler, bringing the ball up. And the first thing he did was turn the ball over again. And so in that moment, it looks bad, but like a negative 15, I felt his negative 15 in that game. Like, yeah, it was boom, 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 boom. Oh, no. And almost like you can't call a timeout fast enough to try to to do something different. And, and again, I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying that that's the reality of the situation. You put a young player in a situation that you hoped he might be able to succeed because he did that against Boston and he did that the next game, what against Brooklyn? Well, that's not, that's not a Boston team who's sitting everybody and it's not a Brooklyn team. That's not good. That's, yeah. Like I said, I mean, the issue like with him not playing well, that's on the coaching staff, but I'll turn it around. I think like things like that only help Kobe Jones. I feel like going forward. Yeah, it, getting that run and that little development because I mean he's not going to come out and uh, like oh seven points, four rebounds, three assists every game. Like he's going to play bad from time to time, but like those moments with him being a rookie, like that can only help at this point. Yeah, and, and I'm not blaming the coaching. No, 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 the yeah. coaching staff has to try that. Yeah, yeah. I'm because, saying as far as like him not playing well, it's like it's kind of like like I said, it's just not on Colby. No, it, it's it's just a situational thing. It's something that happened in the game, right? It, it's not something that I'm going to like. Just the cards like, you dealt at this point. Yeah, yeah. Like totally be accusatory. Um. I also thought one of our other topics I threw in, threw in here. Um, this is why HB matters. Like Harrison Barnes matters. And like, I don't always feel like, again, a lot of people always say, oh, you, you, you know, like to always bring up the positive Harrison Barnes. Like, look, what's happened with Harrison Barnes over the last week is unacceptable. Like flat out, like flat out unacceptable. Like, dude, you owe, I, I, I'm assuming he's already talked to his teammates about what's happened. And I don't know if there's something going on or whatever, but whatever it is, he was not good for like four or five games. The, the road trip was just not good at all for Harrison Barnes. Isn't that kind of who he's been over the few seasons with the Kings, though? He kind of just has these spells where he's not here or whatever, and then he's playing well, and then he's not, and then he is. Okay, but but let's just look at our show today. Like, I, I texted you last night. Hey, I need you to, to you know, out of the bullpen, right? Yeah. Like, you step up. That's what you do. You when when the chips are down, when you got eight games left in the season, and you got a four game road trip, and you don't have two of your star players. Well, stars, two of your rotational players, one of your star players, one of your rotational players, a starter. If you don't have that, like it's go time, man. It is. Yeah, you're not like, wrong. 
Like this is professional sports. Yeah, yeah. And and you have to elevate your game in this situation, not not shrink. I don't even think you have to see the funny thing with HB too. Like, I don't even think you have to elevate your game. Just be who you've been over your career. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then for him, the problem I think everyone has is that we just saw four games of just like non-existence. Like what is going on? One of eight from the field. You went eight of 10 from the free throw line, but one of eight from the field, he scored zero points in one game. He scored four points or six points. Like then he shows up. It's like, where were you last week? That's the problem though. It's like, Hey, you did show up. You showed us that you didn't like there wasn't something wrong physically and that you didn't just like out of nowhere in the middle of the season get old like that. That's not what happened, because now we have more footage of you like taking Valanchunas off the dribble, uh, like battling Valanchunas in the post. They started that game. Uh, Jesse, I don't know if you noticed. They started with Demonis Sabonis defending Zion Williamson and HB defending Valanchunas. Yeah. We, the thing with HB2 is it's kind of um like I, he kind of got the benefit of the doubt earlier in the season where it's like, well, we got Monk. He's got to get his shots. Keegan, we're working on his development. He's got to get yeah. his shots. Sabonis and Fox. Guys are hurt now, and it's just kind of like we're still dealing with the same issues. So it's like, it's not that then. Like, what is it? Yeah, it, it's tough, man. Um, I hope they, they get another game like they did last night out of Harrison Barnes. Uh, you know, again, this is a guy who who they it's have the only way they'll win again relied on for a long time and and they need to they need to have him step up uh let's get to um okay the colby jones situation is one thing um but uh in last night's game mike brown just kept going to different players and i know some people always like to oh why did you do this why did you do that um chris duarte uh he throws chris duarte in there uh, he goes over to kessler edwards played a minute uh, Alex Len played 11 minutes. Sasha Vizinka played 11 minutes after not playing much in the previous two games. Colby Jones, of course, had the three minute stretch, which was which was tough. Trey Lyles. Um, the one thing I will say is you cannot say that Mike Brown and I, for some reason I saw this all over Twitter last night. Like so many people fire him, fire him. It's like the most moronic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I'm just PSA, Mike Brown's not getting fired, nor should he. His seat should not be warm, and, and if anything, he should be sitting on the seat of ice. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, Jesse, have you ever played solitaire? Yeah, when I was a kid, I guess, when I was boarding school or whatever. Okay, and you know, uh, like if you've ever played with a deck of cards, like an actual deck of cards and you've played solitaire, um, there's something to uh, solitaire that people who play on the computer might not get, but people who play with cards would understand. I'm the computer kid, by the way. Okay, you're the computer kid. Uh, did you know that you can't win solitaire if you don't have 52 cards? Do now. Well, I mean, it makes well, sense. The full right? deck of cards, right? You, you're, it makes sense to you, right? Like you, you've got to, it's all about suits and you've yeah, got yeah. to fill up all the suits. If you're missing a four of hearts and a six of clubs and a seven of diamonds, <clears throat> you can't win solitaire because the, the key is to put all the cards up above. Mike Brown's playing solitaire without a full deck he's playing solitaire with 15 cards yeah well he might have 48 cards but what he doesn't have is he doesn't have a full deck and so every single time you get to you're you're searching you're like okay like we could look at it as a puzzle like i i'm missing an edge piece where's my edge piece we, oh the dog ate the edge piece okay well we can't finish this puzzle that's kind of where the kings are at right now well and yeah because so, like i don't think you can look at these games and like honestly like like we were talking about the Colby Jones thing. Like I was saying that's on the coaching staff, but more so that's not to put like, oh, why did they do that? But more so it's like, I'm not gonna fault Colby Jones for that. And like the on the other side, they have no they have nothing else to do. Like you they're just searching at this point. They have nothing. Like we don't even know tonight who's gonna play what. We can't count on anyone probably besides De'Aaron Fox. They he's just searching at this point. So it's like at, like at that point, like how can you really truly fault him? Well, that and, and Jesse, he he gave Colby a shot. Yeah, yeah. And he goes negative 15 in the first half. So he didn't go back to him in the second half. He said, I'm gonna, I've, I've got to try something different. I'm gonna give Chris Duarte a shot. Chris Duarte bricks two wide open threes. And, and there's and I'm not again blaming the loss on Chris Duarte. That game was over no matter what. But the fact is that they are searching, and this coaching staff is doing everything that they can to try to piece this thing together. You don't have a guy who runs down at, on a pick and roll and sets up your big man for an easy bucket. That's why your big man isn't averaging 20 a game over the last eight games. It, it's that's why. 
Yeah, I mean, at that point with that position, you look at it. If Keon's not hitting shots or whatever, Duarte's not playing well, and whoever else is throwing it, it's just, all right, we're not getting anything from there. Hopefully someone else steps up then. Like, that's just what it comes down to. Yeah, I just think it's a it's a really interesting thing. I, I really, like, I didn't like seeing it last night. I almost actually started blocking people. I'm just like, what are we doing here? Yeah, like, we're not we're not at the point where we're firing people yet. No, we're not at that point yeah. at all. And And, you know, we'll talk about this later in the show, but Jesse, I brought this up a little bit to you earlier. Like people forget that the first Kings, the 1988-89 Kings, win 28 uh, 27 games, right? It's a it's a lockout shortened season. I think there was only 54 games that year. Um, maybe a few, maybe 52 games, 52. I think there are 27 and 25. The next year, which is year two of the Sacramento Kings, with Chris Weber, with Vladi Divac, which pay, with Peja Stojakovic, with uh Jason Williams, with John Barry. I think Scott Pollard is there. That team won 44 games. It's got three Hall of Famers on it, too. Yeah. How many How many games did the Kings won this season? I believe they're at 45 currently. 45 currently. They, they won more games this year than they did in year two of that build. That's the thing, too. It's kind of the perspective of it. As bad as it's been this season, they kind of have a higher floor as far as win total. Well, I... I don't know if they have a higher. Well, I mean, it's just like they're not like they're still around. Like they're not going to hit forty eight or whatever, but they're still around what they were last season, even yeah. with all the issues. Yeah, yeah, with all the issues. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean right there. No, no, I, I totally get. I, I thought you were comparing their their potential win totals to what the uh, the teams of the early nineties, oh, no, 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 no. uh, the the early two thousands. Um, this team doesn't, as of it's currently constructed, it doesn't have that ceiling. But that doesn't mean that it can't have that ceiling. Yeah, like, yeah. we can we can see this thing twist and turn between now and the end of the season. Um, the last uh, topic I was going to bring up too is uh, you mentioned him there. Um, Keon Ellis was so good the previous game, right? Keon Ellis has a scores, a career high 26. Uh, what do you take? Like 17 threes. He was eight of, I want to say eight of 17. No, or eight of 15, eight of 15. 15. Okay. You get to the second, game this next game he goes two of five from the field one of three from three like man that's it's that's a young player problem yeah and, and it's the so we're gonna deal with some of the issues we're dealing with with keegan but keon is a year behind uh -huh. and so you're well, gonna deal keon, with this. maybe what is he even supposed to be in the spot at this point no and the fact that he is still in the spot says more about keon than anything else yeah and, and i think he played well defensively i think he was all over the place um I just think at the end of the day, like, you know, if I'm going to point out this guy and this guy and this guy, I also have to say, hey, for as good as Key Keon Ellis was last game, I needed him to find more shots. Yeah, it's and not I necessarily need... the fairest thing because he's like a young player, but at this point, it's what the game is. We need everyone to step up. Yeah, that's no right. No one can take a night off. All right. Well, we've beat up this loss quite a bit. Um, when we come back, uh, we're going to go through the playoff implications from last night's game one more time. We're going to dive into everything that's happening around the league and uh we're gonna try to make some sense of out of what the pathway forward is for the sacramento kings uh we are the insiders here on espn 1320 i am james he is jesse we'll see you after the break what's going on everybody Uh, David, this is a really good question. If the Kings don't make the playoffs, his rookie class appears weak. Their draft pick isn't a trade ship. Uh, what can money do? Um, you know what? I, I think we're going to answer that on the air. I'm going to, I'm going to star this. We're going to answer that on the air because, um, just because it's not a great draft class. Um, there's, there's more to that than just, Hey, this is, this is a horrible draft class. Everyone is bad. It's not that. So we'll, we'll get into, I'm going to take that on the air. It's a good question. Yeah. Aldrin J you live in, you live in the Bay area, all your co coworkers. I, I've had a coworker here. Um, and, and then he, he made the mistake of saying we, and so me and someone else in here went off. Uh, people who say we when they're talking about 
a professional basketball team I, I don't deal with well. Like, I don't play for the Kings. You've never heard me one time say we, unless I'm saying, like, I'm putting myself in their shoes and saying this is what we should I think as done. a fan, it's okay. You can't do it because you're a journalist. But as a fan, like, like it's, like, more of, like, being, like, like, the community of, like, being a Kings fan and stuff like that. Like, obviously, you don't play for the team. But, like, if the fans are throwing out the we, like, you throw your money out there and stuff like that. You're part of that community. Like, I don't, I don't hate it. Journalists can't do that. No, journalists can't do that. And and I also, it bugs me when it's on the telecast. It yeah, does. Yeah. Like, that's that's not okay. Like, you like you are not them. You're not. There's a clear divide between players who make this much money and have this much responsibility and you as someone who calls a game or broadcasts a game or does pre and post or whatever it is. Like, it, it's just, for me, it's a pet peeve and I, I don't get it. I gotcha. And, and people like they'll fight me on that, but I uh, I don't think so. And, and Mark Jones doesn't say we. Just so you know, he he's not a we guy. Um. Anyway, maybe hit him with those guys. Those guys got to play better, not we. Those guys. Yeah. Well, they. Yeah, I mean. Anyway, we are who we thought we were. Yeah, but see, again, that's a quote from from Dennis Green. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome back into the Insiders. I'm James. Joining me, Jesse Tapia. Jesse, I think the most difficult thing about not having Kyle here is when we come out of a break, I'm usually just bopping my head listening to the the rejoiner music, like, okay, da, 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 da. And then Kyle usually starts talking. Well, yeah, there's a different workflow, like completely, I feel like. Oh, you know, there's just totally different workflow. Even like, because I sit behind the board all day, every day and stuff like that. But just even like the little things when we're doing the six quick thoughts intro and stuff like that. Like we're going to break. Usually I don't have like that pot on this board, like it, the programs that it is or whatever. So I'll forget to take it out and just like the little things, you know? Yeah, it's it's all the small things that you forget. And so, again, I'm just like, uh, like, ah, shoot, I got to talk. Uh, this is not like, wait, I it's my turn to talk. Yeah, so it's just a little different. Like going two breaks, I'm like, whatever, that's fine. I'm watching the clock. I'm like, okay, it's, we probably got to wrap this thing up and go to break. But uh, coming out of breaks, it's always like weird and, and uncomfortable. We're trying to play different roles just like players in the Kings are right now with their injuries, huh? Ain't that the facts, Jack? Um, okay, so uh, David asked in the in the chat during the break, and and I figured we would take this, uh, we would take this like to the radio side. Like, let's take it to air. Uh, Ham, if the Kings don't make the playoffs, this rookie class appears to be weak. Their draft pick isn't a trade chip. Uh, what can Monty do? Um, so I want to take this. I'm going to break this up into a couple of things. Uh, first of all, if you don't make the playoffs, uh, you do have your your draft pick. So that's people who are out there. The Kings owe their 2024 draft pick to the Atlanta Hawks. But it's top 14 protected. So if they don't make the playoffs, they don't relay their pick. And so that has its own consequences. Now the Kings can't trade their 2025, 2026, or 2027 picks. They can trade a 2027 with an asterisk on it that says if the 2026 isn't relayed, uh, then we can trade the 2027. But what they can't do is just flat out trade the 2027 or the 2025 or the 2026. It's called the Stepien rule. You're not allowed to trade back-to-back -back picks, right? But it's more complicated than even that. So this last offseason, we saw the Kings trade their first-round pick. Uh, but realistically, they didn't really trade their first-round pick. What they did is they drafted a player for the Dallas Mavericks and then traded him after the new NBA season started on July 1st. So that pick doesn't count as like a Stepien pick. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I gotcha. So even this season where the Kings have 
if if they do have their pick, which means they did not make the playoffs, a play in spot is not a play a playoff spot. If you don't make the play in, I mean, if you make the play in, but you don't make the playoffs, you're now either the 13th or the 14th pick in the draft. Right. That's how it's going to work out for the Kings. Um, so basically what that means is that you're going to have a pick and all your other stuff is tied up. Right. And that's going to be a problem because the Kings haven't, I mean, they've been focused on the draft like cursory, but they haven't, and they have scouts out there that are looking at draft prospects that, that went to the final four or the big 10 tournament or, or a bunch of the tournament games or like visited specific campuses around the country because there's always this off chance that you will have this pick. Well, we're now getting to the like reality moment that there's a good chance you could have your pick here. Right. And so that's where I want to break this into other things. Like this rookie class appears to be weak. This rookie class isn't any weaker than any normal draft outside of the top five picks. Yeah. But also how much is the 13th or the 14th pick helping you in your build? Well, it, it depends because you know, we can look at a team like the Pelicans and you start picking out where Herb Jones went in the draft and you start looking at where, uh, who's the, the small forward that torched the Kings last night. Um, um Trey Tr Murphy. Yeah. Trey Murphy. Yeah. Look where Trey Murphy was drafted. Like you can find great players The the, this draft very specifically is weak at the top. It's very weak at the top. There is not a consensus number one pick and you know, what is it? Uh, Olivier Saar or Alexander Saar, one of the Saar brothers is at the top of the draft. He'll be one or two or three, but it's not a particularly good draft at the top. That doesn't mean that it's any different than any other draft. And what I mean too is like you could find a good player, sure, but like maybe he's a good player three years from now. It's kind of like the Kings are trying to win now. We're waiting for Keegan to develop still. He was the fourth pick and stuff like that. So it's more so like, can you wait for the 13th, 14th pick, whoever that is, to develop for a couple of years? You know? Yes. They, no, they need guys who can impact now. No, I totally get you. And, and so that's where I'm going to come back to like this weird Stepien thing. The Kings can do the exact same thing that they did last year, where they do trade the 2020, the 14th pick in the 2024 draft. They don't trade the pick before the draft. What they do is they, they draft a player for another team and then they trade that pick, which is exactly last year they, they gave up. Uh, Rashawn Holmes contract and the 2024 pick for, I, I don't know if it was, I think it was a, uh, the draft rights to someone who will never come over from overseas from the Dallas Mavericks. So the Kings can still do that. And there's still going to be value because as we get deeper and deeper into draft season, there are teams that start having workouts and start like watching tape and start, they go to the combine and all that stuff and they fall in love with players. And so there could be a player at number 13 at number 14 and number 17, number 18, that somebody is like, Oh man, I, I got to move up in the draft because I want this guy really bad. And that happens every year. We see a guy who's a, like a number 22 pick in the draft in most mock drafts. It goes all the way up to number eight. And that's because like teams fall in love. So I think very specifically, you start looking at this draft and to Jesse's point, you don't really have a bunch of time to wait for a player to develop, but there's also, in the top end of the draft typically is where your freshmen and, and a lot of uh, like international players go, but also young players. It's like the top 10 is usually where gambling happens. The next 10 picks is where you'll find a lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors who are starting to develop and starting to become who they're going to be as players. And a lot of times the picks in the middle are further along. That's than, where the Miami Heat eat. I mean, they got guys like Tyler Hero and Jaime Hawkes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and it's even like, if you look at Chris Duarte, Chris Duarte is what, the 12th pick in the draft. Uh, a guy, like we talk about, oh, this is horrible. They're not going to be able to get anything. Uh, a couple of years ago, they drafted a kid named Tyrese Halliburton with a 12th pick in the draft. 12th pick. Like uh, the year that they drafted De'Aaron Fox, they traded the 10th pick for the 15 and the 20. The number 10 pick was, uh, who's the, uh, Zach, um, Collins Collins is the number 10 pick. The number 13 pick and number 14th pick Donovan Mitchell at 13, bam, and a bio at 14. So maybe we hold on to that pick then. I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. look, it, like that was a particularly good draft. You know, John Collins goes number 19, uh, Kyle Kuzma goes number 27. OG and Anobi goes to number 23. The Kings, of course, take Justin Jackson at number 15 and Harry Giles at number 20. And, and both of those picks were, you know, just flat out. They weren't good picks, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't find value. And, and not only that, but it doesn't mean that other teams aren't going to say, I see someone in that range that I've got to have. Yeah, I don't think if the Kings miss the playoffs, I don't think they're like necessarily doomed. Oh, the build is messed up. Now money can't trade this or trade that. It just makes makes it maybe a little bit more difficult, but I don't think it's like red alert or anything like that. Well, no, it makes it complicated, Yeah, right? And, and again, I could see the Kings doing the exact same thing they did last year where they get to draft night and they draft somebody for someone else and they trade that pick for a player that matters more. And I'd even go back to... There was a year where the Kings draft. I mean, they uh, they signed Marco Bellinelli, right? And Marco Bellinelli did not work out at all. It's the year they they signed Costa Cufas, Marco Bellinelli, and Rajon Rondo. Yeah, Marco Bellinelli forgot how to shoot. Okay, Marco Bellinelli forgot how to play basketball for a year, and then he was great the next year, right? Um, but the deal is that when they got to that offseason, the Kings were able to take Marco Bellinelli and trade him for the number 22 pick in the draft. Uh, to the the Charlotte Hornets, the Charlotte, well, maybe they're the Bobcats, and I'm not sure what they were. The team they're, of Charlotte, sure. The, the team of Charlotte. So they trade, and that's where they draft Malachi Richardson, right, at number 22. Again, don't worry about the fact that they draft a Malachi who ends up being a bust. Uh, just think to yourself, that's the type of love, that's probably a little bit lower player than what the Kings could get with the, the 14th. The Kings can get a better player Marco Bellinelli are better. So you should be able to get a rotational player for the 14th pick in the draft, no matter what. Even in a suspect draft, mm -hmm. there's going to be somebody who goes, you know what? I would take uh, Chris Duarte and player X um, and and your 14th pick, and I'll give you not a, clearly an all-star level player, but a player, you know, I don't know, better than Do uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. What's like Casey says um, on this or whatever, kind of guy, you're probably going to get a guy with warts. Not necessarily like what you want or anything like that, but a guy who come in and still help. Well, yeah, but I, I also think like, what if uh, like a team like Toronto looks at uh, who's the the guy that they picked up? Uh, Bruce Brown. Yeah, yeah. Middle of the season. What if they, you know what? Well, we take the 14th pick for Bruce Brown. Yeah, well, that's different. And he, he's owed $22 million, so you got to come up with contracts to make the deal work. And then he's a unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, so you're going to have to work that out. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, the 14th pick in the draft could easily yield you something. And it doesn't matter if it's a great draft or not. It's still a draft. There's still players that, that you find. Somebody's going to be good out of this draft. Well, yeah. I mean, look at the, again, the Ben McLemore draft, which is absolutely trash. The whole top 10, well, the top 9 are trash. And then you start getting into guys like, CJ McCollum, uh, you get in, uh, Steven Adams, and oh, by the way, Giannis Antetokounmpo goes like number 15. Yeah, CJ McCollum's a good player, huh? Yeah, he's a little bit of a good player. Um, all right, uh, we're gonna step aside when we come back. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about keys to a victory. H how do the Kings beat the Phoenix Suns, move back into a position of power in the play in? We'll have that next here on the Insiders. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Good save, good save right there. Ugh. I trailed off. All right. John Pose, what kind of career do you think Edie's gonna have? I'm curious. Nope. I think he'll stick around for, for, for some for, for a few years. Like there's people worse than him in the league. I don't know. I'm not saying he's gonna be like, oh, there's like great player or anything like that, but I think he could stick around in the league for a bit. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and, and I would also like when we talk about draft stuff, you got to start looking at like the Kings start creating your own idea of what Monty McNair would do with the 14th pick, you know? And, and that also doesn't mean like, what if somebody else thinks this is a bad draft, right? And they don't like this draft at all. And they want to get out of like number eight. Uh, no serial connection. It's not because I, I lost money. It's because he couldn't play in the pick and roll at all as either defending the big or defending the guard. And it's also because he can't play on the perimeter at all. So uh, Zubats isn't, well, I mean, I don't think that's a good comparison. Zubats is actually, for a guy that big, he has he has quick feet. Uh, anyway, my point being that, that it is possible that someone at, like, say, number, number nine doesn't, you know, they're like, hey, we don't really want the ninth pick in the draft. And the Kings could always move up. Or, or maybe a team at like number six says, "Hey, 
if you go get me a second first round pick, I'll, I'll go do this deal. And so some team comes to the Kings and says, Hey, we want your pick. Um, and we got this, this, and this. There's all kinds of ways you, ways you can do this. I got a question for you. Can they go into this, go into next season without like really making a move? Like, can they maybe make, maybe make their move like before the tread deadline or do they have to do something this off season? Do you think? Oh well, no, they have to do something this off season. No, no question to ask. Uh, I mean, this team, they don't just need like a boost at the deadline. They need a boost during the summer. Someone that you go, yes, you, you have De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis at their home. They get a call and it's like, hey, we're working on this deal. And those guys are like, oh, thank you. You know, that's something that this team needs. And I hope it happens. Yeah. Like Klingham can get worked against a, a seven foot four guy. That that's totally fine. But look at what Klingham did to impact that game. And Klingham may or may not work in Sacramento. It just depends if he can shoot at all. I don't I don't know that he can. I haven't done enough research on him yet. Hey, there's Charlie. We're just riffing over here. Oh, for the show? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I know. Kingsby. What up? Purple and black. Purple and black. Yeah. Just about 60 seconds ready to begin. Okay. Cool. Let me fire up here. No, you don't need to fire up. No, no, I have to lap up. I mean, the computer. Um, sorry. I got no reach with my shoulder. Not anymore. You got Derek White out of that one. Can you mention this one last week? This is, this is he, he'd be perfect, I think. No, I think so now too. It's for, I mean, I just don't know that how you're going to get him. Oh, why are you not in there? Welcome back in. Insiders. I am James Ham. Joining uh joining us, Charlie. Charlie O, what's going on? Hey guys, how are you? Good. I uh, I just wanted to drop in real quick. Got some great news. Starting Monday. Oh. Who we got news? I know what this is. Starting Monday. Going over a two week period of time. Ten people who listen to ESPN 1320 are going to win 500 bucks each. 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 And it is the easiest contest in the world. All you have to do is be listening sometime just after 11 o'clock each day, Monday through Friday. James and Kyle are going to give out a key word. And then sometime just after 3 p.m., D'Lo and KC are going to give out another keyword. Then you go to the website, ESPN1320.com, such a tough website to remember. You enter those keywords, and sometime just after 4.15 p.m., we are going to spin the wheel, pop the balls, do whatever it is we do magically, and we're going to select a winner, and somebody is going to be 500 bucks richer. Now, if you add that all up, yes, we are giving away 5000 bucks over two weeks. Ten people are going to be winners of 500 bucks. That's it. You know, no trivia, no have to, you know, travel to Alviso to get the clue, anything else. Listen for two keywords, enter and win. Can so we make it any easier? So you're going to have two chances to win. You'll have a, a 
uh, a code for the insiders and a code for D'Lo and Casey. Those are all going to be lumped in together into one pool. And so you got two chances to win. Nope. Each no, day? No, you have one chance to win. You have to have the two keywords. One chance to win, but two chances to enter to win. Yes. There we go. There you go. So, so there you go. So there's that. Then also want to let everybody know baseball's back this weekend. Mm. Saturday, 5 30 p.m. Padres Dodgers. Sunday night baseball back, starting off with baseball tonight at 3 p.m. Gosh, we're gonna go with Padres and Dodgers again. I don't know why Machado bets. I don't know, something like that. So anyway, we got baseball back this weekend, but also most importantly, starting Monday. Somebody is going to be 500 bucks richer. Yeah, so money. good luck. And uh, we also have to say, go Kings, please. Look at that. Charlie uh, said Dodgers and bets in one word, in one sentence. Hey. Hey, be nice to show. Hey, okay. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> show didn't do it. Okay. So we let Charlie come in and, and bust in and give us good news. Uh, next week is going to be wild and it's going to be Monday through Friday. And actually it's going to be two weeks straight. Uh, we'll give you a code. Um, you're going to go to the website just like you would have with our Jiffy Lou fast break player of the game, which we still have to give away one of those today. Uh, but, uh, this should be absolutely spectacular. People are asking about, um, tax money. Uh, I believe that if it's under $500, 500 or less, it's you don't have to claim it. I don't know nothing about that. Don't don't come to me for that advice. I, I don't know all the rules with that. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is amazing, amazing stuff. And so look forward to that next week. Um, the chat is also asking for a flag on Charlie. We did not throw it, but we did. We did see the play. We did see the play. I saw the play. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. See. Okay. So uh, let's dive into the Sacramento Kings. Uh, they. They've got two games left in the season. Game 81 tonight, they play the Phoenix Suns at Golden 1 Center. It's a 7.30 start, I believe. This is a big game. It's for all the marbles. Uh, if you win this game, you give yourself an opportunity, just like if you enter to win in our cash giveaway next week on here on ESPN 1320, you give yourself an opportunity to hold on to a seven seed in the play-in tournament, which means you would host a first round game at golden one. And potentially if you lost that game, you would also host a second game uh, in the play in at golden one center. Because, well, yeah, with, with this team, you need all the chances you can get to get in right now. Well, that's what it is. And I, I think Mike Brown and, and De'Aaron Fox both talked about that last night, Jesse, just like, look, we want to have as many opportunities as possible. What you don't want to do is have two games. You have to win two to get in you'd rather have two chances to win one to get in, right? And so that's where the Kings are at right now. Uh, the injury report for the Sacramento Kings is not out yet, uh, but we do know Kevin Herter, Malik Monk will not play. Uh, Keegan Murray um, has been listed as questionable the last two games with a sore calf. I wouldn't be shocked to see him on the injury report again. Kings have kind of been uh, sort of upfront with those. I'd also say that De'Aaron Fox rolled his ankle last night and was uh, moving gingerly last night. I wouldn't doubt that his injury is at least listed on the injury report, but I would be surprised if he didn't play unless he just really, really have had a really bad night. Yeah. Um, I mean, he rolled his ankle. He rolled his ankle last night and I think it was the very next play. He gets the ball and he's getting beat up by Jonas Valanciunas. So he, I, I, we'll see what he decides or whatever. I'm almost positive he plays today. Yeah. I, he, he knows what is, what's at stake and stuff like that. Yeah, he he knows. And this is one of those games where they always say, like, if this was a playoff game, would, would you have played? And this is a playoff game. I mean, straight up, that's what this is for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, if they do beat the Phoenix Suns, they would have to beat the, uh, the Portland Trailblazers on Sunday, and they would have to hope that the Minnesota Timberwolves somehow – knock off the Phoenix Suns in order for the Kings to pick up the seven seed in the plan. Um, for the Suns, they're coming in healthy. Uh, Damian Lee is out, but he's been out for most of the season. And it's just, this is a healthy uh, team that's got three, well, two superstars and, and one star level player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, This is a team that has some, some role players. I, I think their depth has been an issue throughout the season. But certainly you know where their bread and butter's at. Yeah, they they know that, you know, this game is gonna be decided by Devin Booker, by Kevin Durant, and by Bradley Beal tonight, most likely. And then maybe a little bit of uh 
of three point shooting from the other guys. Well, you mentioned the health too. Like Bill's here, Booker's here, Katie's ready to go. Like this is exactly what they want going into the postseason. Like yeah. they could care less how everything else turned out before. It's Grayson Allen is the guy you got to worry about busting you up again tonight. It's always frustrating to when Grayson Allen goes off against your team. Uh, there's no one I I dislike more in the NBA than watching. I mean, not watching him play. Like just like Grayson Allen's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, let's get to keys to victory. Uh, Jesse. What do you got for your first key to victory? Mine are going to be simple today, and I think we all know like what they need. First one, Fox has to carry them. I need Fox to be the leading scorer. I need 30-plus from Fox for this team to have an opportunity to win tonight, I think. Okay. Um, I fully agree with you. Uh, Fox needs to be a superstar, and you know if he's on a bum ankle, he's on a bum ankle. He knows, he knows what's at stake here, and I expect him to come out and give it everything he has, whether he can lead this team to victory or not. I don't think we know, uh, but what we do know is that he's probably the biggest key to anything that they do. No doubt. Uh, my first key to victory, uh, be a goldfish. Um, and if people don't know what that means, that means forget about what happened yesterday. Goldfish don't have like uh, short-term memories. The thing is like after all these losses and all that, like you still have opportunities to help yourself still. Like now you can't make the playoffs, but you can give yourself a chance where you win one of these two games that like you're automatically in. There we go. Exactly. I mean, like you can control your own fate here to a certain degree, especially with Minnesota is going to have a lot to play for on Sunday. Um, and the Suns might just look at this and go, hey, we really don't need to worry about having home court as much as we need to be healthy and uh, and get ready for the next uh, the next uh, like set of games. Uh, what's your second key? All right, I need someone to play the Malik Monk role. Um, Keon Ellis did it on um, against OKC. They had an opportunity to win. Didn't do enough. Obviously, didn't. That was a game where Simonis only took seven shots, but we're past that. I need someone to get that kind of production tonight. I need at least 20 plus from, I'm not going to ask from Simonis, from like HB, Keegan, someone's got to play that role today. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think in this game in particular, you need a 30 piece from, from De'Aaron Fox. I think you need 20 from Sabonis. I think you need 20 from Keegan Murray. I think you need 18 from, uh, from Harrison Barnes, and you need Keon Ellis uh, well, I would say like the trio of Keon Ellis, uh, Davion Mitchell and Trey Lyles, somebody in that group has to get up to like 15. I can and, see that happening. I don't think that's too crazy, to, too, too crazy of an ask either. Yeah. And I, I, I think Mike Brown, like it doesn't matter if second out of a back to back, like this whole, we got to, you know, go deep type deal. N no, no. Tonight is going to be seven or eight guys are playing. That's it. Nobody else is is getting on the court. Unless, play, playoff unless rotation out there. Yeah, it's going to be full fledged playoff rotation. Um, let's see. My uh, my second key. Uh, don't get caught up in the moment. Live in it. Like, look, come out there and just like put it all out there. Like, this is one of those moments where, you know, where y you take a shot. You 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 look across to you know, like maybe there's a. A, a young lady that you're you're interested in and you're like, I don't know if I should ask her out or not. You know what? At some point, if you don't, you, you're not going to go out with her. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Amen. When, Wayne Gretzky and Michael Scott. And Michael Scott. Yes. So this is one of those uh, moments for the Kings where, like, look, you're banged up. You're beat up. You played last night. You lost a bad game last night. You don't have Malik Monk. Things are stacked against you. Just go out there and play. Just it just whatever happens, happens. Uh if if you give everything you have, that crowd will cheer you to no end. They will they will try to carry you home. And uh and so that's my uh my key there. All right, my last key. Whoever's guarding KD, make it as difficult and uncomfortable uncomfortable for him as you can. Cause honestly, like if KD's going off, Book's playing his game, you're not gonna win. Like you just have to do whatever you can to limit him. I'm looking at Keegan. HB, maybe you could try and stuff like that, but Keegan's got kind of got to take charge, I think, guarding KD. Okay. No, I think it's a great key. Uh, that's a very, very difficult player to defend, and you got to find somebody who can slow him down. My final key to victory is get to the basket. This is not a team that has a crazy shot blocker waiting for you. Uh, KD can block some shots. Nurkic can block some shots, but I expect Sabonis to get Nurkic in foul trouble like he does every other time. And then once that happens, you have to get to the basket. Davion, uh, you know, Trey Lyles, uh, De'Aaron Fox. Get downhill. Get downhill on this team. 
Um, all right, we're going to step aside when we come back. Uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about Mike Brown's uh, valuable experience, experience argument and, and some of the other uh, things that are happening, happening with this team and how we feel about them moving into this offseason. So we are the insiders here on ESPN 1320, brought to you by Jiffy Lube. We'll be back in just a sec. I ran that long on purpose. No, yeah, it was good stuff. Okay, uh, you yeah, know yeah. why, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. This means we got to get out earlier, I guess. All right. Oh, what did I say? What did I say, Jason Th Siebenthal? Gretzky stole it. That's such a. If Michael Scott went pro, we'd never talk about Gretzky. That's right. That's always like the fun, one of the funnier parts I feel like about the show is that Michael Scott, like his character can like play hockey, skate, all that stuff. Like when they go out there and all that, like that was just hilarious to me. Yeah. Like it's just a low key thing that no one talks about either. Uh, the basketball episode is amazing. Uh, Sal. Okay. Let's just be honest here. Ham, what are the keys to victory for Jesse and pocket watchers? It's very simple. Sal. this is, there's one key. Play Kenny and not James. James, that's the thing. I'm getting my ass kicked from Kenny for the last two weeks. You have? Yes. Have oh. you not been seeing the graphics wheels he's been throwing out there? Who is coming up with the name? Damien. Damien is like the commission of the ref. Okay. Yesterday okay. we did Drew Holiday. I guessed way under. Oh, way under. Yeah, um, I guess. I guess. Well, I'm going to guess like. And we're guessing at the end of his next contract too. Okay. Oh, the end of his next contract. Yeah, the one that he just signed. 325? See, I went like 315 or 310, I think it was. He was 389. Oh, man. You know he's already played 15 seasons? Yeah. That's I don't think wild. he's been around that long. Well, you remember he was drafted by Philadelphia and then traded so they so Philly could draft Nerlens Noel as part of the uh, the process so they could send him for a year. Aldrin, there's, there's no way you believe this. You have to be trolling. I think Aldrin's the hot take guy in the chat. I think I think I've, I think I've gathered that he's the hot take guy. Aldrin J, or AJ as we we sometimes know him as. Oh, jeez, I forgot to. My bad. Oh, the nothing but net giveaway repost. I forgot to do the join us tweet this morning. Boom. I hope everyone participates in the free cash giveaway. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Make sure you get both those keywords too. Yes. Starting next week. Next week. Uh, we will have a code word today, Frank Anwar. We're going to do that right at the beginning of the next segment. We'll do our Jiffy Loop Fast Break Player of the Game for last night. Um, and then we will have, uh, that's going to be a little bit confusing. On Monday, we have two more. Two games. Two games, but on top of... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's a problem for you and Kyle Madsen to solve. Oh, no. Shout out Kyle. He had Nando's yesterday. I think that's like a big thing in the UK. I've heard about Nando's. Oh, really? Yeah. I need to reach out to my guy, Kyle. I've just left him alone. Like, No, that's the way we got to do it. Like, We'll leave him alone and stuff like that, but when he gets back Monday, we need a summary of what happened. Yes, yes. And then we'll give away money monies and other stuff it'll be a good monday if the weekend isn't great for the kings maybe you can win some cash if the weekend is great for the kings then you can win some cash that's right and then money on, excuse me and then on tuesday you also can win money oh yeah we have to we have to get the the cheat sheet on what we can and can't say I don't even know what just happened, Jesse. I've never heard that rejoiner. Well, this one's up here. It's up there? This is like some Street Fighter stuff, or maybe. I, I feel like I should be running up a set of stairs in Philadelphia now. Yeah, that was that was, that was a good one. Let me Air see. Punching. What is that called? 
I don't know what that is. That is one of the K-pop songs on here. I'm that's not sure a, how to pronounce the name. That's of it. a K-pop song? Yeah. Now I just envisioned a bunch of K-pop dudes standing on stairs. Like I'm pumped up after that. Oh, We're gonna oh, kill this last segment. That we are gonna kill this last segment. Um, first and foremost, let's get to our Jiffy Lou fast break player of the game. Um, number one, go to ESPN 1320 right now. I don't care what you're doing. If you, even if you're driving down the freeway, go to ESPN 1320. There's a giant box in the middle of the screen that says Jiffy Loop, Jiffy Loop fast break player of the game. You're going to click on that button. You are going to enter a keyword and that keyword will enter you in to an opportunity to win a $100 gift certificate. One of our remaining three $100 gift certificates to Jiffy Loop. On top of that, you will be entered into our final drawing for a Sacramento Kings jersey. I don't know what jersey we have left. I have not been on top of that. That is all promotions, and I have nothing to do with any of it. Uh, we just get to announce winners when it happens. We get to do the fun part of it. We do, and usually Kyle gets to do the fun part, and, and then we celebrate, right? Shout out promotions as well. That's right. So um, our Jiffy Lou fast break player for the game, and I this I, I could get some uh, some like abuse for this one. Um, but as opposed to going with an opposing player, uh, which would have been CJ McCollum because CJ McCollum uh, thought he was getting drafted by the Sacramento Kings way back when and didn't uh, 2013, I believe it was uh, they, they brought him in three times, including the Monday before the draft. Uh, and he thought that he was being drafted here. Um, so he busts up the Kings every time. Yeah. Still thinks about it now. He does. He does still think about it. He's mentioned it to me multiple times that he thought he was getting drafted here. Uh, so my, uh, it, I'm not going with a, a Pelicans player. Um, we've been dragging Harrison Barnes over the last week. And for good reason, he did not have, uh, he had, let's just be honest. He had a horrible road trip yep. and, and it was not good. It was no good at all. Uh, but when you show up, like he showed up last night and, you get 22 points and you're active and you get five rebounds, you get four assists and you're part of the reason why the team had any chance to come back and win. Uh, that's where I'm going to say, okay, like I I've got to be fair and, and you deserve it. So the Jiffy Lube fast break, fast break player of the game for last night's game is uh, the password is H B for Harrison Barnes. I mean, you said it too late. You play bad, we'll talk about it. You play well, we'll talk about it as well. No, that's right. I mean, we have to be fair. This isn't just like, I, like again, I don't have any stake in any of this. People think I, I like players or don't like players, whatever. That's that's not the case. Um, you know, like, I, I've got to call it as straight as I can, as, as I'm watching, as I'm reporting, as I'm asking questions, all that stuff. Uh, let's get into this this nuanced conversation. Uh, Mike Brown in postgame last night. Um, he had a couple of interesting takes, a couple of like, I think that they were quote worthy and I, I would have pulled the audio, but it would have been too difficult to do. And, you know, in an eight or nine minute interview, uh, he did say for all of us to go through, this is an invaluable learning experience. And he said like, look, I want to win every freaking game. And he said that term multiple times, he used that, that word every game. I, we want to win if we're the Sacramento Kings, that's what he he kept saying. But at the same time, you have to understand that sometimes you don't win. And the value of this is uh, is immeasurable. That th this group of players needs to go through this. And I, I think, Jesse, it, it lends us to like this, this really interesting discussion. Because I don't think what Mike Brown is talking about moral victories. I think what he's talking about is like he wants to coach his team for 10 years at least and, and the beginning stages of a playoff run are are difficult They're like when you start to become a playoff team and, and you jump and you win was it 18 games more than they had won the previous year last season last season they went from a 30 win team they went from a non-playoff team to the three seed in the west it, yeah but it was also it was a 30 win team to a 48 win team yeah 18 game jump there's gonna be some growing pains from skipping steps and then you get to this season and they're going to take a step back in wins and losses. There's no way for them to get to 48, but there is a way for them to get to 46. There is a way to get to 47. And that kind of tells you it's a very similar season, but it didn't feel similar. And so I, I don't believe what Mike is going for is, is moral victories. What he is saying is that this is a process. Developing a team is a process. And 
Like I, I'd even say this, Jesse, if we we keep talking about how amazing the play in tournaments been, right? How how it's helped the game. If there was no play in tournament, the Kings would still be the odds on favorite right now to to be the eight seed in the Western Conference. Like whether that's a good thing or not, that probably not because you're going to pl- probably place uh, play the Denver Nuggets in in the first round. Um, but the fact that you still have an opportunity to get to seven, that that you could play a Minnesota Timberwolves or an Oklahoma City team that you've had success against this year, like this is still why you're in it. You're in it for the growth. You're in it for the learning process. You're sometimes you got to take your lumps, man. Yeah, not no, no, lost, even though it's looked horrible. Like um. Not horrible. It's too tough of words. It doesn't look great all season. Like not all is lost. They can still make the playoffs. We can still see the Kings um in a seven game series, like you said, against the Timberwolves or the Thunder. I'm not gonna go out and say, oh yeah, they can still win a playoff series or whatever, but more so still make the season a success. Cause for me, um, if they don't make the playoffs, I'd say the season is unsuccessful. But as a whole in this build, I don't think like um like there's really been too many steps taken back. Like you take a step back or whatever, and you look at the whole context of all this. Like, sure, you missed the playoffs or whatever. It's going to be a little bit more complicated for Monty McNair to make a deal. But also, you could see, like, if you're able to get Malik Monk here, like, you know where you need to fix this team. It's not more so we're searching. We're not searching for one of the top guys. We have both of the All NBA players or whatever. We got Malik Monk. Hopefully, we can sign back. Keon Ellis has been a big, big revelation for the team this year. And I just think like there's um the steps are that you can see the steps in front of you that they need to take. Yeah, it's what we're looking at is a summer of a reload, not a rebuild. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, that's okay. Like this team clearly needs some, uh, some changes, right? It, it, you just do, you've got to figure out a way to, to fill some of the holes in this roster to, uh, to change the general vibe of some of the positions on, on the, on the court. Um, and, and it's something that like, look, I, like, I don't think it matters win or lose in the playoffs at this point. This isn't a championship contender, like just straight up like they, this season, who they are today, who they have been the whole season. I, I don't, I didn't like it when we heard that early in the year, but I was it, literally going to say right now, soaring through it in the chat too. We went from Mike Brown saying want to be contenders this season to that. I'm not worried about the comment yesterday, but I didn't like them talking about we want to win like this year we're contenders and stuff like that. Yeah. But why not talk about goals? Right? Like why not talk about wanting to be bigger and better than, than maybe you can be. Because who knows? Like, we don't know. We didn't know that that team could take an 18-win jump the previous year. We didn't know that they could have the all the the highest offensive rating in the history of the game. So why not? If you if you make some tweaks, you uh, you improve your defense, you have a similar offense, and let's say you win a few more games at home than you did the previous year. There was a clear recipe for this team to improve. The fact is, they, none of that happened. But it doesn't mean that this team this season is a total failure. Because I, I think we can point to the, at the end of the day, this team did learn how to play defense. They yeah, did yeah. get better defensively. We also know exactly how they have to move forward. Like and I think that's the biggest thing too. There's no like fog in front of it. Like we just like you said, we know how they need to move forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I, I would also say this too. Um, I, I know like fans are like very very upset right now, and I get it. And again, I'm not going to tell you how to fan. Like if you want to boo, that's fine. If you want to cheer your team all the way when they're they're losing by 25 and, and you just want to try to be there for them and support them, that that's fine too. Um, but I think you also have to look at Mike Brown's perspective and you have to look at the, the player's perspective on this. They don't own the 16-year drought. That has nothing to do with them. I'm sure there's players in that locker room, honestly, were like, ah, 16-year drought has nothing to do with me. Well, I, I mean... Not in a bad way, but more so like, like they just weren't here for that. Yeah, like... Like Colby Jones was like three when that drought started. Colby Jones, what does the 16 year drought mean to you? I don't know. I got my license when it ended. Yeah. Like, I, I don't even know. Like, so I, I think that they're like, while fans want it all right now and you want to find success right now, you also have to look at the perspective of the people who are playing the games. It's a coach who's in his second year in Sacramento, a dysfunctional franchise that has like, like done so many things to hurt themselves over the last you know, two decades that it's not even funny, but now we have this, this thing where like, you're in it. Like this has been a playoff team all season long. Yeah. They've done a 180. Yeah. From um, what they used to be. Definitely. No doubt. No, totally. So uh, that's where I would be like, Hey, look, you can feel the angst and the, the weight of that 16 year playoff drought, but maybe as fans, you wear that and, and you don't put that on the players. Well, yeah. Cause the fans are the ones who are there every year. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it. I get why fans want more and why they're frustrated and why 
they're angry and they want to turn to social media and just go bonkers at the end of a game. But at the same time, like have some perspective, uh, at least try to, because when a coach says, you know, like, look, we're, we're learning. He means his team today. He does not mean the 19 of uh, the, the 2017 Sacramento Kings. He doesn't mean the 2013 Sacramento Kings. He means this group right here has to go through some of this stuff. And, and they haven't found success going through it, but hopefully they're learning from it. And if yeah, they're not, go uh, ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the thing. Like, didn't happen this year. That's fine. If it's happening in year three, that's when it's an issue for me and stuff like that. You got to, yeah. like, just honestly, like, take progressions, I think, each year. Like, this year, there wasn't that many. Like I said, Keon played well, though. But, like, next year, like, if they're going through the same issues, then, yeah, that's kind of where you kind of start looking sideways or whatever at the team. Yeah, well, I don't know. Even in year two of the the 1999-2000 Sacramento Kings, they, again, they win 44 games. They go 44 and 38. They're fifth in the Pacific Division. They get bounced in the first round by the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, just keep that in the back of your mind. I will fight back on that a little bit. I feel like the game's a little bit different. Things happen a lot faster now. Like, it's not more so... Like, um, like you just let it like, like teams will lap you. Like you can end up like the Atlanta Hawks or even the Dallas Mavericks from a couple of years ago where like you make the conference finals and it's like, okay, like, yeah, we're just going to develop and stuff like that. And it's just, you never made your, like your, your, you never took your shot, you know? Yeah. But didn't, haven't we seen the Denver Nuggets do that same thing and then build back up and get to the point? Like maybe they skipped a step or two during the, the bubble. And then all of a sudden they've got to work their way back up. And, and now we see where they are. I mean, like, look, it's usually a process in the NBA unless you you go out. And I think Mike even said this. Somebody said this the other day. Uh, it's not like LeBron and Chris Bosh and Dwayne uh, joined Dwayne Wade in Miami. And even that team took an extra year. Yeah, right. That team took an extra year to get to the to to win a championship. So I think it's just an interesting perspective to have. And and um, I don't think that people should be bagging on the team right now like let this thing play out let let's see where they go and then you can be frustrated afterwards but also remember that this is part of a much larger uh like build a, a, a years long build it does take time yeah uh the other thing jesse that uh we'll we'll get to um just as as damian barling joins us here on the uh the handoff is um was the national media right about the injury issue <laughs> Like, I don't, I, I don't know, because this team wasn't playing well when they were healthy. Like they weren't totally playing well. They didn't look like they did last season. I get so I, I get that, but I mean, if we were to add Trey Lyles in the first thirteen games of the season, would this team be better? If we were to kind of move stuff around in a different way, would this team be? Would they be better than they are today? And, and I don't want to say like, oh, they're all right, but I also say like, the perspective is that no, the Kings weren't only good last year because they stayed healthy the whole year. But I would also say you can't then flip around and say, well, we would have been better this year if we weren't, if we were healthy the whole year. See, I don't necessarily agree totally with that. Like, like I said, they were healthy at one point, a few, like they were healthy at times this season and like, it just didn't look great. So I'm not going to put like all the injuries and like say that's all on that. We can't use Malik Monk's injury over the last couple of weeks to be an excuse for the way they played the entire season. No, we but said you this. can say that they would probably already be a playoff team if he was there, or there's a chance. I don't chance. think I can say that at all. Yeah, I'm with them. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, don't think, think so I can say that at all. Now, I don't agree. Like, this team, you know, you can you can watch, you know, games like New York. You can watch games like Boston. You can watch games like uh, OKC. Okay, OKC, okay, thank games. you. Thank you. The, the, the Oklahoma City game. Yeah. Um, you, you, I, I'll, I'll focus on those three. You, 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 could, you could look at games like, though, and go, okay, Malik would have settled things down. We believe Malik would have settled things down. In our mind, we can tell ourselves, like, yeah, that's what Malik does. But Malik has off nights, too. Like, mm -hmm. Malik has tough nights. I think anything, you know, we're doing right now, like, if the Kings win their next two, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure that they will. But if they win their next two, that puts them at 47 wins. They've lost, arguably, some would argue he's their second best player. I think everyone would argue he's their third best player. They lost him for the final most important stretch of the season. But he was here when they lost to Charlotte. He was here when they lost to Detroit. He was here when they lost to all those other teams. And this goes back to the to the remark that that that, that, that De'Aaron made that kind of drove me nuts at the time. And and I get what he was saying. He was 100 percent right. He said it's no, you know, it sucks. It's it's one loss in the loss column. You're right. Until today, now it's a lot more. 
because you're the only team that this has happened to. And so I think we look at it's a drastically different team without Malik Monk. There's no question about that. It's a drastically different team with their starting two with their with their two guard depth gone, starting and otherwise gone. It's a completely different team. I hope the national media, who was critical of this team's success last year because of how healthy they were, is willing to make the same excuses for the Sacramento Kings that they were willing to make for the uh, New Orleans Pelicans last year and the Minnesota Timberwolves last year. Malik Monk is out. Kevin Herter is out. That has caused some issues here with this team. It's why I don't have a lot of confidence going into tonight's game, and it's why I am of the belief you give me one game, Sacramento versus anybody, winning in, I'll take Sacramento in that game. But you have to win like a series of games, man, that's tough for me. Even to even if you lose one and you have the opportunity to be winning in in the second one, I'll take that. The only thing where I'd write Sacramento off is the 9-10. It's like I can't see it with the way that they're made right now. I can't see it. But I think we're using Malik's injury to cover up for a lot of issues that this team has had all year. No, I haven't used that as the excuse why they're losing all these games. But I certainly understand that they can't function absolutely with, without him. Absolutely. In the same way that, like, if you take away Devin Booker, which I'm not saying that Malik is as good as Devin Booker, but, like, if you're looking at the second or third best player on the Suns, if you're looking at the second or third best player on the Lakers... You do it for anything. ...or the, the Golden State Warriors, you're going to have a tough time. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact is that the Kings weren't built to withstand... This one specific player, and and really, I don't even think it's as much like the points and, and like the energy that Malik brings. It's his impact on the players around him. Well, it's the it's it's you know we 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 did the points thing with Herder and and Monk. Our you know our our consistent line is you lost twenty five points out the gate with the possibility mm -hmm. of fifty, but it's the way those two create the points that has completely changed the way this team has to operate. Yes. They have one creator right now in De'Aaron Fox. Davion can only do so much. Like I was watching this last night really closely because they made a conscious effort to try to get to the basket. They made a conscious effort to try to do other things. Some would say like maybe they, 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 they passed up some looks and maybe it was too conscious of an effort to stay away from that, you know, 50 plus number of 58 threes that they shot the other night. But Davion can create and he can penetrate. He could like try to lay it in. Like you're gonna you 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 meet a rim protector, you're gonna have a problem. You meet a you 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 meet a team, you meet a guy like Valanchunas, Chet Holmgren. Like that's you might get by once, you might get by twice. You're not gonna be able to make a living out of doing that during the game. Malik's gonna go up. He's gonna challenge you. He's gonna challenge Chet. He's gonna challenge Valen. Block the shot, Anthony Davis. Block the shot, Kavon Looney. Block the dunk, Draymond Green. Any of them. Davion can't do that. So you're left, and, and I think Davion does some really, really good things, but he can't do that, right? So you're left with De'Aaron and De'Aaron only, and it creates limitations. Like, I think Keegan is, I think Keegan is doing his best, right? But he's not. He's not ready. He's not that shot creator. Like, he, yeah. he's, I think there's another thing. We haven't talked about this. We're going to do it. We're going to do it today because I, I put it off. I, I, I had it in the notes after Adam Silver talked. The change, the, 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 I, I think it's, I think it's absolutely incredible that Adam Silver, consciously and admittedly, told the officials we're going to change how we because because too many general managers and coaches and stupid ass media people like Brian Winhurst are complaining that there's too much offense. Okay, you fundamentally changed the game in that aspect. Now De'Aaron and Domas can't get calls anymore. They already didn't get calls. Now you're running this restrictive form of offense that you put out there in the middle of the goddamn season, and you're wondering why these guys aren't going to the foul line. Yeah, tough look. Yeah, like that is a that's a that's a, how do you do that? You change the way you officiate the game in the middle of the season, and we're wondering around. Wonder, we're we're walking around wondering why Sacramento can't score more than 107 points anymore. Come on, man. There's a there's a there's a lot of things at play. I'm not excusing the Sacramento Kings. For their for their for their early season struggles, I think the frustrations, I think the things that the Sacramento Kings have done wrong this year, are 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 like manifesting themselves right now. We're seeing it 
right now. But I also think they're restricted by whatever this nonsense is that Adam Silver has put into play and the fact that they're without two of their best players or two two of their best scorers. It's all just way too much for them to overcome at this point in the season, I feel like. But it, and, and that's the other thing. It's not. It's not to me. If yo, because with you just have to, you just have. They scored a hundred and twenty something last night. I don't know, like, I don't know how locked in Phoenix is to tonight's game. I really don't because we keep talking. We gotta go. I'm I'm not done. You got thirty <laughs> seconds. I've got, I've got a lot. How much? Thirty you get, seconds. Yeah. You you've you, you've got you. We keep talking about how important these games are. How important these games are. How important these games are. Look, the Kings, the Kings and Kings and Suns play tonight. They both play Sunday. They're both gonna play a postseason game. I don't know that Phoenix is coming in here like, oh my God, we got to win this. This is this this game isn't win or go home. This game isn't life or death. But when you get into a win or go home game with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and those guys, that's where I'll get a little nervous. But that's where I'll feel Domas and De'Aaron will be amplified as well. Give me one game, and I'll take the Sacramento Kings. All right. I just don't know if they can get that one game, though. We'll see if they will. Uh, it's going to be difficult. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the insiders. Uh, more D'Lo and Casey coming up there. I think Damien's going to be screaming for four hours straight. Uh, and Kenny will probably be as well. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Jesse, for filling in uh, a whole bunch this week. You are the potatoes here uh, on San- uh, on ham and the, the side dishes uh, here on the insiders here on ESPN 1320. Sweet. Good stuff, man. Good See you, Chetty. Good stuff. Mark, we're trying. I thought I was going to win yesterday. So when I lost, like my face just kind of went, oh, like that was real. I thought I was going to win yesterday. John, leave my Dolphins alone. We're in the same boat. We hit, we eat at the same lunch table, the Dolphins and Raiders. We got to work together. I got it, Manny. I'll pick up the dub today. Bryce, I saw that too. I hope it's not true. I hope there's something else. Because at that point, how do you not work it out? Put it out in the universe, Abel.
doesn't matter because Oh, got you. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, understood. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, hey, 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 let's hey, go. Hey. Let's go. Is she in here? She was earlier. Katrina, you in here? Ramsey. Yep, 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 yep. No. What up, Dr. David? There she is, Katrina. Birthday girl. Birthday girl. Yo, we running them air horns for our girl Katrina. Katrina, happy birthday! Yes, indeed. One half of the first couple of the chatty house. Katrina, happy birthday, man. We love you. Uh, appreciate all the support you and Ramsey show us, and we love you for tuning in. Uh, and we appreciate you for being with us here uh, on a day that probably a lot of you are frustrated. We welcome you in here to the April 12th edition, the Friday, April 12th edition of D-Lo and KC. I'm Damian Barling. The ultimate needle mover in God mode himself. He's the Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. Quick note, man, before we dive into business here, reminder, we're going to be out at uh, the Guild Theater tomorrow hosting a speaker series with Chris Weber. We'd love for you to be a part of it. And go to eventbrite.com, search Chris Weber. The speaker series will pop up. You can check out uh, some of the links on our social media page. Uh, use the promo code ESPN1320 uh, to come see uh, Chris Weber, his new book uh, available for everybody now. Uh, excited to hear Chris uh, tell some stories tomorrow. Excited to be out in Oak Park tomorrow. Uh, really hope you could join us again. Eventbrite.com, search Chris Weber. Use the promo code ESPN1320 uh, and come hang out with D-Lo and KC. Uh, we're going to be bringing C Web on stage tomorrow, man. It's going to be a good time. Yes, good time indeed, for sure, man. Yes, indeed. Come on out there, man. If you if you got the opportunity, man, come rock with C Web. He's back in the city, man. That fried chicken and uh, potato salad and cornbread. Yeah, that ain't going. That, that's not going to hurt the evening either. Let's get it. That ain't going to hurt the <laughs> evening either, um, or the afternoon, I should say. Well, the Kings lose again, man. Yeah. Um, one thirty-five, one twenty-three. I, I. I just have feelings about this one, man. I, I I never felt they really had a chance in it. I felt like they were. I I, I I'm glad they made those runs. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the run the run at the in the in, in the first half was. I thought that was commendable. I was like, that's this is a basketball team finding itself in a game. It, it to, to me they looked jittery to start. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it looked like they were you know they were having a moment. Maybe they were a little unsure about what was going on. Like they they just didn't look fluid. Um, they settled in, I think the jitters and, and that's my own words. I, I, these are professional basketball players. They probably didn't have that. It was something else. Credit to new Orleans. It's a fantastic defense, but I didn't buy what was happening. Like I felt like Sacramento was working so hard to get every basket when they would go on runs, new Orleans would answer. And if you look at the play log, you think, okay, this is just, this is, this is just two, you know, two sprinters running a race right here. And in reality, watching that game, I felt like Sacramento was using every bit of energy they had every time down the floor to get a basket and everything just looked so easy for new Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a, a shot at Sacramento or the way that they were playing defense. It just looked like, 
the Pelicans were in a groove from the start and they were never rattled by what Sacramento was doing on the offensive end. They weren't rattled by the turnovers. They weren't rattled by anything. They would just call timeout, come back, and they'd look like they'd settle back into that smoothness. And C.J. McCollum played a big part in that. Uh, Trey Murphy played a big part in that. They just looked comfortable the whole night. And we do this gimmick all of the time about win and loss and what did you feel. When that game got started, I think it was not 9-2, to 9-3, to three, something like that. I never felt like Sacramento was going to win. I never, even even when they made the run, even when they made the, you know, the second half run, they got within a couple. I, I just, I don't see it. Like New Orleans, sometimes you could see a team rattled. Mm -hmm. New Orleans never looked rattled to me. Sacramento looked good. They were working. They got, they, they, they were just working so hard. It felt like they had to be perfect on every offensive possession because of the, 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 the deficit they, cre they created. Yeah. But it's not realistic nah, man. for anybody. You know, um, I actually don't think that <laughs> lose flash. I want to see the Pelicans again, but not because they lost to them every time. It's mm -hmm. just because that would probably mean like, uh, I don't know, they're seven. Somehow they fell out. Somehow yeah. the Warriors won or the well, <laughs> like, I don't. The Pelicans, like, the Pelicans will play a big role in yeah. where Sacramento finishes. I, I need the Pelicans <laughs> to go ahead and win out. Like, yeah, win the next, win the next two. Right, so right, right. That's one of the reasons why I don't want to see him again. But if we do see him, and I know you don't, you don't, you don't like these things all the time. Um, but I do believe that sometimes it calls for it and you like to see it. It's something should have happened yesterday. Not saying somebody jumping in the air and you undercut them or whatever, but something physical should have happened because you're hundred percent right. The Pelicans have no care in the world. And if you, if you set a hard screen or, you know, do something like that, that's not going to make them scared. But the hope is maybe they don't have the same level of comfort or maybe focus. Maybe they get mad because of what happened or, you know, and they try to do something to get back to you or something. Something had to happen because you're hundred percent right. Pelicans came into this game with no worries in the world. Didn't feel anything about what the Kings were or weren't doing out there. And I thought there should have been some type of attempt at an energy shift. And mm. maybe it was too late, you know, at that point, but if you see him again, and I don't even know if it'll matter next year because teams might be different, mm -hmm. but if you were to see him again, I would like, we always talk about it. Maybe it's romanticized, but that whole uh, in 99 playoffs against Utah game two, uh, Stockton's coming through the lane. Mm -hmm. Weber takes a technical foul mm -hmm. to knock him on his ass real quick. I, I know you're not necessarily in favor of that all the time, and I'm not saying it guaranteed will work, but I agree with you. Pelicans had no worries in the world, mm -hmm. and you had to do something to try and change that. And I, I don't know, maybe that would have been the start of it. But yesterday, maybe it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, CJ McCollum, who was already shooting a ridiculous 66% from three mm -hmm. behind uh, against the Kings, mm -hmm. the percentage went up. Incredible. It went up. At that, this, I honestly I'm didn't sick think. sick of seeing that guy. <laughs> CJ McCollum was 9 of 12. That is a stunning number man he was nine of 12 i don't i did not know he missed three shots nah it nah. Uh, specifically three threes it did not feel like he anytime cj didn't shoot a three i felt like that was a positive possession for sacramento mm -hmm. um you're right i don't agree with like i'm okay with legal physicality um I, I I don't I don't like when, you know, these old timers talk about knocking a guy to their ass and, you know, they they reference stuff from like 88. Like, it's not the same game, bro. Like, I was just telling James, it's not even the same game it was back in November, for God's sakes. It's a completely different game now. Go ahead, Jesse. Was something that had even phased the Pelicans, though? So that's and that was Maybe the other not. thing. Because I feel that like was the other thing. I feel like watching it yesterday, the Kings just they're not good enough. I hear you. And I feel like with certain teams that might work. I don't know. And, and you're right. Try it. Right. Like, I, I get it. Try it. It'd be a better technical foul than the one De'Aaron got. But. Armchair quarterback, I don't think it would have mattered. Not for that team. Like, you want to do it against. A, hell, you, tonight, like Phoenix might be a team that you could get away with doing that. too. I don't think new I, they, like we, we like pro wrestling and boxing and all of that stuff. It, 
New Orleans would be the ones who like wipe the blood off and like lick it off their hand. It's like, <laughs> all right, dude, like whatever. Like that that's their that's what they are. They're they're Mick Foley getting thrown off the hell in a cell and smiling. Right. But and, with his and tooth the, in his nose. And the, and That'd the, be Valanchunas with his tooth up his nose, smiling at Doma. And, and the, the the thing about it though is sometimes for guys like that, it seems like that, you gotta you gotta bring the fight to them. And that's clearly gotcha. not what the Kings did yesterday. I hear you. You know, they uh, they a hundred percent. They like you said. You may bring the fight to them, and they start laughing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But clearly, the way you're going about it ain't working. Like you, they, and it's not necessarily your game. It's the fact they have you. You could have played great, mm-hmm. and the Pelicans in that first quarter would have been like, it don't matter. Yeah, like we about to we about to do. Well, we they were playing like a team guys. that had beat you four times, mm-hmm. and knew they were going to beat you a fifth. Like that's the. That's the that's the tough part. And you talk about like seeing them again. Now you got a team who's beat you five times who doesn't believe that you can beat them. And yeah, you play with a different level of confidence. Yeah. It's the confidence we play with every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the confidence we play with every that's day. Facts. It's different. And you know, it 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 takes a lot. You probably don't rattle that team until the fourth quarter. And, and we'll see in in rattle i don't think you can rattle them but you can get them out of their comfort zone you can th- get them thinking about other, like i said if the course where everything happens um you know in the first like that type of screen by sabonis or something mm-hmm. like that happens instead of cj or zion thinking about oh barbecue chicken i'm about to uh i'm about to cook harrison barnes maybe they're thinking oh we getting physical well let me get physical back there. and now mm-hmm. they're not even thinking the same way they were not that they're scared but they oh they want to get physical i got an elbow for you all right cool think about the elbow don't think about this 15 foot jumper you keep hitting in my head you know what i'm saying just change just change their mindset up a little bit because right now it was just it's it's easy work easy work yeah that was uh but it still might not have mattered, right? Like it, that's the whole thing. Like it, it might. And that, and, and so, and and that's the 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 other killer to last night's game for me because of the way that it started. It was a game very early. I obviously cared about the game. I was completely non emotional about the game because I resigned myself. Okay, the Kings can't beat the Pelicans tonight. And I just watched that game. The game was dead to me. I was just sitting there. I was literally just sitting there watching it. Like I had no investment in the world. Like it just, it, 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 I hated that. Like, I just like, this is a great run. It's a hell of a shit. De'Aaron's, that's the other thing. I I know De'Aaron had like 40 Mm -hmm. against Boston. It might've been his best game of like the last month. He's doing everything he could. He, He was efficient. He was, exactly. He was doing everything he possibly could last night. Um, in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end, uh, I hated that, and it and it and it gave me. I don't know what to think tonight. I mean, I think I do know what to think tonight, but I also know. I don't know. There's just so many frustrating things about last night's game, man. We'll talk about it. Harrison played great. They hit 16 threes. They shot 40 plus percent, and in, in in a game they were never in. It felt like they were never in. So we'll 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 talk about it. Of course, we'll talk about tonight. We've said this for weeks now. It's the biggest game of the year until (laughs) the next one. And now the stakes are different, right? This is the one. Six is no more. And now it's seven. Everyone's willing to chalk up a dub on Sunday. Okay. It's dangerous, Mm -hmm. but okay. That means you got to get this one. And otherwise, you're all going to have to be, we're all going to have to be big Pelicans fans the next two days because you're going to need them to take a couple of teams out along the way, man. We'll talk about it. We're just getting started. We are really happy that you're here with us on this Friday. It's Thielen with KC. You're here. Yeah, we got, we got some bread to give away next week. That's, yeah. Streets was saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was about to say the streets no, no, was the saying streets it. streets were talking. Oh, the streets was talking last night, too, about 9 o'clock. That was a joke. I'll, we can talk about that on or off there. That was. I'm so disappointed and disgusted by some of these. The hip-hop is dead. No, no, no. Don't no, do that. No, 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 no. Because your boy's been sending subliminals to everyone. Look at it. Look at it. No. Look, go, get no. go get your Drake jacket. I'm going to tell you why it's Go get your Drake jacket. We'll I'm come back. I think someone said October's very own caraway yesterday on the wow. chat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have been Zabo if I remember correctly. <laughs> CSPN 1320. No, first of all, Stephen Brown. Chill, bro. Chill. Where, where's it at? Chill. Look at this. Look at this dude. Those guys were more physical, aggressive, 
and way hey. longer last night. Well, yo, yo. We gotta, I yeah. almost threw a flag on Charlie yeah. earlier. You got to end the – we got to end the, the no Diddy thing this week. Don't do that. <laughs> What what Charlie do? Oh, Charlie said something. I looked the other way. I almost threw a flag. Chat wanted a flag on Charlie earlier. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you say? I don't even remember exactly. Chat no. might remember. Pull up the tape. Did you get a donut? I did. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. There's a there's a chocolate one in there still. Bring it in. So Jesse, here is my issue with what's going on with this beef. And it's not it's not necessarily going to Drake. I don't really care about that. I hate the whole, oh, let's get on the same album and make a diss. It's like the Avengers. That's garbage. Drake. Get, Drake gets his guys, his team or whatever together. They Ooh. diss. Ooh. I don't know. The Drake's, He's Drake's friends. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything like this where, oh, let's all, first of all, and I love Future and Metro Boomin. I haven't listened to this particular album yet, but the last one was fire. No shade on it or whatever. I, 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 I hate two albums of emotional about this man. Get your diss off. Like that was fire. Let's all right. Let's keep moving. Let's make hits. They they spent the whole album title for title going going to Drake. We want more disses. Wait, we want they? more disses. Yeah, have you ever seen like so the the. The titles of like on the first album, I don't know how many tracks it's for argument's sake, 16. Okay. Nine of them Fucking are responses to titles from Drake's album. So like um like and like I said, I forgot the exact name. But I'm like, not tuned but like in for enough answer, to this shit. I didn't answer, even know that. Uh Drake Drake has a song maybe that says Where's Pluto? On Future Metro Woman, I'm right here. Like, oh, uh, I love that girl. She didn't love you. Like I'm like get get the fuck out of here. This, this what are we doing? What are we doing? Get on wax. Say what you gotta say, and and let's let's keep it let's keep it that way. All this that's other stuff. Funny. Oh, that's whack. So look, I gave you Here's one album, thing. but the second album, two albums, and then you got people just hopping on. Do it on your own track. No. I will say J Cole was done dirty yesterday. By the way, J Cole, J. Cole? was done dirty. Yes, because they're throwing a, like a line from him on one of Metro Boomin's tracks or whatever acting like maybe they're, they're tr uh, acting like he put it out this past week about the did like not dissing kendrick and stuff like that but i guess he recorded it like a month or like months ago but they're going oh at yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that yeah that's a that's yeah. all cap yeah there is nothing in that record now i know i i found the line people are yeah talk that 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 no that had yeah, nothing to do that has yesterday. nothing to do with nothing well it's just a line and so a there's a line but doesn't he doesn't he directly um address this past week on future and metro booming i thought he did not alone no, I, I think, think it's so. a big i think it's a big coincidence no, though I don't like think the line so. you're talking about is people get to shoot and i become a track star right i think it's something else there's another the one I think. that i could see him just saying any other time but i thought i'll, I'll look it up real quick i thought that's he says, not even the I, line i was talking about oh that's the one i saw i'm 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 he's just saying like he doesn't get into beefs and stuff like a, that yeah he had a no he had a line about oh what was it uh, I never, I never wanted like beef or something. Yeah, it, I just I, wanted to be a conscious rapper. Yeah, with we're a talking about the same or something things. like that. Okay, yeah. and that's that's the one that he he did months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. like John. Yeah. yeah, it's the only verse he did that I'm aware of. I, I saw that stuff on Twitter I this I morning. Good. I was like, "Yo, I've listened to that track twice, and I and I missed it." So I went back and listened to it again. I was like, I don't think, I don't think that's what's going on. I thought that was a little whack him being on, uh, being on that album though. Like, if, for Future and Metro, if you're really trying to beef and everything, yeah, you play that card. But if I'm Cole, I'm like, hey, bro, that song we did, man, don't don't put that on that. And if I'm Metro, I'm telling you, that sucks. No, well, no, nah, well, hell no, you can't, yeah. you, you can't, get, I can't. You got that, that's what Metro is doing for the publicity and all that. But what if J Cole is just neutral? No, you're not neutral. You can't be neutral there. Why not? No, you cannot be neutral in that situation. You can Why? be neutral in life, but you you made a statement by doing a song with these dudes. Ain't no neutral. Mm. I know if I was Drake, I'd feel some type of way. Yeah, absolutely. But I popped because it's not listed. Cole can it, feel however he wants to feel. I'm just saying you you've made a made a decision. You teamed up. I thought that was whack, man. I I, I thought it was so. You turning cool. on J Cole? 
No, I just thought uh, I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't like. Oh my god! Oh, that's like a good <laughs> I didn't like that. And call. And I didn't like the whole. Let's get together on the whole album, and 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 diss this guy. Man, get on your own track. I don't have no problem with him dissing people. So there's like, rumors that the weekend track. was was digging at Drake. Yeah. Um, like I'm not in tune enough to understand why the weekend would go at Drake. Um, who was the other one? Was it Rocky? Who was yeah, it? It was ASAP Rocky. A$AP. It went over my head. Like, Why does I everyone listen... dislike this guy so much? I don't know. I don't know. People dislike you when you're the best. That's what it sounds like. Like to a certain degree. There ain't no denying. Like the dude's to... on the radio every five seconds. Like he's the one. To to a certain degree. I heard, I saw this argument last night. I don't know what you think. It like this happening. All these people like teaming up and ganging up. Mm -hmm. Only gives him a stronger profile. Mm -hmm. It makes him look strong. It's almost yeah. It like makes him. It, it, it you 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 don't. It, it 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 shows he's the he's the top dog. Yeah, like when everyone is 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 forming to to like go at you. Yeah, absolutely. I, he has a formula that works in twenty in 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 the last what 10, 15 years. His formula of making music works, and we could talk about the influence of future. We could talk about the 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 lyrical ability of, of of J. Cole when it comes to and no matter what people have tried to tell you, hits are still driven by the radio. Mm -hmm. They are still driven right. by the radio. Right. And Drake knows how to get a record on the radio. Drake knows how to make a record that the people listening to 1025 KSFM are going to love. The men. The women, the young men, the young women, the older men, the, the kids. He knows how to make those records, whether it be the goofy singing stuff, whether it's uh, teaming up with Sexy Red or it's dropping dimes. Mm. Like he he's he's not my favorite. Mm. That don't mean he ain't nasty. Like he's the one that I. Yeah. I thought all that was corny, Jesse. Like, like I said, I didn't even know you hit be, me to that. I didn't even know. That I will say, I there. think, I think, kind of just think because it was at one point like Kendrick versus Drake, and now everyone is kind of in it. Yeah, it's like, and and look, if you got beef with Drake, you got beef with Drake. But it's like if if Jesse's putting together an album, and you know he got beef with Drake, and I go to Jesse, I'm like, oh, oh, Jesse, hey, hey, come on, let me get my let me get my verse in there. Let me talk about him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Hip hop is dead. Hip hop is dead. ASAP, go do it on your own track, or do it with the with the ASAP crew or something like that, and do do it that way. Don't hop on this man's track. Well, you know why they did that. Like I, I that. in 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 kind of you know hitting this stuff in real time. You know why he did that? But all due respect. No, he ain't real. Yeah, right you know, yeah, ain't nobody rapper. checking. Yeah, ain't nobody, nobody. You know, you you if you drop a record and no one knows, you're on future and metro booming. Like everybody's listening. Them dudes did numbers last week. They still doing numbers. Mm -hmm. They getting ready to run it back. The thing I was most excited about when I opened the app at 901 in the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, I started looking earlier than that. That's well, oh, so did I. I might as well start looking now. Well, you were working so hard to hype up Drake. I was like, maybe he's <laughs> right. Maybe there's, it might be there right now. I was looking. And the first thing I saw was that Chris Brown Deluxe. Oh, man. I was like, no. Oh, now that's that's a shot. And then Close I cut, and, and of course, it, it, a true story. This is honest to God story. We all know how the game was going. Mm. It was nine on one. It might have been nine. Mm. You know, I, I don't know if you pr prominently use Apple Title. Like you got fifty different, you know, subscription services you use. <laughs> I'm I, I I go to Apple just as a consumer. It's on my iPhone. It makes it the the, 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 the synchronous process a little easier. Mm -hmm. But like you have, it, 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 there is a social media aspect to it where you have different friends and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. and you can see what they're listening to. And I'll be damned, nine o'clock on the dot, nine oh one, did I open that Chris Brown album? And guess who was listening to it? Miss P. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's Miss P. Already rocking the Chris Brown joint. I was like, all right, that's. I didn't on know brand. you could do that on uh, album. You can see mm -hmm. like what your friends are listening to. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and it doesn't mean they're listening to it in real time. It means they've pulled up the album. They they they've either listened to it or or or, or are listening to it right now. But she That's couldn't cool. have already listened to it unless Chris sent it herself, <laughs> he which, he may, which he may have. I mean, she is Miss B. Have. She is that's that's a shoe. She might be with Chris Brown right now. She might have put the deluxe together. True, true. Threw that out there. Yeah, and him and Quavo just well. Yeah, there's a couple on there, man. I was happy that one dropped last night.
But yeah, um, I, I was I was disappointed. Mm-hmm. And and all those guys, I like all those guys that I like all their music that says something. I just thought the way they went about it was that was trash. So basically just do it on your own song? Yeah, well, for the most part. Like Kendrick already did that. Kendrick already got on the Metro Boomin thing, said it. All right, boom, it's been done. Mm-hmm. And to your point, like that may be their only opportunity to get somebody to hear it mm-hmm. is getting on there. But ASAP. Well, that's not Kendrick. Weekend. No, no. I'm talking about these. I, I got you. Okay. ASAP, Weekend, all these guys. You got something to say. Uh, future. I like Future and Metro Boomin. Let it go. You're looking a little. Yeah, you look yeah, a little weak at this point. Where like this guy's got you that hung up. Where you especially made forty songs. You know what's to diss this guy. You know what's funny about that? That too. We'll, we'll get back to the Kings here in, in a heartbeat. No, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I put the record on, and I know this is dangerous. And I've told myself you have to stop doing it this way. But my time is limited. I knew I needed to hear the whole thing because of a a, a, a bit we do on Fridays on KSFM, and. It's a little bit different than the last one. It has kind of a retro sound to it. There's a little bit of an 80s sound at different times to it. Uh, I, I do I do like it. It's not a ton different than the first one. But Future, he has a style of music. Mm-hmm. And it's really slow. And when you're trying to start your day and work out, Future's not the guy to go to. <laughs> so there was a point where the 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 record, and it's long. It's a long record. Yeah became background noise so that might be why some of this stuff escaped me like it because so i went through it last night i knew i i i i, I found i heard i found the, the the j cole track listen to that and then just kind of peeped the sound to it was like okay i'm really i'm looking forward to this I'll, I'll, I'll i'll deal with it in the morning and then by song freaking 16 all right guys well that's me. there's no like that on there and that's why like that stands out so much you've talked about metro booming and what he brought to that track like that stands out so much because it's so counter to what they normally do. Mm. It's Rodney O and Joe Cooley. Mm. Like it hits. Mm. It's heat. Flip that thing crazy. Yeah, they don't. That that's not normally what they do. Mm. No, most of their stuff sounds like slow two thousands, two thousand twenty. Like he has a sound. They have a sound. Mm. The whole album is that sound. Mm. There's no like that on there. And so, but people love it. And, I, and I'll people say this. It. If they go on tour, I'll be there. Yeah. Tune into KSFM today <laughs> because I don't know if you noticed. We had a little oops. What do we do? <laughs> show doesn't get announced till next week. Oh. There's a oh. show coming up. <laughs> There's a show coming up that gets announced. Tuesday morning, well, I think. They hit us, well, I guess it don't. Matter. I know. They usually hit I us know. Pending, so I know. I know. Yeah. I read the fine print. So, <laughs> uh, we will prematurely announce the show today uh, over on KSFM. We're the outlaws. DX. We're the click. Take it baby. over the air. I told airways. you. We're the click. We don't follow rules. We make the rules and we will break them. They once tried to make that their slogan. It didn't go very well. How are you feeling about last night's game? Uh, man, There's a lot was, about how I felt. It, it was really during the game. See, I was kind of invested. I got I got kind of pissed off um, early. Well, later, early, I was driving around doing some stuff. I was getting a little late, getting to the my mom's house a little late. That's where I ended up watching the game, and I was checking the score, and it was like sixteen ten or whatever, and um. I was like, all right, well, they're down, whatever the case may be. And then I get into the house, and I guess this was the end of the 17-0 run. It was 31-11. I said, it's, mm-hmm. it's over. Mm-hmm. I was texting one of the homies. <laughs> so this is over. It's a wrap. Damn, couldn't believe it. Then they fought back. I was uh, helping my mom do some stuff in the in the yard real quick, but I could see the game in the distance, and I just kept checking the score and checking what's going mm-hmm. on. And they and they got it, you know, back. They got it down to six at the half. And um, Harrison was playing phenomenal. Harrison was half the Harrison reason they were really able to, good. you know, yeah. stick around in that game. Yeah. And I said, all right, you know, Fox is doing his thing. He played with a certain level of energy, and they they got me invested in it. I was I was like, they might be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Got it down to two, and then every time um, they, the Pelicans needed a bucket and needed an answer. Mm-mm. they did it man even mm-hmm. when like even before 
like in the second quarter when it would get to like four, they'd hit a three to get it to seven. Mm-hmm. Every like, time. Every, every, every single time. time, man. And um, Them four point moments, I swear, didn't last more than a possession. No, never. Or it didn't like, feel like they get did. it to four. Kings would come down, turn the ball over, mm-hmm. and they come back and hit a three or something mm-hmm. like that. Like mm-hmm. it's, it just they just couldn't get uh, ahead of the eight ball, mm-hmm. man. And um, I, I looked at this team and I said, man, they just, you know, they just don't have enough without Malik. And a lot of people, you know, I tweeted that out and they're like, oh well, they weren't playing good with Malik and all this other stuff. That's not necessarily true. But if you weren't believers in them with Malik that's that's fine I'm not here to dispute that I thought um they could finish a lot stronger than what they have done now what I think they're now three and five or three and six without Malik Monk uh I think they're 10 and 10 since Herder's injury or something like this so, something of that nature seven to seven maybe something like that somebody tweeted tweeted out last night um but he got hurt early in that game against Dallas right that yeah, Friday night game yeah, and I don't even know if they people count that one and they I probably should it was first quarter but it's whatever I, they're just a different team and what i well what it's I, three and four then if you're not counting that game it's three and four if it's not it's three no, and I, five. Said, I said i was counting that game because oh, he got hurt yeah so okay yeah um but they're just the they're just a different team and what i see from this team and what worries me about today <clears throat> playing all that other stuff is it's not that they don't have good players or they don't do it, but two things. Number one, those guys, Fox, Sabonis, Keegan, Keon, maybe even Harrison, to be honest with you, they have to they have to play 38 to 40 minutes, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is really like dangerous territory when Fox has to sit for me. You know, I'm watching that game. Well, like, some oh, of those crap. lineups. Like, and I, I mean, I, I don't want to be critical of them. I, I think the biggest indicator that the Kings are really struggling right now is when Mike is searching. You're at game last night, 79. Mm-hmm. And you're obviously, I understand the circumstances changed eight games earlier, seven games earlier, or even further when you include Kevin Herter. You're searching in game 79. That's tough. Like you're trying to get Kobe Jones to do something for you. You're trying to get Chris Duarte to do something for you. And it's just not. And, and, and I mean, like we were, we were, we were on Trey Lyles watch for a while mm-hmm. and then Herter goes out. There's no Trey Lyles. And then Malik goes out and it's like, well, Trey Lyles is back. And you see these moments where God, Trey looks so good, man. God. And then that's the, that's the other thing I haven't, I don't think a single person is taken into account yet. It's not just the fact that Malik's gone. It's the fact that Malik and Trey weren't playing together for like a month or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a big deal. Like look at what Trey's been able to do by himself. You've, you've me- meaning without a, Malik. You've missed a, a highly important rotational guy for the last two months. And that's why I said, however you felt about last year, all these national media people saying the Kings got where they got because they were healthy. That's fine. Just make sure you point out the reason they're struggling right now is because they haven't been. Like y'all got to keep the same energy. Mm-hmm. Some 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 of these people out here talking about the Kings right now the same way they did last year, mm-hmm. and that doesn't do nothing but tell me about you. Right, right. It does nothing but tell me about you because the circumstances of these two teams are very different. And the fact is, I don't feel confident that the Kings are going to go two and zero over the next two games. Let's say they get them one tonight. Let's see they 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 handle business on Sunday. That's 47 wins. Trey and Malik barely playing together. You lose Malik at the most crucial time of the season. You had Domas for the whole uh 82 games. Man, that reminds me. He is the best. If if he's not the best, he's one of the best in the business. Either Kevin Harlan had a really bad night last night, or his stats and information guy needs a talking to. He kept touting when when Domas got the the double double. He caught it his I, I think he said his sixty second double double in sixty three games. Sir, that was Demontis Sabonis' seventy ninth game of the season. He has not missed a game, and it was his seventy something double double of the year. He he missed like I think he was hung up on the streak number right. and not the double double number. 
They're not and the same number. So, so when I first think of that, maybe he was just literally saying 66 in his last 63. That's not what he was saying because he says DeMontis Sabonis has 60. I think he said, what was it? 62 double doubles on the season in 63. So he was acknowledging they weren't in a row. Right. But, and, and again, it's, it's, it's nitpicking, but I was frustrated because he was also trying to communicate the, the, um, situational playoff moments or the situational playoff uh implications moving forward and he missed a couple as it pertains to sacramento it's like come on man you guys got to do kevin better than that I, I know it's on the fly i know it's difficult right. but y'all got to do him better than that because i know immediately i was like kevin come on man but i also know the game enough to know that's probably not kevin harlan right. that's someone who said here yeah yeah, yeah. and it was wrong right. um that got nothing to do with nothing but i i I, I think the 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 story, the story of the season for us is there. They've been inconsistent. They've been up and down. They've had some really bad losses. They've had losses that I wouldn't constitute as bad, but really frustrating. Losing to Phoenix isn't bad. The way you lost to Phoenix is bad. That's really frustrating. Losing to Milwaukee is not bad. The way you lost to Milwaukee is really frustrating, though. And that's like we can, we've got poor three point defense. We've got free throw shooting, uh, and we've got offensive question marks, right? Like all of those things, run the tape back to November. Some of those conversations are there. Run them back to New Year's. They're there. Valentine's Day, All-Star break. Like they're all there. And then they disappear for a little bit. And it feels like they're manifesting themselves right now. I think where a lot of us have that pit in our stomach is we've seen them kick out, right? They'll kick out on two and a half. Man, I don't. I, 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 at some point, that referee's hand's gonna hit three. Cody gonna hit three. And my yeah, because yeah, because there's this. It's it's just the 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 arsenal's not there. It's, you don't have the firepower. You don't have the firepower. And and what I also came away with with this team with the personnel that they have. These guys are you know, I, I, it matters to me. Maybe it doesn't matter to everybody else. And I know it doesn't get you wins. They're busting their ass, man. Those guys are playing hard. They're doing everything they can. Even somebody like Duarte, he comes in there, he works hard. He doesn't produce buckets. I'm not disputing that. But everybody is out there giving everything they have to try and overcome some of the things that they're dealing with right now. Yeah. That matters. But they have almost no room for error. Like everybody, think about think about what, what we're asking of this team. Because mm -hmm. remember the OKC game, the only one that really didn't play good was Sabonis. Mm -hmm. That's the only one. Mm -hmm. The uh, Knicks game. The only one who really didn't play good was Harrison Barnes. Like, think about what we're asking. Everybody has to play a really good game. Harrison was non-existent in the Knicks game. But... The, the, point, point made. Not point, but point, point, like point, everybody point has to. I'm, I'm looking. Let me look right here. The bench here. wasn't particularly let, good against the Thunder. Let, let me let me look right here. Mm -hmm. New Orleans. Herb Jones didn't do nothing last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were up 20. Mm -hmm. Just like think about that. Well, they damn near had three 30 point scores. Too. But that's that's my whole point. Yeah. Everybody on the Kings has to play good. That's right. And that doesn't always happen with some of these teams. I'll pull up any box score from last night. I can find one or two guys who didn't step up on every winning team. It's they were still able to get the mm -hmm. win with the Kings. It seems like if one or two guys don't step up, yep. you have no shot. Mm -hmm. And that's asking a lot. That's asking a lot of this group. And usually if you have a monk or a herder there, you can afford, you know, I don't, I don't even know anybody that really had a bad game last night. Offensively, at least like Keon, Keon only had five points. You can mm -hmm. like, all right, Keon, don't work. Get your five points. Work on defense is good. Now we're like, damn, Keon, if you don't give us 11, I don't know if we can do it. What? Mm -hmm. That's that's what they're 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 wanna, dealing with right now. I want to reference, and, and I'm not doing this to go at our our, our man GL because it's in the it's in the chat a lot. It's it's I'm sure it's all over social media a lot. But G says Sabonis is paid forty million dollars a year. Need him to dominate when it matters. He keeps shrinking. So let's 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 talk about this because we've hit this point. It happened with De'Aaron. It happens with everybody. Once a player starts making more than you think is okay, we start mentioning the amount of money they make when we evaluate their game. And I'll say this to G and who, any, anyone else who's not happy with, with the way DeMontis Sabonis is playing. I'm going to read this again. Sabonis is paid $40 million a year. Need him to dominate when he matters. He keeps shrinking. He's not shrinking. He had one bad game. It was against the Oklahoma City. DeMontis Sabonis is playing 
exactly the way DeMontis Sabonis plays. You're talking about he needs to dominate when it matters. Tell me when that's happened. Because when I think of dominate, especially at that position, I think of Joe. DeMontis Sabonis has never been Joel Embiid. I think of Shaquille O'Neal. DeMontis Sabonis has never been Shaquille O'Neal. So tell me exactly what you're talking about. And tell me why you think that because he makes $40 million, that's what he should do. If you think DeMontis Sabonis is a bad contract now and they shouldn't have done it, perfectly fine. Feel how you want to feel. But say because uh, 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 these games are important. He needs to dominate. He needs to. DeMontis Sabonis is playing exactly the way DeMontis Sabonis plays with one very frustrating and notable exception against Oklahoma City. He's doing what he does. He's not shrinking. He's doing what he does every single night. And bringing in his money isn't going to change that. He's going to make $40 million next year. He's going to damn near average a triple-double. He's not going to do it with 30, 20, and 10 He's going to do it with 20. He's going to lead the league in rebounding again. Mm-hmm. And he'll do it with eight, nine assists. Mm-hmm. That's what he does. And That's for, what he does. And for this team, personally, he's worth the $40 million. I don't have any problem with his contract. And I don't have any problem with his production. He's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. Last night, like you said, he played his game. He did what he did. He did what he does. I don't I don't understand it's crazy man what they're necessarily looking for him to do. I know emotions are high because it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like I get that. And we'll run it back to last this time last year. Enjoy this feeling. Cause it ain't gonna feel like this next year. Mm-hmm. It's a completely different vibe this year. Mm-hmm. And it, it expectations change, hopes change. Maybe, 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 maybe words like championship and contender are used and they're thrown around and that gets everybody feeling a certain way and, and your your expectations start to change. But man, I feel like we've we've you know, you you don't you don't pay a, you pay a player because of what they can do. If you're paying a player because of what you hope they can do, buddy, that's bad business. You can't you and that's not basketball. You can't hire a person. To do that. Oh, I hope. Hey, I'm going to give you this money because I hope you can do this. No, I'm going to give you this money because you're really good at what you do and you're important to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I agree 100 percent, man. And, you know, we'll we'll talk about I'm, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to fan. I know you aren't. Or no, anything I, else I like asked that. him to shoot two more times a game and y'all no, killed me for a week that, for it. That's not exactly what you said. You said, I want him out of here. <laughs> Okay, future Metro <laughs> Boom and settle down. But you brought up something uh, just a second ago that I, I think needs to be, we need to do our best mm-hmm. as uh, people with the platform. And um, I think both of us, people who look at this thing realistically, mm-hmm. need to kind of get across to people. We'll, okay. We can talk about that. Um. TC, hang tight. We'll get to you, uh, and we'll open the phone lines now. Y'all, y'all can uh, say your piece. Let us know how you feel at 916-909-1320. It's d and KC. Brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. I, 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 I hear you, G. I hear you. I, I, I wish, I, I, I wish he could too. Uh, I, I wish we could see him more in the thirty more. I'll die. That's nuts. But the whole point, I, this is not going to happen. That's no, I, I, I don't, I don't think it is. It, you know, if I saw him, he's, t- he, he was uh, uh, efficient last night with his twelve shot attempts. If he was more in the fourteen, fifteen range, I said that a couple months ago. I, I, I think he could maybe not be twenty five to thirty, but I think he could be probably closer to twenty four, twenty three. Um, but the, but the problem is, Gene, and, and this is what I know what you're talking about. Like without Monk, you want someone to make that up, and man, it's uh it's probably not going to be Domas. I think the thing too, I just with, don't think that's how he plays. So bonus, like with people bringing up the contract and I brought it up yesterday or whatever, he gets paid like Joel, Joel Embiid and those guys. I think that's, but that's, what, but that's okay though. Like that's what, because it's not, it, he, he, you don't need to compare. Well, Domas we do that for everyone. Like, yeah, yeah I know. And it's, it's flawed. Domas doesn't need to be compared to Joel Embiid. What Domas needs to be compared to is the Sacramento Kings with DeMontis Sabonis and the Sacramento Kings without DeMontis Sabonis. 
we talk about all, this all of the time. It was the old Otto Porter conversation. That's where Otto Porter is not at the time. I think it was like a $20 million player. But to that version of the Washington Wizards, Otto Porter was absolutely a $20 million player. Mm -hmm. Then they blew up that Washington Wizards team and you didn't need them anymore. Right. Like there's a difference between a player's value to the entire league and a player's value to the team that they played for. There are guys value that is universal. Joel's value is universal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steph, there, there, there's a number of guys. Their value is universal. Domas may or may not be. I don't know, but I know his value to the Sacramento Kings. Look, we get our jokes off when we talk about her, whatever the case may be. But is Draymond worth $25 million to anybody else in the league? Absolutely no. not. To the Warriors, you can make the argument. He's overpaid now, but like when he was when they were a championship team yeah, doing yeah, that, he yeah, was he was worth that. Mm -hmm. If he the Draymond, if you paid him $25 million some to go to those Kings, worth it now. Yeah. Some would argue that, yeah. yeah. But to go to that, they all work at the DeMarcus athletic. Interesting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you paid him twenty twenty five million dollars to go to that Kings team with Demarcus and all that. Yeah, wouldn't done nothing. Do nothing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So it's 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 all relative. And then I also say, and this is what we all, what we talk about a lot too is, all right, well, what's the alternative for the Kings? You talk about him getting that money. And expecting this and that and this and that. The Kings paid that money, number one, because that's just what it that's what you needed to do in that situation. For this team, for him as a player, he is a step below. Think about what we're saying. He's a step below Joel Jokic. And if you you want to throw Anthony, you say he's worse than Anthony Davis, fine. But think about what we're saying. The the fix is bringing in someone who can do that job. Then not that's the center position, but someone who can put up points. But who is that? I asked for money to figure out. You, the Kings needed it either way. Like you, they, they, we don't know who it is, but the Kings need it. You lost they, one guy, now it's all gone to hell. They still need that. Though. That's but, what I'm saying. Like, like Sabonis isn't going to be that guy, so you need that, like that score. I think I don't. I think that was always the case when they signed him. That's not a to me. That's not a revelation. Yeah, I feel like now though people are coming to the realization he's not that guy because we fought a lot in the playoffs last year. Like, like he could be the second best guy, second guy on the team or whatever. It was just like maybe it's score. That's the word to use. Well, I tried to tell you that's not what it was. You you still needed that perimeter three level score. That has not changed. Malik gave you some of that. He's a little smaller than you probably like, but he gave you some of that. That ain't changed. That ain't never changed. That's one of the reasons why I still. We've talked about it on here. I think Malik Monk is the second best player mm -hmm. on this team. Last year, when people would try to say DeMont and Sabonis is the be is better player than Fox, no, he's not. De'Aaron Fox is the best player on the team. Domas does amazing things, but yeah, you gotta you gotta figure out that that score that score spot. We keep saying best player, best player, best player. I think we need to change the name. We, we, we need to talk about score. We, I think we, Malik is a better player, and okay. I've always thought that. Okay. Well, he's not all NBA, though. No, he's not. Domas probably does more on the floor, no, too. Like, Malik's a better scorer, but. I, they're different. I, they're, 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 two, they're, 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 they're two players who create in very different ways. Absolutely. They're two players who. He, Malik doesn't get nearly enough credit for this as he deserves, but they create for their teammates. They're mm -hmm. two guys mm -hmm. who make things easier for their teammates. And those two guys, when they're together, they can create magic. Mm -hmm. the, the, I, I think one thing that we're that, that just people are not thinking enough about is how much Malik creates. And I, I, I told Hammer and, and Jesse this earlier, KC and I, it, it really... It, it it hit me last night when we were talking about creating. You've talked a lot about that. I was like, well, Davion can create. Like, he can go to the basket. And there was clearly a conscious effort to work towards the basket a little bit more. I thought Davion did a really good job. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of moments, and I don't think Davion had any. I don't. I, th I, th I actually thought Davion was great last night. He didn't have any tough moments at the basket, but it, it drew me back. I was watching the way. Oh, he's finishing right here. Okay. Looking at a, thinking back to the shot that was blocked by Chet the other night and I realized Davion can get to the basket and go up for a layup. Malik's going to get to the basket and try to put you on the hammer. On yeah. He's going to try to put, yeah, he's going to try to put you on sports center. 
And that's a different way of defending. Mm -hmm. And blocking, defending a layup is safer than blocking a dunk. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean, I'm, I'm talking about in terms of, um, like fouling. I'm talking about in the course of a game, not, not staying off a post or anything like that. I'm talking about staying off, you know, keeping them off the foul line, all of that stuff. Like that's, that leaves you with no one but De'Aaron. Mm -hmm. Keegan will do it in a fast break. Keegan, I almost cussed Keegan out last night. Go ahead. That fast break. Yeah. I think you know what I'm talking about. Cause you, 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 you must have feelings towards it. Cause you reacted to it. The fast break where it was kind of like one on one and a half ish. Yeah, I remember that he got a steal or something like he that. He did, yeah. and he and he missed it. And I don't think he knew balls. what to do. Like yeah. Malik that, again, and I'm saying Malik, you better be ready. He going up. Mm -hmm. I think Keegan was deciding like, do I? I don't think Keegan was deciding about going up. I think he was deciding, um, do I take the shot? Do I pass or do I I bring it back? Mm -hmm. And I don't think he ever decided. Mm. So he kind of got up, and I don't even remember what happened. The ball just kind of went in the air. I think it fell short. Uh, I don't think it was blocked. It just, it just uh, hit the rim and like it, it like grazed the rim. And it was like, well, what the and then he hell tried was to go that? Back forward, him and Sabonis bumped into and they each ran other. into each other. Yeah, and then the Pelicans came down and hit a three. It was like one of those. It was probably CJ. It was. It's probably so. Right. It was one of those moments that we talked about. It they got it to four. Yeah. Got yeah. It still was about to be two. Wasn't Man. came back and hit a three. The thing I was gonna say though is I meant to bring this up. You, you just reminded me when you brought up Keegan. Um, and you're out there, you're playing. You know, you you got to do what you got to do. You you got to execute. I always say that. But I got it on good authority. Sacramento. Keegan's gutting it out right now. Mm. He's gutting it out right now. Mm. And. I'll, he is he's not a hundred percent and he is he's lacing him up he's not complaining he's not mentioned nobody's mentioning it but i got it on good authority yesterday he is he's doing everything he can to just be on the floor right now okay so i i meant to it's uh text you that actually that would have helped that, <laughs> that would have helped but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Just leave me out here on a goddamn island by myself. Dude, pull the rug Dude. up under you, huh? Jesus Christ, man. Hey, by Jeez. the way, Dame. Um, yeah. yeah, Keegan's kind of messed no. up right now. Yeah, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. Yeah, I'll remember that in free agency. Oh, no, on, that's man. good. Bro, he's yeah. just Seth Rollins, dude. Yeah. No, he really did. No, it's all, all no. this whole way. D'Lo and KC have broke news. D'Lo and KC have broke news. D'Lo and KC have broke news. Oh, but by the way, why D'Lo's upset at Keegan Murray? Kenny's got some news on him. No, that's okay, good. Kenny's sitting there while you're talking to this guy. Oh, yeah, Just yeah. wait till I drop yeah, no, this. That's fine. Hey, jackass. Oh, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I, I forgot no. about it. And then you no, that's good. You no. Keegan, I remember. Oh, yeah. I forgot there. about it. I got your back. I will cut that from the podcast. Yes, thank you. Let's get uh, TC in here. Oh, Goodness. real quick, before we get to TC. Uh, oh, good. You got ben, more news? No, what? Ben, ben just Malik says, signed an extension? What? <laughs> ben just says they hate Drake because he ain't Drake. Well, he's only about 40 minutes behind. That's good. It's not bad for oh, Ben. I wonder what his bonus take will be in an hour. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Shout out, Ben. Shout out, Ben, who pulled up the Tom's Watch Bar the other you day. Sure? Ben, the funny thing is Ben always pull up yeah, yeah. and just, like, laying the cut. Yeah. It's like, hey, how long have you? He got, like, a half-drinking beer. It's like, bro, <laughs> how long have you been here? Yeah, man. Uh, let's get TC in here. TC, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's up with my two brothers? What up, TC? Hey, man, just vibing. Hey, look, d -Lo. Hey, hey, that's what I was talking about when I said I sent you and Kenny that, that group text about Keegan. But look, hey, I'm going to back up off Keegan, Kenny, because, hey, I noticed that Keegan ain't 100%. So, I'm, you know what? I'm going to leave Keegan alone, bro, on this one. Okay. As far as Doma. Oh, it's nice. You got the I heads up. At least TC's protected. No, it's good. Hey, TC really came here. I knew. Yeah, yeah no, T TC, TC yeah, coming he, in as a baby I face. Knew. <laughs> Go ahead, TC. My bad. Hey, yo, yo, hey, and then, um, as, as far as Domas, I think moving forward, I think we need to change up the philosophy as far as Jay, Mike, Doug, uh, Jordy, if Jordy's still here, Luke, uh, the whole dribble handoff, bro. We're going to have to, like, mix it up next season as far as, like, we're going to have to work on more pick and roll, backdoor cuts. Like, whatever we got to do to switch up the offense, bro, we're going to have to switch it up. As far as Domas being aggressive, I'm I'm not saying that he has to be Joe 
or Shaquille in his prime, but we need you to be more aggressive. Like, we need you to take no less than, like, 15 shots a game, whether it's in a post, whether you pulling up a mini, whether you grabbing a rebound off the thing, off the board, you coming down and pulling up. That has to be your game, bro. I know you want to facilitate. That's all fun and dandy. You can still do that and also put up 15 shots a game. You get what I'm saying? Even if the assists have to fall back. But, hey, everybody, listen, grab your popcorn. Drop, hey, strap your seat belt. Get ready, bro, because we finna be in a play-in, and we're going to have to get it how we got to get it. We put ourselves in this position, and we got to climb ourselves out, like Mike said, bro. So, hey, y'all get ready, bro. The Kings still going to make noise, man. Y'all don't fall. Listen, don't fall up the side of the Earth Kings fans. d okay. Kenny, yeah. Jesse in the back. <laughs> Why, how, would you, how we get into that? It's all right. DC, we appreciate you. Lazy back with us. I thought I thought we might have lost Lazy yeah, there for a minute. H-A-L. What's up, Lazy? Yo, D Lo and Casey, what's there good, guys? Is. What's poppin'? H-A-L. What's up, Very buddy? Happy. What's good? Hey, so, D Lo, sorry I ain't called in a minute, man. They got me hey. back in the office, man. Oh, I feel like I right. did say that up. Well, he don't, he don't, he don't he call. He, I, I just started getting IG stories from him today. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> hey, hey, full circle. I just wanted to comment on hip hop, and then I had a question about the Kings. Mm-hmm. You know, Casey, I'm rolling with you, Casey. I think you're right. All these people trying to gang up on Drake, it's just clownish behavior. All these artists, Travis Scott, Future, all their biggest hits is with Drake, and now you're going to turn over on them over nothing? It's ridiculous. Well, but anyway. Also, real, real quickly, yeah, I will say, like, if you have beef with the man, you got beef with the man. I just don't like them all going to that one album and, and doing it in, in a week span. Like, do it on your own project. Hey, and you know what? You're right about that, Casey. You know why ASAP did it? It's because ain't nobody listening to his album. His last know. song flopped. Man, but anyways, that, that I'm sorry. That flow was kind of weak when he dissed him, too. Right? It wasn't even hot. Yeah, tripping over nothing. I didn't he was dissing Drake. I was just like, this is kind of whack. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, but my question for the Kings is um, two questions. Like, what do you think is more important for them to get in the offseason? A uh, dependent wing or a good rim protector? Because the Kings, they're pretty good on offense, but the thing is their defense. So, it's kind of hard to figure out what big man can you put with Sabonis because you know he's not like a long range shooter. So what do you guys think would be better for give me, the Kings? Give me the wing. Yeah, I want. Give I want the wing. I want to this this rim protector thing. I think is the most overblown. I'm with you. Conversation. I'm with you. I, I want. The, I want the wing. I want them if they have their draft pick, they got second rounders, free agency. I want nothing but like six, seven guys that are athletic freaks almost don't even care if they can uh dribble two dribbles just give oh. me that oh. I, I that's Shout out and, and and you gotta you gotta hope that one of them hits you guys see that deal bleach report put out the other day for the kings and the bulls with you guys zach levine no i didn't mm-hmm. see it. as kings receive zach levine alex caruso and i'm assuming there's like kings missed playoffs because the picks that they're offering here yes kings get levine and caruso Bulls receive Herter, Barnes, Mitchell, Vizenkov, 2028 first round pick, top 10 um, protected, and the 2030 first round pick, top 10 protected. Hmm. I do it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to give a, I don't want to give away. What were the players uh, again? It was Caruso, Aiden. Levine. Caruso, Levine come in here. Herter, Barnes, Mitchell, and Vizenkov go in there. Herter, Barnes, Mitchell, and Sasha. Two first round picks going that way too. 2028, 20, or 2030. Me and RP are the only know. ones that like Zach Levine. I'll it's take. It's not Zach that Levine. I don't like Zach Levine. It feels like that's a lot, though. It feels like that's a lot to pay for a player that didn't. What are you giving up, like, though? Yeah, I feel like that's no, the best. Davion you can get Mitchell with that group. is playing. No, I like Davion. I don't want to give up. Mitchell Davion. is playing. I don't want to. You give don't up. hold on. So, so sorry. Go, so, I, was, I don't go think you, you don't hold on to Davion though when you can make a deal like you that. probably. I you, maybe maybe you don't use Davion as a deal breaker because you're getting Alex Caruso back, right? That's probably part of the conversation, but. I just want to be clear. We could chat like instant reaction. That's the beauty of 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 what we do here. You guys can react to this right away. So we're we're positive. Like it's we're done with Herder. I am. I'm not, I'll say I am. I'm not done with Herder, but this. You're this, done with Herder for this deal. For this deal, because um, the 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 thing that is clear right here is like. You need another shot creator outside of Monk and Fox. Okay. Like, that's clear. So okay. we're like, like, just think about next year. 
Maybe Monk is out for two weeks with an ankle or Fox is out for two weeks with an ankle. We're going to be in this same situation. Can I ask a follow up? Well, no, I don't think so, because I'm counting on Malik Monk being here. But but this but that's my point. It don't matter if one of them goes down. Uh -huh. We're going to be in this situation. Again. So you need another one. Is Zach Levine your starting two or is he your starting three? I probably, uh, probably put him at the three, move Keegan to the four. And then your starting two is? It depends on what Malik wants to do. Okay. If Malik right. wants to That's be the starting two, at. yes. Okay. If he's okay with the role that he's in, I put Keon there. I think it's clear he's not. I think I mean I mean I don't I don't think he's those not are my words. Happy yeah, what like he, he would it is the question though. Would he do it? Okay. He he'd rather start, mm -hmm. but if maybe may, that's where a conversation is at. Like, look, if you want to start, we'll start you. I think you're best used. For this team in this role, you're still getting close to 30 minutes a night. Yeah, I think I think you, you would help out the team a lot if you came off the bench, continue to come off the bench. If he says nope, it's a deal breaker. All right, you start him. If mm -hmm. he's willing to work with you a little bit, I I, I would try that. Carter heard it too. Biggest reason my George throws it in here. Too big, one of the biggest reasons why I'm out on him is because I mean Mike Brown was basically out on him as well. Well, that's Matt. That's a terrific point. Because, like, Carter um, was not really playing before point. he tore his show of labor or whatever. Well, I think he was begrudgingly. <laughs> I think he was begrudgingly playing him. Yeah. Because that was the option that he had, right? Well, we saw we saw where it was going. Yeah. Well, we felt like, un unfortunately, I think Kevin Herter's injury did bail Mike out. Mm. I think Mike was going to be put into a position where he had to make a really difficult decision. Yeah. And he didn't have to because mm -hmm. he got hurt. Um. Yeah. But, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I I think Herter's a fine ball player. I I I, I don't. There, there obviously is just something Mike's looking for that Kevin doesn't offer, uh, and I don't think that's our imagination. I think everybody sees it. I think he found it with Keon Ellis for a bit too. Keon is not better so, than Herter, but once he came in, I feel like just it, it was more connected before Mont got hurt. I feel like they were starting to figure it out a bit. That's a. Uh, so that the, the the Keon thing is tough for me because we talked about what Keon did against Oklahoma City, very very impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, he followed that up with five shot attempts, seventeen shot attempts, fifteen threes, versus five shot attempts and three threes. Like you at this point right now, and again. It's not fair. I get it, but it's where we are at game 80. That's your starting two guard. We can, well, we can talk about the, You got to make the rest of the line look nicer, yeah, but like I'm like I think like once he was inserted in Monk was playing, I thought they were playing a lot better. Like obviously like the key on like this, yeah, like it can't I don't, be this. Yeah, no one debate. Yeah, I don't think anyone debates that. But going into next season or whatever, like we'll see like what moves are made and all that. But if there's a thing where like maybe you upgraded the four and Keon is your starting two going into next season, when he's coming off the bench or however you want to do it, like I wouldn't hate that. But it's not Keon's job either to go up and put like twenty like fifteen points or whatever. I, think, I don't think they're looking for that from well, him. Well, I just I don't think you can yeah, but I don't think you can have a five field goal attempt game from and, and I'm not even talking about next year. I'm talking about I'm talking about tonight. Well, yeah, the Kings play the Suns tonight. Honestly, like, I'm talking about that. They're cooked tonight. Like, not cooked tonight, but they, there's just too much. Everything has to go perfect, like Casey has said. Well, they got one, two, at the very least, three games left. It's going to go perfect in one of them. <laughs> I hope it's not Sunday, <laughs> but it's going to go perfect in one. I mean, and, 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 and I feel like this is based on, um, this isn't hyperbole, this isn't fandom. This isn't – no, we've watched this basketball team. This is one of their worst stretches of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, unless in, – in, unless Malik – unless it, it, they really cannot kick out of this, they're going to have a game like they had against the Clippers a couple of nights ago. Yeah. They're going to have it. It's just my frustrating belief is they only got one in them. I have, and and then I think like if they if that what like for example if that one is tonight, I think they can. They can focus and take care of business against the Portland Trail Blazers in the home finale on Sunday. Mm -hmm. All bets are off. Come come that next game, because that's a game where I, I can see yo people talking about Domas talking about 
uh, Domas has got to do this. De'Aaron. I can see them doing that because we, 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 all of us, mm-hmm. biggest game, big game. Oh, it's the whole season. Cool. They play tomorrow. They play Sunday, excuse me. They're going to play in the postseason. Once you get to those games, that's when it's really, there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's where I think they can elevate a little bit. My concern is that's where Book can elevate if, if it's Phoenix. Book and that, that's where Kevin Durant, uh, uh, De- Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal become their most dangerous, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I've wondered what they're going to look like tonight because it's not win or go home. And I think those guys have a focus that they can take into games like that. I just don't know if that game tonight is that. Yeah. No, I I completely understand what you're saying. Um, man, I, I, I hmm. I'm I'm stuck because you're saying they have one of those games in them. I wonder if they have more than one. I, and that's that's. I'm sorry. I hear what you're saying. I'll I, try again. I think they have at least one. At least one okay. of those games. In there. Well, because I'm not even gonna. The reason why I was stuck because I'm not. You're not what you originally said isn't necessarily the craziest thing. They may just have one of those games mm-hmm. in them mm-hmm. with this group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to debate on whether or not, like, do they have more than, like, if they win tonight. And then you win the Blazers isn't one of those games. That's just a game you, you have should to win. play well. Yeah. Um, can they beat Phoenix again? To four, four days later, like I don't. Who's gonna step up? Who's gonna Who's gonna be that second guy after Fox? I don't know. Because you're gonna need that. I don't. It's Domas. No, it's not because he's not gonna give you twenty plus. Like that, you got You're gonna have to score with Phoenix. I mean, like you're gonna have to score with KD, Book, Beal in that play-in game. You're gonna have to match them. Last night they did score. It didn't matter. Yesterday, like it was, they kept it close for a bit, but it's like yeah, you're in second place the whole time, and really what not. Was that it close. 16 threes? Domas scored 21 against the Suns on January 16th. 16 to 38 for us. Three pointers last night. Mm, uh, Demontis scored 15 points in a win on 11 shots against Phoenix. I'm going to go through all these damn Phoenix games and see what DeMonte scored. DeMonte is going to give you... If I had the freaking memory you did, I'd be able to find him quicker. He's going he's gonna to have 15, 18 points again. DeMonte Sabonis, 28 points, 12 of 15 shooting. What you're going to... And so that, and here's the here's the thing. Here's why I'm conflicted about whether or not they have... Y'all are ASAP Rocky games. talking about Drake when it comes to DeMonte <laughs> Sabonis, man. I'm going off of what I've seen lately. <laughs> but but here, here's the, here's the deal. It it goes back to what I said earlier. For them to win, everybody's got to play good. And that's just a scary property. I don't think that's sustainable either. I'm kind of scared that's, with them in the play. That's what I'm saying. Like It's got to be Fox has to go 30 good. plus and everyone no, else has to fall there's out. There's no after. doubt about that. No, not one. If Harrison like, can't have zero. Keegan has to be assertive. Like it too much. But look, it's not, but it's but look, not too much for a night. But look, you got that last night. That's what I mean. And it, it wasn't enough. So, like, you couldn't mm. overcome Keon's five. Mm. And it, it's well, not to say it's Keon's fault, but like, is it in all these games that they lose? It's always one person that that doesn't show up. Is it Ken, Keon's five or Trey Murphy's twenty-seven that you couldn't overcome? I mean, both, both, both for sure. You know what I'm saying? But like. It's, but it's always it's all you can always pick out one game in these losses or one person in these in these losses that somebody just didn't step up and we and we've looked at them like man we needed Harrison to at least give us 10 or we needed Domas to give us 14 15 or we needed last night wasn't really the points but Trey Murphy went 13 points over his average last night you couldn't overcome that either I would I I would I would expect Somebody to go like somebody's always going over their average. Even Chinzo went over his average. Josh Hart went over his average. Shout out Grayson Allen. You know, somebody Jesus. somebody gonna go over their average. We need th- it, this is what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. We need everybody to to be playing their their game and be on top of their game. And that's asking a lot. That's not 
it's almost not even realistic. That's that's asking a lot from these guys. It's crazy, man. And then and then Jesus. and then we're like, and then when we say that, we're like, hey man. We need Kobe Jones to be on his game. It's like, come on. <laughs> no, Co- well, Co- yeah, Kobe Jones should be on his game. Uh, Sheeran. <laughs> uh, it's our Kobe Jones going to game. I was like, hey, hey, you might point at the wrong. What is going on here? And it went bad. And that's not fair to Kobe Jones. It just, God. Mike is searching. Mm-hmm. He's searching. And that's because the Pelicans were kicking their ass. Yeah. But. Here's here's the here's we didn't even the, talk about the fact Fox rolls his ankle at the end of the game. Yeah, he said, he said it's cool. fine. He said he's cool. He but that was scary. He rolled his ankle. Yeah, that was scary. Um, the the thing about it though, the same thing that you know worries us, um, can be the same thing that excites us, gets us hyped up. Mm. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Well, hey, uh, hey, hey, I know, hey, I know, hey, I know. I saw hey, where you were going. Hey, you hey, tipped hey, on hey, it. Yeah, hey, I hey, saw. I know. Hey, no, nah, my ears perked up. He's really scared to talk. It's yeah, funny. it is one game. Yeah, it's one game. I know. If these guys can. They can get it together for one game. Phoenix in tonight or in the play-in can have an off night for one game. You know, where this is this is the difference for me between getting to the playoffs and being in the playoffs. In the playoffs, you're going to be asking for a lot. You're going to be asking for Colby Jones or Duarte to be good four times, probably even like five or six, because you're not going to win uh, just the four games they play good, and they're going to have to play good and more than that. Right now, you're just asking for everybody to step up this game, Mm -hmm. this game tonight. You know what I mean? This game tonight. Play well in this game tonight. And, and then you play on Sunday, you ask the same thing. And then you got the one game, and especially if you're seven or eight. If you're in that seven, eight game, then it's really like, hey, tonight and we got our goal. Mm-hmm. Do yep. what you got to do tonight yep. and we got our goal. Yep. After all little, of this. Yeah, it gets after a, all of this. It gets a little more daunting if you're a 9 10. Oh, it's, then it's like, I don't even damn. think it's possible if you're a 9 10. Bro, we got to. You gotta play good. And you're probably gonna have to ex- good the next game. You're probably gonna have to exercise a demon mm-hmm. in that nine ten. One or the other. You're yeah. probably gonna have to exercise one of those. Nine ten does it just doesn't seem realistic that they get to the playoffs from nine ten. Mm-hmm. But if you but look, even if like so you win a night, say you you'd win enough to get in the seven eight. Mm-hmm. Like almost like you said, after everything we've been through, mm-hmm. like you could say that about um just getting there. Mm-hmm. Like, man, everything we've been through in this last week, we didn't, you know, have some struggles. We didn't fail. Down, but here we are. Here we are. Mm-hmm. You've already let's go on executed. NBA TV, here we come. <laughs> Johnny Dewey throws another chat. Tough part for the Kings, too. You get three doors. It's top 10 all player behind each of them. <laughs> and probably and maybe mm-hmm. the best two, two guard in the game. I love <laughs> and, and left Beal well. out. Just completely <laughs> left Brad out of that. Like, like Brad's yeah. nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Matty G, I, 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 nine ten. Yeah, I don't like it. Too daunting. Matt, you might as well join the show. Come you're on, just, man. you just click the link, buddy. You're, yeah. you're here. Uh, we'll come back. Um, I, oh, I wanted to talk to my people. You know, my people, my Kings fans. I did want to talk to them a little bit. All right, you talk to Kings fans when we get back here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. Ah. <sighs> Let me get some some more sugar. Actually, let's not. We got a water right here. Let me just get a little bit. No, get some sugar. Oh, I'm gonna get that sugar. I was about to get a soda. Too. Which one are you getting? The oh, what's that? The sprinkle. Which one? What's that over there? It's like crap. Damn. You take that one too. No, that's yours. I want to know what this is. You said it looked like crap. It does. Uh, show the people. It looks like crap. Looks looks interesting. You want a donut, Jesse? I already got mine. Actually, got to be here early when they got here. Oh, yeah. I had no business having these in the studio. This does not taste like crap. This is delicious. What's up, Spencer? Hey, Liv, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. I brought you a napkin right there. 
All right. Live your life, man. We love it, Matt. Matt might be a couple drinks in. Hey. That donut's delightful, by the way. What does it taste like? Um, Like broken glaze and sugar. Hey, Cam, okay, I'm about to eat lunch, so I don't want to mess that up. Chocolate and that other stuff. Huh? Chocolate and that. We just get a whole box of that. Chocolate and that other stuff. Dude, you can say well, nuts, yeah. man. You can wow. say it. Come on. Wow. You can say nuts. He won't even tell you he eats something called a nut bar every <laughs> oh. day. <laughs> I don't know. You're the equivalent of the guy throwing his hands up after every penalty he commits, bro. <laughs> I don't know why they name it that. Change the name. Oh, word? It's a good look, Aldrin. Says Carmelo and Trick are making their debut on SmackDown. Are you guys jelly donut oh, people? Mm-hmm. Are you guys jelly donut people? We were talking about in the chat earlier on the insiders. It's Absolutely disgusting. Not. Thank you. Absolutely not. This mm, man. <laughs> they in here calling for a dude. She should have texted I mean, that. Look, to me. Hey, look, man, we look. I feel like we've done Eric Gordon before. Have we? Not well, maybe not. Eric, it was I don't know. I feel like we have. Oh yeah, because it's got to be a Suns player. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Boy, they thirsty for the pocket watch. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, bro. I feel like pop- I can't lie. I feel like Deuce is here for your downfall. <laughs> I don't know. Might Deuce, be. Deuce might be here just to. <laughs> That's not all. Is Deuce on um, the Paul Heyman to Kenny's tribal chief? Wow. <laughs> there he is. Wow. The wise, wise man. man. The, wise the wise man. man. You know, we are booking this to perfection. I huh? see Morgan every time I go to the games. I haven't seen Deuce in a long time. I haven't time. seen Deuce in. Well, I'm not there as much as you, but I know you're not there at time, but I haven't seen Deuce in a minute. I got to get there early on Saturday just so I can see people. Shout out to my guy, Matt George. He's on my side. Jordan, we just need everything to go perfect today, man. <laughs> can we change the damn nets now? Yes. Yes, you can change. The, get change that the nets. crap out of here. That's I right, know, John. Everybody. I know, man. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Like Booger and uh he got game. I wish I could just be my own person. Mm. Actually, Jesus said that. Booger was the one copying Jesus. Nope. <clears throat> All right. KC wants to talk to Kings fans. Phone lines are open. 916-909-1320. But the streets. Streets is buzzing, man. Bro, they keep like saying, oh, Jess, you got to win for the Kings. Blah, there's too much pressure on me right now. There is some pressure on Jesse. The downfall of the Tapia legacy. You got Deuce Heyman out here working for well, KC. Deuce is the wise man. <laughs> Deuce Heyman. And it's the Sacramento Kings versus the Phoenix Suns. So we pulled up the old career earnings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of Yusuf Nurkic. Ah, it's disgusting. You go Nurkic. Yeah, Yusuf yeah. Nurkic. Do I need to check your browser history? Absolutely not. You never do. Got ESPN Plus on. He's good. <laughs> Yusuf Nurkic. I also he's got have something in front of me that it just it actually pisses me off. We'll talk about it after pocket watch. Yusuf Nurkic, uh, two years remaining on his current deal. Uh, doesn't really factor into this. So we could just go the 10 seasons he's played so far. 10 seasons. This is his 10th season in the National Basketball Association. Um, Bosnia. He, he apparently wasn't drafted. He was just signed. There was once a discussion whether they should keep Jokic or him. In Denver. Never forget. Yusuf Nurkic's career earnings are... So nobody's surprised. Peaking this year at 16 
$1.8 million. Yusuf Nurkic, 10 seasons in the National Basketball Association. His contracts peaked this year at $16.8 million. Again, no draft here. He was signed in 2014, 2015. One of our toughest pocket watching moments to date. Jesse is desperate for a victory. We're down bad. There's speculation that media around Sacramento are praying for his downfall. Jesse, career earnings for Yusuf Nurkic. I will go 134 million. 134 million dollars. Kenny Caraway, can you keep this impressive win streak alive? Yusuf Nurkic, 10 seasons in the National Basketball Association. Signed in 2014-15. Earnings are peaking this year at $16.8 million. Kenny Caraway, career I'm gonna earnings. Go, I'm going to go with $120 million. $120 million. I think Talk I took to that out. Man. Talk to him, wise man. I'm going to implement a rule now where when you're both this bad, you both lose. Was he at like 110? How did you go so high? I always not, go high. Not even in three figures. I'll tell you that. It's 91. I gave I, I gave his last contract too much. $91,895,000. Now, if we had included the next two years, Jesse would have had the best guess in history because it was $129,395,000. Give me those two years. I told you. I entered in his whole contract. Give I me those said, years. Did you say 130? I said 10, huh? What he said 130. I would have been five off. He would have been nine off. Oh, you did say 134. I wrote, wrote 134. Yeah. Sorry. Well, sorry. King's losing again. Sorry. Oh, look, look. And no, we're not doing that when when they're this off. Dude, the correlation. The, the, I'm telling you what it is. I knew Jesse went entirely too high on that. I didn't need any, uh-oh, well, let's do the math here. No, let me stay close, but I know it's under. He took a page but out I of win. my book. He took a page out of my book. But I win. He won again. I win for the win. It's two weeks but in a row. But if I would have said, if I would have said, well, it wouldn't have come into play. But what if I said like 79 million or something like that? Then we got to do math. No, we ain't doing that. Still would have won, though. I'm going to stay close, but I know it's lower. Another win for your boy. They're Matt, calling us Jimmy and Jay. No, Matt. Matt's right. We've that been was, lately. I'm, we haven't been close lately. Yeah, you haven't been good at all, to be Another honest with you. Another win for you. Actually, wasn't I close yesterday? With uh, uh, what was yesterday? Drew Holiday. Yeah, I was like, I was. I close. can't. I don't know. I my close. my. This note sheet has become. <laughs> no, I think mess. we were both off I yesterday told, too. I, I told, you like three twenties, I think. Yeah, I told. I tore the the scorecard off to give. Uh, Lene, our book, the the, ah, the notepad. Can we maybe so, go to the MLB juicing era or something? Your boy not is good, man. at 500. Let go. Well, you're you're not. 12 and 12. You're 11 and 12. 11 and 12. You're 11 and 12. In the... That's on my wins. Hey, wise man, talk to him. Talk to him, wise man. Ain't messing with my wins. Ain't messing with the tribal chief. Sal in the chat at this Impressive. point. We're just we're not mad. We're disappointed. I get it. I now get this, it. This is a good this is a this is a this is a good question that the that the wise man is asking. How many in a row? I don't know. He exactly might be at eight. No, because I think he was three I and do, twelve at one point. I do think it's eight in a row. I'm not stopping anytime. I soon. think it's eight straight victories in pocket watching. That's right. That's right, wise man. Man. That's right, wise man. PWO is just a game of runs, uh, I go guess. Ahead. Go ahead, play it. Play my sound. Yeah. Acknowledge me. Mm -hmm. I'm in God mode. Do you have I got any... nothing to say. I got nothing to say. We suck okay. right now. We suck. All right. What do you want? We stink. Well, and I, I also want to be clear. You, everyone is aware of what this means, right? <laughs> yeah, we're well, Kings losing tonight. Yeah, the Go Kings enjoy your Friday, bro. Tonight. That's not true because the Kings won on Sunday. What is that? They beat the Nets. All that's right, like whatever. when that's they like beat when you covers. beat Kyle. We're going on almost two weeks of me um, winning here. I'm sorry. So they've gotten wins against the Jazz and the Clippers and the Nets. Don't don't tie my dominance to this struggle. 
Just mm. going to leave this message here. Ever since Kenny cheated, um, he's been on a run. I lost that, by the way. I lost that. You did lose. However, the math checks out. You you cheated. You fessed up to it at Bar West, and you have been on a run. Did not fess then. up to it while we were playing as well. It was, um, how do you say, off the record. Well, because then after we cheated, it was the the cheat that I did there's, was not applicable. Who's the who, we? Who's the we cheated? It, it was it was not applicable. You cheated. It wasn't even the same uh, question no more. So there was an attempt to, but it didn't even matter. Kings, please win tonight. I don't want to be cooked on Locked On Kings and be the reason why they lost. <laughs> wow. Look at the wise man. It's tough. All right. All right. Everybody Shout settle down. To the wise man. The Yusuf Nurkic oh one God, was tough. Bro. The Yusuf Nurkic one was tough because we're used to those massive numbers. $91 million. He's made a great career earning. He's going to finish uh, the 25-26 season at 130. That's That's a great deal, but a lot of times we're – we're flirting with half a billion dollars on some of these. Maybe I'm a system pocket, pocket watcher. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I'm a, a system. I got system. Other, say other people got to set me up the, or something. Man, maybe that's it. A system get, pocket watcher. Need to run those pick and rolls. <laughs> Who's gone right now that you don't, you're not able to uh, get the pick and roll? With right I don't know. Now. It's a three man show, but I don't know. We just suck. Like I said, <laughs> Joe, you need Joe. Here? Yeah, Joe, get in here. <laughs> Gonna start treating Joe like he a lucky rabbit's foot or something. <laughs> Joe comes in, Jesse gets a win. Joe can never leave. They said I got a pick second. I disagree. Kenny had a pick second for a long time too. That's what it it's is. The game it's, is the game. It's the game is the game. Can I tell you what I'm pissed off about though? Yeah. Did you see this? This unveiling of my guy Allen Iverson statue. The hell is this? So I saw I saw that pop up in the chat. I don't think I. So where is this statue? It's in Philly, in front of the. It's Wells in the Park arena or whatever outside. What is this? So it looks like like Mike. I guess that's how all their statues are for their players. The hell! It looks like a, a my buddy. That's embarrassing. I'm, 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 I'm. That's embarrassing. We, uh, we, I know we don't do this as much because you know it gets tech. The people got to see this. This is ridiculous. Oh, I'm pretty pissed that. off. Yeah, Alan's looking at it very confused. He is very perplexed by what's happening. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need the sound, but if we can, well, that, in on, fact, man. everybody looks confused. Come on, man! Don't do this to my guy AI. Is that Pat Croce right there? Yeah, that's Pat Croce. Come on, man. That guy is sitting there like, what the hell is this? So, so everybody that's it's watching on this screen, they take the towel off. There, there's it is little a it, it's, it's actually a bath towel. That's how small <laughs> the statue is. They just had a bath towel over it. There's little AI. So all of their statues are little. Bro, AI pats it on the head like it's a little kid. Well, I need to see the other one. Yeah, so so if you I'm go to they are, but I got if see you go other. to NBA, uh, NBA uh, had a tweet about an hour ago that shows Julius Irving, Moses Malone, Charles Barkley, the other statues that are out there. Mm. It's on. It it looks to be on scale. Mm. It, it looks like it's the same. The same lines, Jesse. Can you try to pull that up? It's well, it's Philly, it's it's on uh, NBA's Twitter account about an hour ago. No, well, a little bit. These no, nah, these are these are <clears throat> these look bigger than AI. Look at Moses. Look at Charles. No, I don't think they do. That's a different view. They, they, it's also they're also uh they're also in different well. Different what, Damien? Positions. Mm -hmm. They're in different positions. Yeah. Well. yeah. We can kill that. But like, like, look, they're they're not life size look, statues. They, but they they definitely look bigger than AI. These well, would be AI, solid water fountains. Uh, no, uh, it, it's fine. Philly got this incomplete well, content. Philly got I don't like wrong. all of it. Yeah. Like the whole the setup. I don't. Yeah, I don't like any of that. That almost defeats the point of a statue. Yeah. Couldn't get the process right. You expect them to get this right? <laughs> really get past the second round this year? You say yes, huh? No, no, no. I said they can beat Milwaukee, which is like first round matchup. 
So then they would lose to whoever they play after that. I'm not going to I'm I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Ooh, they're tweeting your name with Luke Walton gifts attached to it. Bro, I turned off my notifications. That's a good idea. No, That's legit, legit. I just, I just idea. I just got a text right now. You lost again oh, from my dad. Man. Oh man. <laughs> hmm. Oh man. The Alfonso uh Cody with Roman Kenny in the background. <laughs> that, that was, was an all timer. <laughs> that was an all timer. I'm cooking, baby. I'm cooking. You want to talk? I don't know if I'm gonna lose again. You want to talk to Kings fans? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I want to talk to my people, man. <sighs> Look, I understand everybody is frustrated and upset with how this has played out this year. And the goal is still the goal for me to get to the playoffs. That's the goal. I said this in the summer when everybody gets a failure. If you don't get to the second round, like, no, that's not what it is. Get to the playoffs. You still have an opportunity to salvage this season. But let's just say worst case scenario, that doesn't happen. This team's not bad. This franchise isn't back to what it used to be. It is a, no pun intended, but just being real, it is a process to get where you want to get. I think Mike Brown talked about that yesterday, I believe. I feel like I heard him say that, recently at least. It's, it's going to take some time. And regardless of what happens in the next week, it's not done. Um, definitive of what's going to happen. But what just happened? Like, this thing really does take time, man. And if you don't make it this year, you go back and you re you realize, you know, while we have a good team, while we're, we're a solid team, we're a little thin, you know, if one of our playmakers goes down. We got to prepare for that, you know, for this upcoming season. Hell, even if you do make it, you're probably feeling the same way. You learn some things about this program that you're creating right now. And I know everybody wants to – Say, hey, yeah, playoff series winner bus. All right. That's, it's not reality a lot of times with these situations. So I wanted to say, I wanted to remind people of that, man. Okay. Season is a failure if they don't make the playoffs. A failure? Mm -hmm. uh, Even all things yeah. considered, right? Like, yeah. Because I don't, because. All things considered, because if we would have told you you're losing Malik Monk for the final 15 games or whatever it's going to be, everybody still said, yeah, we're definitely making the playoffs. It's not a failure. How is it a success, though? It's not a success. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it that for sure. Definitely wouldn't call it a success. But but it but it's no, I wish you tell the whole story. Like, I know they're in different places, but Memphis's season is a failure. They didn't have their best player or. Still a bad season, though. Bad season for sure. I, 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 it's 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 semantic. Earlier on the insiders, I said I said it would be unsuccessful if they didn't make the playoffs. That, that's now that is probably. I said unsuccessful because, it, like you said, if you look at it as a whole, I don't think the Kings build took a massive hit this year with the season that they had. I was telling James earlier, like the steps that they need to take as far as fixing the roster and all, they they're clear still going forward. So I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, the build is messed up because they didn't make the playoffs or anything like that. Like, obviously, it's going to be a lot more complicated for Monty to try to make a deal because he's going to have his picks tied up a bit if they don't make the playoffs. But, yeah. I mean, like as a whole, like, it's they're fine. But this, this season by itself, yeah, it's unsuccessful if they don't make the playoffs. I, I like I like unsuccessful. I like unsuccessful. I think that's a, a better a better phrase. Is it semantics? Maybe Failure so. is a stronger word, but yeah. It is, but... Maybe so. Maybe it's, it's just semantics, yeah. For sure. I understand that. And and Stephen McBride says, come on, Malik played over 70 games and we shouldn't have been in that situation to begin with. I mean, I, so like, so which one is it? Is it, <laughs> is it uh, they shouldn't have been in that situation to begin with because the roster is so good or we need major changes? Because if you shouldn't have been in that situation, to me, that's saying, no, we're good enough to be a championship contender or a top four team with the roster we have. And we shouldn't make no changes moving forward. 
Like no big well, changes moving forward. But is there a is there an in between of okay, maybe they're not a championship contender, but maybe they shouldn't be fighting with three other teams for the six, seven, and eight spot or the seven, eight in 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 nine and ten spot. Yeah, there is. I there is an in-between for to answer your question. But I think part of I think realistically, that's always where the Kings were. Mm-hmm. I felt like they were in between. I, 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 I thought at a time that they were better than the Lakers and the Warriors. Mm-hmm. I thought at a time they weren't as good as Minnesota and Oklahoma City and, and, and Denver. Mm-hmm. They were in between. They're, they're kind of, you know, maybe where the Pelicans are, maybe where the Clippers are, or maybe where Dallas is, whatever. But they're in between. Um, the losses to, and this is what everyone will focus on, the losses to, the Charlotte and, and the, you know, the ones we go over time and time again, mm-hmm. you don't have to be a championship contender to beat them. Right. And I think that's what you get people. That's what I think that's what everyone will be hung up on. Mm-hmm. Uh, should this season wind up being unsuccessful mm-hmm. uh, and they don't get to the playoffs. Timmy, Timmy T in the chat uh, says something that's interesting. He says long time Kings fan. If the Kings don't make the playoffs this year, it is not a failure. Here is why. The Kings are better this season than last season. Consistency and defense. I disagree. I disagree but I only too. bring that up because you keep hearing Mike Brown kind of talk like that. And he's talking about like the things that they're going through. Like he 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 wants to get to the playoffs for sure. That's this guy's a competitor. That's what they're trying to do. But when you hear him talk, it almost seems like he's saying, regardless of what happens, what they're experiencing will make them better in the, moving forward. Do you think last season's team was a Mike Brown type team? No. And I'm thinking like the way he's talking, like maybe he sees like the path or whatever. Like now they're kind of taking the shape, like, like what he wants them to be and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not necessarily great. Like the season, they're not as good as they were last season. They did take a step back that way or whatever, but more so maybe they've taken a step to what Mike Brown wants them to be. I don't know. I'm just don't no, that's that's why I, I just because I was just listening to him and he he he, he said it last night. He was just like, man, what they're going through right now is invaluable. Like they're you know going through these things. They haven't been here dealing with this type of adversity, all this other stuff. It's it's stuff. You know, I'm paraphrasing for him, but it's. You can't buy this stuff. You can't simulate this stuff. You have to actually go through it. And he, the way he talks as if like, all right, let's go through it. Let's, let's figure out who we are, figure out what we got, what we need to get. And now we can push forward to that ultimate goal after going through this. I know for a fact that he'd much, much rather go through all this and make the playoffs than go through all this and lose in the play that nobody's saying that's what he's saying. But he is talking about, like, the, you. It, it sounds as though he's saying you couldn't skip this process, even if you tried. Maybe some teams have or whatever, but for the, the – they may be the exception and not the rule. Like, you, you had to go through this time to get where they want to get. That's, that's what I'm taking from the things that he's saying. I don't know if it's necessarily true or not, but that's the way he's talking. Okay. I. Okay. W- w- what? What's the benefit of going through the process, though? Like, you, you, we have to go through the process. Like, why? The losing in the first round of the playoffs—that's a process too. Yeah. So I think I, if you if you if you had if you had if you had beaten the Warriors mm-hmm. and lost to the Lakers last year. And then you come back this year and you lose to the Timberwolves in the first round. Okay. You, you, you've got it. And, and it, everything else is the same. You know, everything is the same. You've run it back. You've done all of this. All right. I get it. You're, you're, you're going through a process. I understand. Well, what's the process here? The process here. Or, or what's gained out of the process here, I guess I should say. I would, I would say if, if it happened that they didn't make the playoffs. The process here is like you've got to it's it's not it's not just gonna happen for you. Maybe that's one thing that he was trying to get across. 
is that, you know, they always talked about as if they were going to be in the playoffs, right? And that's confidence. I don't have no problem with them saying that. But maybe one of the things he was trying to get across to you is like, it is not your birthright to get to the playoffs. Mm. You mm-hmm. can't mess around against Detroit and Washington, all this stuff, and think you're going to be in the playoffs. You've got to bring a level of focus all throughout the season. Because if you don't and you slip up, look where we're at now. We're in 9-10, and we, we might not make it. Mm. And, and going through that and maybe not making it or making it by the skin of your teeth may prepare them for training camp next year. You see what happened last year. We either didn't make it or we just barely made it. You want that type of experience again? Bring that type of focus day to day. If you want more, if you know that you want more, understand it's not your birthright to get into the playoffs. You got to work. And maybe that's the lesson that's learned. I see. I don't hate it. Don't really want to experience it. I definitely don't want to experience it. But I don't hate it. I'd like to experience it with them getting into the playoffs. Yeah. Worry about, you know, the focus you showed at some points during the season. Uh, after after the playoffs, mm-hmm. you use that pep talk next year because it's still applicable. Yeah. It still works. Um, oh, this segment was highlighted by another win by me. That's what the segment that had nothing to, to do with what we were talking about at all. Uh, Look, you already caused Jesse to leave. Jesse left. <laughs> just, just highlighted by Jesse. another victory by me. I mean, to hell with five hundred. That's already a, that's already going to happen. What's the what's the record? What's the single season uh, win record? That's what I'm looking at at this well, point. Well, this this will be the longest season we've ever had. <laughs> what is my record? What am I, just 12 and 11 at this point, Zach? You're 12 and 11, yeah. Oof. Because to the best of my knowledge, you haven't played any unsanctioned games. No, I've only played clean games. Looks like, he, looks like he's headed to the play-in against Ham. I had my same nine-game winning streak the way you've had yours, pal. <laughs> it's a game of runs in the PWL. <laughs> Eight straight victories for Kenny Carraway. Hey, and, and Spencer brings up a good point. He says, OMG, KC on his LeBron right now. That does remind me, this probably was the toughest stretch of uh, pocket watching that this league has ever seen. What do you I mean? Was able, I was able to get. I mean, it, it was I've been out here pulling double duty on the insiders or I nah. take care of a puppy. You've had your work cut out for you, pal. No, nah, this one was probably the toughest stretch that anybody's ever seen in the, in the PWL. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's your favorite line from The Godfather? Oh, man. Dog, I mean, there's just so many. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just so many. I can't even can't even remember. I watch it every day, though. Yeah, you do watch it every day. Yeah, every day. Weezy's right. Um, I'm not talking post game. I will be sending Charlie to <laughs> speak for me. Oh no! Oh no! Charlie's got to go to the podium after <laughs> no, pocket watching. It would be Joe. It would be, so, well, be Joe. Joe got to go. I'm gonna send poor Danielle to the um, podium to talk for <laughs> po- pocket watchers. Danielle don't even talk in real life. She sure she ain't gonna talk in. She ain't gonna <laughs> talk. Danielle, in part- Danielle like I just got here. I don't know. Danielle been here for months. I'm not sure I've ever heard Danielle say a single <laughs> word. Every time I say good morning, Danielle, she kind of she smiles at me. She might say hi. Maybe she says hi. Then she's just quiet by nature. She's very and there's nothing or, wrong with that. Or she's no, like, I'm the same way, especially with all these loud mouths. Place. Well, that's probably it too. She's sitting over there trying to do her job. Like I am what not. Put, I am not putting this on my resume. <laughs> We're gonna collect that paycheck and keep it moving. This is this is deserted in this office. Today. It's deserted in this office always. <laughs> That's facts. No one ever comes to work. I don't know when that happened. Well, I could bring the dog next week. Bring the dog next week. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what we do now. On all radio, we bring dogs. to Oh, is that a thing? Hey, oh, I'm not gonna put him on the show, bro. He's gonna be in the corner with his little blanket <laughs> and his pee pad. Did someone do that? I'm not bringing him now. Casey ruined it. I'm not bringing him. We'll come back. I don't know what's going on in here. These dudes <laughs> watch that do. other radio that's station more than now. anyone oh, else. Man, oh, you're responsible. Never mind. You're radio. responsible that's for like do. half of their views. <laughs> We'll come back. Will Z joins us in about 30 minutes. James Ham around the top of the three o'clock <laughs> hour. We'll talk more here as Dylan and Casey continue on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. <laughs> oh, look at me and the wise man. Good job, Dr. David. Uh, 
That's funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this true, Damon? There was a dog at Bash at the Beach? KC so locked in, but this did happen. Oh, he's, at Bash he's at the I get what he's saying. He's calling the other place WCW calling that Bash at the Beach. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know everything. All right, you go get a number nine at Togo's, I think. Whatever the number is at Togo's. Norm, they haven't been playing well either, but they're just kind of chilling at this point. Do you go cardigan button or unbutton? Unbutton. Or at least for this one, because it's really baggy. I usually go button. I have two other ones that are a little more slimmer. I'll button the top two. But this one's baggy, so it would look like a box if I buttoned it. So I'm gonna go or Spencer, I'm gonna go home like Stone Cold when they wanted him to face Brock. Oh, did you see we got some? Yeah, I hope that's not true. I hope that's fake report or something. Because if it really came down to money, what are we doing? Mm. And you and look, if that's the case. I mean, I ain't saying you got to do it for free, but well, you're Stone Cold. Maybe it doesn't matter. But you, you know, you know a couple of dollars keep you away from being part of one of the iconic moments of the the industry's. Oh, man. It's the only thing that kept it from being perfect. Man. <laughs> Sydney Dean, I don't even remember that. Do you remember this moment? And no holds bar. <laughs> that wasn't no holds barred. That was uh that was um I think it was Mr. Nanny, maybe. Oh man. There it's a weird clip where like Hogan is riding his motorcycle, and if you look in the back, you see a guy throwing a dog in the water. <laughs> Come on, man. Best bad wrestling movie. I know that one's probably not a wrestling movie, whatever. I've never seen it, but best bad wrestling movie is Ready to Rumble. Which one was that? It's the old that WCW, the WCW one. WCW one. I feel like they got a lot of their ideas post that movie. From that's there. a shoot. That's mm. a fact. Because they put it on the belt on Freddie Prince Jr. or something like that. No, they put it on David Arquette. Yeah, yeah. Oh, David Arquette. We got we got more graphics. Boy, oh boy, the creatives are being creative today. I like this one of me. What kind of fine print is that, uh, Will Z? <laughs> well done, Will. Well done. Doctor Davis got a cool one with Deuce um, next to Casey with the belt. Yeah, that's 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 funny. That's a good one. That's a good one. Deuce the wise man. I do love how everyone's um, tapped into pocket watchers, though. Well. Well. This right, but 19 years ago today, the emancipation of Mimi dropped. I just gotta shake it off. 
Because your loving ain't the same. And it keeps on playing games. And you know I'm a... Kenny's feeling good today. Well, as I should be. You know, I mean, I'm out here. I'm winning. You know, I, I'm I'm hot right now. I'm, I'm locked in on pocket watches. Um, you know, this is going on two weeks of dominance. Really is. And um, I don't see anything changing anytime mm -hmm. soon. Well, it's going to be a long stretch here for us. Uh, Warriors host the Pelicans tonight. Uh, second night of a back-to-back -back for the Pelicans. Of course, the Kings have their own second night of a back-to-back -to -back tonight uh, against the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers, they close out their season on Sunday against the New Orleans Pelicans. The Suns, they close out their season, I believe it's against Minnesota uh, on Sunday. So a couple of tough games ahead. What happens at Chase Center could tell the story. I think the Warriors and Jazz, question mark? Sounds about right. They got a... It was Jazz or Grizzlies. I mean, and the Kings, the Kings got the Blazers. So, right. like, I mean, can't really... I was thinking about that last night when the Warriors, you know, were playing the Blazers and came back. Like, oh man, well, why do why don't we ever get a chance to play the Blazers? <laughs> well, we got well, them on Sunday. Yeah, we got them on Sunday. That's right. So, the, how are you how are you feeling about tonight, man? I don't feel good about it at all. Yeah, I don't feel good about it at all. Um, I think it was I think it's I think it's as simple as I just I don't I don't know it's it's what we just talked about like how much has to go right how much they have to do how much everything has to line up yeah. for for them to win and it has, and 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 that's the, and that, and that's why I feel so good about a potential uh, one game playing in some of those different situations because it lined up against the Clippers. Mm -hmm. They, you know, got a twenty plus performance from Domas, wasn't the best night from De'Aaron, uh, but you got nearly, you got nineteen from Keegan, you got double digits from Davion, double digits from Trey Lyles. That's a good Clippers team. Yeah, we we could talk about how they're playing at the time or whatever. It's a good Clippers team. Yeah. Things lined up against them. Uh, I don't put as much stock in the Nets because you know we know what time it is, uh, or the Jazz because same reasons we know what time it is. But the, the the Clippers win is a quality win. Absolutely. Uh, and they've struggled over the last five. They've won one one of the last five games. So, all right, do they snap out of it tonight? I don't think. Just just looking. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend too much time doing this. I think I could do it in a quick glance. They don't have a ton of three game losing streaks this year. There's one they lost four 76ers, Bucks, Suns, Pacers. Everyone remembers that one very well. That was back in January. That might be they lost to the Rockets and the Warriors. They lost to the Rockets two times in a row in the Warriors. That was Three in a row. So they've lost three in a row three times all year. Or two times all year. Hmm. And they've and they're facing one right now. They're facing one right now. So they lost to the Knicks, lost to the Celtics, beat the Nets. Lost to the Thunder, thought lost to the Pelicans. What are they gonna do tonight? Man, I don't know. I don't feel great about it. Saying, I don't like, feel great about it, but I don't like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to be over. I'm also not going to be like overly negative. I'm just going to tell you like, I, yo, the King's going to get this one. I can't do that today. I did that yesterday. Yeah. I can't do that yeah. again. Um, but like, yeah, the Kings absolutely can win tonight, but they, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have anything to offer anyone to reassure them. The Kings could win tonight because I don't have anything other than they they've only lost three in a row a couple of times all year. It doesn't mean they can't lose three in a row now. It just means they've they fought this off pretty well. Um De'Aaron said last night, their head's not down. Like it sucks. They're not playing well, but he's like, hey, we, we this this we 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 know what's ahead of us. You know, we're going to the postseason. Mm -hmm. 
but we've got to, you know, we, our head's not down. We know what we're doing here or we got to do here. So that's probably a positive too. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about it is they still have, they still have everything that they're trying to do right in front of them. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I would preach to them is if I was a player in that locker room, if I was Mike Brown or any of these other coaches, like your goal, one of your goals was to get to the playoffs. Yeah. It's still right there and it's attainable. You know, it's, it's, you know, I know we want a certain level of urgency and everything else like that, but you could say it's still right there in front of you, regardless of what happens today. If you don't want to put too much on this game, mm-hmm. it's still right there in front of you. You work to get to this position where you have your destiny in your control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, not- that's a shoot. Yeah. They, they, they're in control. Like they control if they went out, they're there. Mm-hmm. They they they're they're in control of this more than anyone else. Like the Lakers to move up, to move out of where they they, they need some losses. Warriors, same thing. Yep. I think I read the highest the Warriors can go is eight. Yep. So it's really, man, they 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 control a lot. Yeah, and and it's right there, and that's what I just would try to you know continue to stress, you know, to like I said, my teammates or my the, the players. If I was a coach or something like that. Yesterday sucked. Losing Malik sucked. Losing Kevin Herter sucks. I know we're asking a lot of you guys, but you guys are capable, and it's still all right there in front of you. It's all right there in front of you. Just go out there, and and then let's try to execute at a high level. You know what I mean? I, I know I say we're asking everybody to have this really good game or whatever. Let's, let's simplify it a little bit and just say, hey, execute. Execute your job at the highest level you possibly can. That's for every little thing. And that's it takes a lot of like um focus, long-term focus to like make the right cut, communicate every single time, make the right pass, um, take the shot when you're supposed to, run the play a certain way, run it efficient. You're down six, still like not losing focus of hey, let's run our offense the right way to get a good shot, not jacking up something. It it takes a lot. Every single possession is gonna matter for this team with where they're at. And, uh, you know, it's not easy, but you still got the opportunity. Still right there for you. And that's the important word, right? Opportunity. It's still there for Sacramento. Uh, It's still there. It's not the opportunity for six, which sucks. Uh, But the opportunity for a one-off, I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that. Another big story, Carl Anthony Towns returns tonight. The Minnesota Timberwolves. Yes. It's Minnesota and Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I got to imagine, admittedly, I, I had I had an athletic article pulled up earlier that could have helped with this, but I'd imagine if Minnesota beats Atlanta tonight, they're full force against Phoenix. Yes. Because there's they're yeah, still they they're still seating. Yeah, they're still they're still seating on the line. So um there's a lot at play. Mm-hmm. There's a lot at play, uh, obviously, for the Kings. Uh, there's a lot at play for the top of the Western Conference, and there's a lot at play for the bottom of the Western Conference playoff picture. There, there's all this, even in the middle, right? Like, you're still trying to, you know, get your uh, – figure out who's home court and all this mm-hmm. other stuff and with that 4-5 matchup. So, uh, I don't think any of those teams play somebody that the Kings are directly – related to but everybody in that western conference has something to play for nobody is set nobody's going to be like the kings the last three games of the season last year right right like, yeah, yeah. Where, like, well except the celtics well Ooh. i'm talking about in the western oh conference. i got you yeah celtics for sure so, celtics have been in kicking mode for a minute now <laughs> they have been in uh, kicking mode for a minute uh, you're listening to D'Lo and Casey on KIFM West Sacramento 98.5 FM KRX QHD2 Sacramento ESPN 1320. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Um, I went to The Athletic here real quick looking for that that article I was reading from Shams and Little Barista earlier that laid out all of the different uh, playoff standing or playoff situations headed into tonight's game. And I, and I, and I see this article right here on the front page and it draws me to a question i was asked this morning that i'll just ask because we're we're family it's what we do um 
Do you think there was a reason? Should we have brought OJ up on the show yesterday? Should we have? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't. Because it's really? right. It, there's a, there's a, obviously, there's a story right here on the front of the athletic, and someone asked me this morning, did you guys talk about OJ yesterday? And I'm just almost, no. We, we didn't have to bring it up. Like, I don't think it, I don't feel like it hurt the show or anything like that. Um, but was it a big deal that he passed away? And I don't mean that I'm not trying to talk about like it's family as I'm not, I'm not trying to do, I mean, as a, as a, was that really a story? Like it was pushed I, out there like a, like it was a big deal, but was it really a big deal that he passed away yesterday? Once again, I know you hate this phrase. That was all over my timeline. Yeah, no, no, shows. that's the shoot. No, it was I like, hear, how, yeah. Different thoughts, different yeah, yeah, yeah. remembering how this person, yeah. like it was, it was everywhere yesterday. He's a, uh, and I even like last night after the game and everything, I went back and ended up watching one of those, uh, you know, look back things like James Brown, the uh, CBS guy, did like a hour long look back on the whole OJ, basically from the the moment he retired to him getting released in Las Vegas. Like you know, one of those mm-hmm. look back things. I, I watched it because I was, yeah, I was. I went down memory lane with with that one. Hmm. Uh, and it was it was it was everywhere yesterday. And like I said, I I just said that that's just what it was. I didn't feel like, oh man, we missed an opportunity or we. No, I didn't. I didn't mean like, like that. that. Like I didn't think to, I I didn't think twice about it and wouldn't have thought twice about it unless the question was posed to me. I knew it was out there. I just didn't. I just kept thinking like, what's like Jesse wasn't even alive when the when the um trial happened it was it was one of the biggest moments of of my life not no, like the, influential it was just it was one of those moments probably top five of like moments mm-hmm. yeah hey does oj mean anything to you at all it's a story but it's honestly like when he died i was like who cares move on well no but i mean like is it like a history book story to you like you have no like you no. know what it is well i watched the doc that espn had but as far as that like it was never like taught like other than that, you have no, really, yeah, yeah you you, you, you weren't it. alive for any of that. No, I, yeah, I was born in '96. Like, I asked you guys about when the finals day happened or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm okay. Dead. I don't like, like the way that you did that, but I, I, I don't mean I, disrespect. No, no, I, all right, I, come I on, I don't like the way you did that, but I got it. Like, I feel like for me, it was the '94 finals, right? That's what because he was arrested, yeah, yeah, right. For me, that might be how like people older than us talk about. Watergate, maybe. I don't necessarily want to compare it to Kennedy's assassination. Well, Nixon resigning, yeah. Like I don't want yeah. to because you know that's somebody. Because Watergate developed over time. The yeah. Nixon resignation is probably the uh, well, the the, the but not just the Bronco. Like that. What yeah. was it, a year and a half? That was the the, the trial OJ trial. Oh yeah, yeah. it was ninety four. I think it was ninety six when he was acquitted. Sounds about right. I mean, I was late 95. I was, I, I've never seen anything like that since mm-hmm. and probably never will. That was, man, that was a, 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 a major uh, pop culture type moment. And then like looking back, I mean, there's just so many things, especially now as an adult, so many things that um, feelings that come up from it and, seeing it through different prisms and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on. And I always, whenever that I- That documentary to, was incredible. It really the Made was. in America yeah. documentary. It's was probably incredible. one of the best ones yeah, ever, I think. I think so. I think it, so. It, was, it, was it, 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 it jumped the shark a little bit, even though they were just telling the OJ story mm-hmm. after the trial. Because there was some interesting stuff in there. I, I, I didn't know. But the, the, one, the one, I always, that one scene, with the forensic guy. Yeah, when they when he broke it all yeah. down. Yeah, when he lie. just matter of factly said, "This is what happened," yeah. and they had the computer animated thing. Mm-hmm. That was Yo, a that's lot. wild. That was a lot. That is incredible. Yeah, I, um, I won't forget that one. But it was I, I remember when that came up. Uh, that that dot came up, and as interested as I was about you know kind of going through that time and that case again. I was over it after the FX show. Mm. I was like, I don't need to hear nothing else 
about OJ. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I'm finished. And for some reason, I was like, let me see what this is talking about. And that was the best one that was ever done yeah, on OJ. I agree. That was incredible. It's one of the best 30. It was, it's not really a 30 for 30. It's a sports doc, but we just superimpose those two terms now. Yeah. Um, the OJ, the FX show, that was like BMF. <laughs> that was bad. That was so bad. And them trying to force Kim Kardashian into the show at various points <laughs> was such a tough look. That's right. They did do that. Such a dad, I'm gonna be on TV. Okay. We don't need to do all this. <laughs> I forgot about that part. But I saw all that and I was like, huh. I I ne- it never crossed my mind that we should cover the death of OJ Simpson yesterday. Never once. Yeah, it was it was everywhere. Hmm. It was everywhere. A lot of people talking about it. Excuse me. A lot of people talking about it and, and going down memory lane or giving their their thoughts. Yeah, well, some people shouldn't have. Some I saw some tweets where I was like, oh, okay. I feel like the OJ thing, like if you're a national media outlet, sure, you talk about it. Like, But like my thinking was like, Kings play tonight. Yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah. here, I got, there, there was, I wasn't really room for it. It, wasn't like a, said, it, it just didn't feel did. like a story. Like OJ in 94, 95, 96, that transcended everything oj in 2024 that didn't that didn't mm. it, to me it was i mean it was like okay well king's pelicans well i just feel like everyone had moved on okay, kind, I, well i think everyone like well, in, in, in like it, it was 30 like 30 years ago like we had docs and stuff like that it's just you know what it is at this point it, now he's dead yeah like everyone feels how they feel about oj nothing is gonna like change about that mm-hmm. um and i just i i, I mean I, I honestly like uh, you dump King's coverage. If there's a huge story, I, I didn't think that was as big of a story for as much as it was pushed out, mm-hmm. right? Like the Hollywood reporter mm-hmm. ESP, like every alert that I have for both stations mm-hmm. came to me about OJ. I was like, man, you know, OJ's going to get clicks. Yeah. And, and I mean, to a, to a degree, I get it. Yeah. I, it was just also like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. I always just go back when when trying to figure out why, you know, it was such a topic yesterday. I mean, that was that was the biggest story a lot of us ever lived through. Mm-hmm. That was, and and there's a, um, there's never going to be a finality to it or a conclusion to it, just because that moment will live forever. But the the last component of it, or the most the the most notable component of it, is now gone. Right. So, yeah. Uh, and and all that really is, is another opportunity to bring up all that stuff. Right. Something, something about that, that whole dynamic in that case and that trial uh, has a chokehold on, on us. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I went last night and watched <laughs> the hour, hour documentary on it. Like, cause I was like, man, let me, let me relive some of the stuff that, you know, I it's, already knew, yeah, but yeah, it has a chokehold on us. It's almost as simple as black and white. Let's get Kamara in here. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. What's up, Kamara? Um, not what I had intended to call him, but I I do want to lead off by I think you're downplaying it, uh, D, on the OJ thing because although it's a thirty year old story, um, it's still a a great evaluation of race and social class that's still relevant within the country and how um it, in you know the intersectionality of, you know, uh, money and, and um, power and even the legal system uh, regarding uh, the criminal justice system regarding uh, black and brown people. So it's, you know, the trial in of itself, you know, that's, yes, old news, but OJ was a consequential figure in American pop culture, you know, irregardless if like we know everything we know about the trial, it just was such an incredible uh, window seat on how both black and br- black and brown and white people viewed uh, the criminal justice system um, in that in that spectrum and still continue to view it. So that's the only thing I would say about that. You're 100 um, percent right, and that's what I was alluding to when I said it's almost as simple as black and white. Yeah, uh, it's also they, embarrassing. They, it's embarrassing. I just need to point that out. Like it's so embarrassing looking back at reactions to that and remembering what my reaction to it was, remembering what our reaction to it was. Yeah. Oh, 
I know why we did it. Yeah, well, that, I mean, <laughs> that's tough, though. It, 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 hey, that's it, a tough thing to champion. It, that it, is it a is, tough thing to champion, man. It is. It is tough. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. You, 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 you yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, come on. Go, yeah, go, yes, go sir. Oh, KP, KP, you and I going back and forth this morning, man. <laughs> you know, listen. <laughs> listen I'm, sta- I'm standing on it, bro. I'm standing on it. I know where you are coming from. And I've been listening to the show, but do you understand where I'm coming from regarding them being a mediocre team? Kamara, no understand? one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> you have to re- you have to tell people what your text to Kenny was because no one knows what you're talking about. Okay, so Kenny and I were going back and forth. I texted you guys early this morning saying that they're just not a good team right now. Kenny came back and said, no, I, you know, refute that. And we started going, you know, going back and forth regarding why he thinks they're a good team. And I said, uh, the numbers are not showing that they're a good team based on post all-star break, based on the defensive and offensive rating and things of that nature. So you wanted to say, you know, numbers don't lie regarding the record. I wanted to say numbers don't lie regarding what's on paper, their performance post all-star break. So that's, you you ended up getting to that, but that's not how everything started. The initial text was this team is just not good. And I said, Well, that's not true. That's it's not that's not what it is. They're they're not just like a, a, a bad team or a not good team. They're a slightly above average team. And right now, and that's why I told you, so I'm not gonna argue with how they are right now or who they are right now, because they're they're struggling right now. There's there's nothing to argue about. But you know, you you gotta you got to tell the whole story. Like, I don't, I don't think this, I don't believe maybe other people will be like, they've shown it all year. They would have struggled. Even if Malik Monk was there, I think Malik Monk is there. They, you can argue this one. No need to second or third best player. One of their most important players. He's not there. You don't take that guy off uh, more times than not, at least on this team and think that everything's going to be all right. And I, I think that has to be factored into how they're playing right now where they find themselves in the standings um, because we've already outlined it. Like they, they have no room for error. Everybody has to play top level basketball for them to win. And that, that has, when you say that they're, they're not good right now. Like, yeah. But they also don't have all their pieces. So that, that was my, my thought about it. Like I said, it wasn't. Kamara's an emotional texter. <laughs> He gets really down on the Kings. He rarely is an up texter. Like when the Kings are really, really cooking, a texter would be quiet. <laughs> but when the Kings are struggling, Kamara gets emotional. But I, I understood. Like Kamara's, he's uh, he was just frustrated, like everybody else. Absolutely. Was. Uh, let's get Mitch real quick. Mitch, how you doing, buddy? Doing all right. How you doing, Damon Casey? We good, Mitch. Hey, once again, condolences, man, uh, uh, for your family, man. I saw that over the weekend, man. Uh, so prayers up, bro. Thank you. No more suffering. Uh, but I'm going to try to remember how she was, not not the final couple of months. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I understand. Yeah, it really was. What's, I believe. What, what, what you got on your um, mind, big dog? I try to get in touch with you with uh, your tweet, but it's just on my phone, it says something went wrong. Oh man, it's just well, Elon crazy. Musk see, Twitter yeah, right yeah, there, man. See, I'm not on Twitter a lot. Do am I? I don't know. Usually, dogs, sports. I know. I you know. I get myself in trouble, so I, I, I'll lay off. <laughs> I'll lay off. You're cooking, Mitch. It's all good, man. buddy. You're the man. Yeah, I like the way uh, Keon is playing. I hope he finishes in top eight. If I understand, his playing game. It took mm-hmm. so us to the playoffs, mm-hmm. but um. I think he had to win two games. I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. I oh, was seven. Can we be seven? Just win one game, and that's the way we're in the playoffs. And mm-hmm. hopefully it's uh, Minnesota. I think Old Home is pretty dangerous. Um, I think we need another agent, a free agent, and we need another good draft lottery. If we're going to have two, even better. And I want to say something about I want to say something about OJ. Oh. All right, Mitch. Be careful. Okay. Please. Yeah, be cool, Mitch. Yeah, go ahead, Mitch. You know what? Never okay. mind. Never mind. Never <laughs> mind. Because Mitch is a USC guy, and no, I'm not. To, I'm not talking to Mitch's about. Defense, yeah, no. To Mitch's defense, I saw on Twitter, USC said something about the death, 
And Mitch was like, are you guys for real? So what happened a lot yesterday is I saw people post the story and turn the comments off. Mm. That was done everywhere almost every oj story from news outlets mm -hmm. hollywood reporter people stuff like that every they all turned comments off and it was like this is the story so if he was going to get your stuff off you had to quote tweet it uh, i know mitch is a usc guy just we, we, we got will z coming up i don't know where he was going to go but we'll just leave it to our imagination mitch we love you we'll come back will z joins us uh we'll talk king's basketball with him we'll talk king's sons tonight here on sacramento sports leader espn 1320 That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I say so. <laughs> Mitch is, Mitch William, I'll be right back, buddy. All what right. up, Will? What's up, Kenny? <laughs> no need for that fine print on the graphic, by the way. <laughs> you sick it. graphic, Will. Uh, man, you know I love it. That's been there for like the last three times, Kenny. <laughs> I've just been waiting for you to notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, really Jesse. So. He says he says he acknowledges me. Thank you. That I acknowledge you, <laughs> Tribal Chief. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta respond. <laughs> there we go. I brought you. Ah, oh, my man. Chicken enchilada. There you go, man. Ooh. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate yeah. you, brother. <laughs> well, shout out Bennett's. You need to try it. The Bennett's is good. Bennett's is real good. Let's see what this thing is like. Chicken enchiladas. They're pretty good. You got any plans for the weekend, Will? Not too much. Um, I think just hanging out, which is nice. It's always nice to have kind of a weekend with no plans. I don't get too many of those. Yeah. Kind of how it's been here lately, too. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Hoping for an exciting end to the season. Just trying to enjoy the last two games. I think that's my mindset coming into tonight. Just enjoy it just enjoy it man i was so stressed watching last night i was like pacing in the house i was upset and yeah then, and then you know credit to them but it just felt like you know uh new orleans just wasn't missing it I, this isn't exactly how it was but it felt like they started that fourth quarter off like with 10 10 straight shots it's like damn yeah. I think they were really more like probably like nine of eleven or something, but man, it's tough. What they do? I need this rain to get out the way tomorrow. They just yeah, this yeah. is oh, definitely gonna rain tomorrow. I like just no if ands or buts about it. What the hell? where the hell is this coming from? After some, we're getting all this nice I weather. I'm ready for it. Wearing shorts, short sleeves. Oh, yeah. First five minutes of the fourth quarter, eight of ten for the Pelicans. Four of six from three. Man, yeah. It felt it felt absolutely like it was eight of ten. Yeah. Oof, brutal. I still can't believe CJ's three point percentage went up after last night's game. This is crazy. <laughs> That's wild. They're thinking about your number last night mm -hmm. as he's just making every three. I'm like, this number is going to go up. This is crazy. Yeah. 70.4% from three against the Kings this season. Just ridiculous. <laughs> CJ, stop. We get it. Oh, man. Oh, God. Man. Oh, man.
doing good, Will? Yes. Yeah, things are good. I was telling Kenny, I'm trying to just come into tonight, just enjoy it. I've been down the last few games going into them, so no more of that. There you go. There you go. Good to see everybody posting their <laughs> pictures of Chris and his book. Nice. Seeing those all over the stories and uh, all that stuff. Chris Weber in the Sacramento as we speak. Mm hmm. That's awesome. Should be a fun event tomorrow. Yeah. Are you coming? No. Um, uh, not tomorrow. Oh, hang on. Well, we're coming back. Hang on. Quick reminder, uh, you want to come hang out with Dealing with KC tomorrow? We're going to be in Oak Park, the Guild Theater, with the one and only uh, Chris Weber. He's back in Sacramento. He's got uh, a new book out, and he's going to be doing a speaker series uh, out there. Kenny and I are going to get the opportunity to, to host that. We're very, very excited about it. We hope you can come through. We have uh, posted the link on our social media account. You can go check that out on our Twitter pages specifically. Uh, they still have, let me take a quick, quick peek. Yeah, they still have $25 tickets available. You don't get the book with the $25 tickets, but I, I don't know. I, I, I get, I'd, I'd want the book. Um, but they have different meet and greet opportunities, picture opportunities, autograph book opportunities, all of that good stuff. Uh, but come through, see our man, Chris Weber, uh, this Saturday, tomorrow, one o'clock, uh, the speaker series at the Guild Theater in Oak Park, uh, D'Lo Casey, Chris Weber. It's going to be a good time, man. Come through. Come through. Get your tickets. Absolutely. Eventbrite.com. Uh, search Chris Weber. That's Eventbrite.com. Gonna, that's going to be dope. I talked about it yesterday. But I just I always just love Chris Weber speaking, storytelling, you know, telling his story about his life or anything that's going on. Uh, he's, it's To me, it's, it's captivating, you know, the way he speaks because he's so candid yeah. and, and open and honest when he speaks. So I, I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's big wait. time. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. Uh, as we're looking forward to this conversation with our man, Will Z, who single-handedly uh, caused uh, C.J. McCollum to shoot, uh, I believe it was 9 of 12 uh, from 3 yesterday. That is 100% um, Will Z's fault. Will, how, yeah, does it feel, it, Will. Uh, how does it feel to know that that was all your fault last night? You know, it's just nice to know that C.J. listens and uh, that he's huh? tapped Point. in. I'll yeah, take it. Good point. That's a good point, man. <laughs> no, he, really just, hates, he's so, really, he really hates the Kings. Yeah, he's so underrated, too. I think he's way better than everyone gives him credit for. And just the ability of him and Zion, it's such a good pair, especially with Ingram out, because they can hit you from multiple levels. And we saw it last night. Every time the Kings got on a run, CJ would just, especially late in the game, just made it completely out of reach, where it's, you took out all the hope. Yeah. From his shooting, like from CJ making those shots. Yeah. They uh the Kings they they shot the ball a little better yesterday, got the mm -hmm. you know that 123 number uh for total points. But yesterday it seemed like the defense was the issue. Was it was it I always talk about the Kings um getting those wide open looks and everything, but last night was it them giving up wide open looks? Because it didn't seem like too many threes were contested uh that New Orleans took last night. Yeah, let me check. 22 of 40 for New Orleans last night. Mm -hmm. mm, rough. They hit two more threes uh, than the Kings did when they shot 18 more. <laughs> they got 30 more points <laughs> out of their game. Brutal. Jeez. Brutal. All right, so last night, 11 of 22 on wide open threes for the Pelicans. 11 of 18 on their open looks. Oh that's the differentiation. That's all of them, right? Yeah, that's, that's all so they were open or wide open. All 40 were open mm -hmm. or wide open, which is typical. Usually you see between like two and five tightly contested shots. You rarely see a very tight contest unless it's the Warriors because they love to take those shots. Um, but yeah, it's just they hit everything. I thought the I liked the idea of Sabonis guarding Zion. I thought that Barnes guarding Valanchunas would be interesting, and we saw it. I would have preferred 
them to make Valanchunas score over Barnes. Like, if you're going to do that to me, and this, I, I'm just a random guy. I don't know anything. I don't know defensive schemes or anything. But I thought that the role players got in such a rhythm, Jones, Trey Murphy, because they threw that double team at Valanchunas when Barnes was guarding him. If you're going to go that route, I'd rather have Valanchunas take a contested post up against Barnes than Trey Murphy shooting wide open three. And I thought that very early, that got everyone from the Pelicans into a rhythm, all the role players, stars got going when they got going, and it was kind of toast from the get-go. What did you think about the Kings' offense last night? It, it's kind of, I, I mean, how do you evaluate it? Like, they gave up 135, but they scored 123. They did shoot 42% from three. They made 16 threes. They hit some of the barometers that we like, but it felt like it was all for nothing most of the night. It felt like this going purely off feel and vibes. It felt like every time they scored, it was like, oh, thank goodness. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. an easy 125 or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It was a labored attempt to get there. And the Pelicans made it very difficult for them. And I think that's what kept the Kings from getting that. They had some runs to get back in the game but they didn't have the full like quarter long run to get back into the lead or anything like that. So I thought it was fine. Um, It didn't look super crisp. I thought, I think they made some tough shots, especially Fox with some threes to get back in. Um, So I I thought it was okay. It's nice to see that higher score, but it still didn't feel great. What do you think about this matchup tonight? I know everybody emotionally is a little down because of, Mm -hmm. Uh, that loss last night but you this is still a very very important game for you trying to Mm -hmm. stay in that seven eight slot uh the warriors and the lakers nipping at your at your heels what do you see from this this king's warriors matchup we talked about it yesterday this is the first time that they faced that that three all year they haven't faced kd booker and i think they did one time well yeah well twice they faced them twice already Mm-hmm. They oh, lost okay. both games, <laughs> right? I could, well, because I know the one Bill got hurt uh, in the first. Yeah, that's true. First so, four and a half minutes. One, so okay. Yeah, you can yeah, the one on out then. the one on January sixteenth. Book had sixteen. Brad had thirteen. Katie had twenty seven. Right. Yeah. That was here, right? That was there. Damn. That was the one nineteen one seventeen loss. That was the. Uh, that's the one. That was the Grayson Allen game. Oh, the, he was there for that 22-point comeback? Bradley Who's Bill he? was? Yeah, Bradley Bill oh, was. Okay. okay. Yeah. He was just yeah, quiet. And then, because Grayson and then, Allen yeah. was very loud in that game. Bradley <laughs> yeah. Bill was very quiet. Man. Grayson. But, yeah, I like this matchup a lot more for the Kings. I think that it's a good matchup for Sabonis inside. If you look at what he's done against the Suns this year, 24.8 points, 14.5 rebounds, 10 assists on 69.5% shooting from the field. The Suns don't have as many big bodies. They have Nurkic down there, but other than that, when he comes out or if they try and go small, I think the Kings figured that out on how to stop it from throwing their game completely off. Again, without Monk, it may be different. But I like this opportunity for Sabonis to get going inside a little. It's something that we haven't seen from him. It feels like it's been a long time since we've had a big scoring game from Sabonis. But I like this one for him on that end. Um, obviously, always nervous about the scoring trio of Durant, Beal, and Booker. They've played 39 games together this season. And when all three of them play, they average 69.9 points. So you know between the three of them, you're going to get about 70. It doesn't matter like if it's 50 from KD and 20 from the other two. So be it, but probably around that number. And it always comes down to the question of can you keep the others from scoring? That Grace Allen, Eric Gordon, Nurkic. Can you limit them to 50 to keep it around 120 and then scratch and claw to get 120 yourself? You said, Will, uh, like to see a big scoring game from Domas. Like, what, what, what does that look like? Is that simply just more shot attempts? Is it more aggressiveness? 
Uh, is it an adjustment from Mike Brown? Is it an adjustment from DeMontis Sabonis? Like we were looking, I think he had one against, uh, it might have been Phoenix earlier that we were looking at. Mm-hmm. Like he never, I, he doesn't get like to the 20 field goal attempt. It just got to like 18. And he yeah. was efficient, like he always is, and it was like 27, 28 points, something like that. Yeah, he, man, only three, how many games with 20? Yeah, three games with over 20 field goal attempts. That's it. What's so the I think it is that? one and two. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, loss to Phoenix, uh, Charlotte, and win against Detroit. Okay. So I think it's right. just a very, I know. Sorry to bring up bad, <laughs> bad times. I think it's just the efficiency. Like, I don't think he's ever really going to be that high volume shooter. It's also hard because he's only taking two point shots. It's hard to get up to 30 or so when you're just taking twos. Yeah. Um, getting to the line would help. Again, I don't know why he doesn't get foul calls down low. The difference of a guard driving versus him down low is just mind boggling. But I, th- I think he's just going to have to be super efficient, like a 70% shooting type night. Um, Pair that with a decent, another at least decent night from Fox. And I think that might be enough. Also got to be crazy on the boards probably too, like some big offensive rebounds, you Mm -hmm. know, maybe eight points. That's where you get, yeah, I was going to say, that's where you can get points right there. The easy putbacks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it. look, I, you said it perfectly earlier, Damien. Like I, I'm not uh, like <laughs> overly doom and gloom, but I also don't have any words to tell you why. I don't know how. To, yeah, right. You yep. know what I mean? It's it's yep. it's tough. I I I feel like this team, with the way they are right now, dealing with injuries and all this other stuff, and another thing, people listening in the chat talking about, oh, but they weren't any good with Malik Monk. It, it's it's sounding like you're trying to say this. It doesn't matter that Monk isn't there. They play the same way. That's asinine, but that's a whole nother story. But this version of this team has to play damn near perfect. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. I don't know if that's reality. Maybe they can get away with some things that I'm not necessarily seeing, but it feels like this team has to play damn near perfect, and that is just asking a lot. That was what I was thinking, too, when you were saying it earlier, Kenny, is – with the such limited scoring from everyone but Fox, it's like Fox has to, one, Fox has to be on. Like, you're not going to win a game right now, I think, when Fox isn't scoring. And you just don't have, like, Keon Ellis scored 26, 28 points the other night and they lost. And that's just because everyone wasn't perfect. You had the other players. It was just Fox and Keon. I think the other players scored 49 points between everyone else. And it just wasn't enough. So you either have to be perfect on offense, perfect on defense, or dang near perfect on both. Or you just pray they're having an off night. Well, yeah. We, is that well, allowed most, against the Kings? I don't right, think that's exactly. Allowed. I can't even think of a team that's had an off night against Sacramento. Maybe they all maybe they're cooking. just not cooking tonight. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe, nice. maybe Book has a bad night. Uh, KD has a bad night. Brad has a bad night. Something. Anything at this point. Yeah. Uh, we'll take it. It's tough. That was wired to wire too. The Kings didn't even get up 2 0. Yeah. Ernie Johnson dropped a fun stat in the post game. First, the Kings were the last team that hadn't lost a wire-to-wire game all season. It was their first time. What a damn Pelican. Well, there was another stat that I think Harlan dropped. Oh, well, right and, after? And, yeah, there's a, there's, yeah. A, there's a footnote to it, but it's the most a lopsided series in a season in, a season. in yeah. NBA history. That was pretty unnecessary. Yeah, when he said that, I was like, you don't have to say that, you know. There's no, there's no <laughs> reason for that. Right I mean, there was a fifth game, but still, yeah, yeah not, 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 Hurts. not good. Like, and hey, what team just beat the crap out of the other team? Well, it was the the Pelicans versus the Kings in 2004, son. Great, kicking Great. us while we're down. Oh, we that's all. Like, I ask Uncle D'Lo. Well, I'm not asking. Well, it'll be easier to some of the questions you've sent Reese to ask me. <laughs> Al Will's gonna do that, and 
Kennedy's going to ask a tough question. Go ask Uncle D-Lo. Yeah. That's a good strategy. I like that. Yeah, man. Or, Did it knows not or once him. again, well, what you got to do? They ask those difficult questions. You're not really ready to answer. I don't know. What can uh-huh. I say? I don't, I don't know. Oh, uh-huh. uh, that's Rod Tory. I don't know. It's just a thing they do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got a uh, you got a swing stat tonight. Will is the Z cast up? We don't get to watch it. it. Is. Okay. Yeah, um, I did it. I was scrambling last minute. I got it up at like two oh seven. I gotta get this done. What um, um what's the swing stat tonight? Bench scoring. So Suns obviously very top heavy. Kings right now very top heavy. So I think that whoever can get more scoring from the bench puts themselves in good position. Um big Trey Lyles game, Davion, maybe ten points from him. Um Sasha. If he's back in, Suns have a lot of length, too. I could see Sasha being in instead of Colby Jones tonight. Just can you get 25, 30 points from the bench? Uh, and I think that that will be the telltale sign. Again, who knows? I could I, be wrong. I want to I see some Sasha minutes. You know, yeah. I, I feel like we saw him a little too late yesterday or not enough from a team that needs scoring. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he can stretch the floor a little bit for you with his uh, – with his shooting, he understands the cutting aspect of the game. Uh, yeah, I want to see more Sasha minutes. Today. Yeah, it's either him. Seems like Kessler's done. Like he's out of the equation. Between Sasha, Colby Jones, and Duarte, I lean Sasha as well. I think that you can the trio of him, Lyles, and Len works together surprisingly well. Um, and yeah, we need the scoring, like you said. Well, we appreciate you. Uh, we'll be tapped in tonight. We'll see you uh, next week. We don't know when <laughs> or against who, yeah. but we'll see you next week for sure. Yeah, Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Hopefully, hopefully just once. Just once. Uh, I appreciate hope so. You, well. <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, right, right. I guess yeah. there could be once in a bad way. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, appreciate you, Will. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. That's our man, Will Z. Daddy Batty is the one. Daddy uh, Batty. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Fifth Matt. This is uh, this is so back to back games here. You're playing a team. This is is this the no, this isn't the fifth game. It's the fourth. No, it is the, the fifth. fifth. It's two two. Uh, yeah, it's two yeah. two. All right. Well, at least it's not oh four. Well, <laughs> the bright side. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> I'm trying to find one. And I'm trying to like be. Like, I, I, I'm i not, I, you know, don't do this, you know, I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious stuff. Yeah. But I, the, the the Suns are the Kings. Like, they're up and down. Like, they're all over the place. Yeah. They haven't. They're injured from time to time. Yeah, they haven't. They haven't. Uh, a, a st- and maybe that's part of the reason they've been up and down all season. Because, you know, they lost Brad for a little bit. They lost, they lost Book for a little bit. Then they lost Brad again. Um, I'm not sure. It's a team that they just haven't found their footing. And, un, you know, unfortunately, it's also a team that I think could be really, really dangerous in a, in a one-off scenario. Yeah, very much so. I think, you know, we talked about it before. I think they could be dangerous in the playoffs in general. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I have, I still have like questions. Like, I, I will they hold up for a series? Mm-hmm. Um, how will if they say they, you know, they have their way game one? Like, how will coaches and teams adjust strategies for Kevin Durant, mm-hmm. Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker? I truthfully don't even know. Like, what's Brad look like this year? He's been all right. He's been he's been fine. The, I don't know his numbers in front of me, but um, I get them. I mean, I, just I've watching seen them play moments. Fine. Yeah, seventeen. He's not the that same production, so obviously, but he's he's fine. He's seventeen point eight. You know, he's good. Yeah, he's seventeen point eight. He's fifty percent from the field, forty one percent from three, eighty from the free throw line. That's really good. That's better than it's hard. Oh, field goal and three pointer. Well above his career, uh, yeah, career average. Those numbers are crazy. Those are KC in college numbers. Those are f- 51, 51 games played uh, for for Brad. 
His career average is actually a little bit lower than I thought it was. His career average is 21.8. I was going to say 21.3. That would have been a win for me. I was gonna say twenty one point five, so yeah, I'm close. So, well, jet, see, jet. throw it on the standings. Throw it, give me that's mine. Hey, hey, well, take it to the review board. Um, twenty one point eight, seventeen point eight. Like he's it's four points off. You know, with super scores like KD and 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 book, he's having quite. This is the that's, first time I've really looked at. Yeah, him. he's having. That's a, really a hell of a season. season. Yeah. yeah. He's having a really good season. That's a hell of a season. What I was, what I, what I knew had had happened. He had, you know, he had some moments. I know he had the forty-three point game against Washington. I think he had a big game against the Lakers. But yeah, he's big had game Denver too. I think he played pretty well. Yeah. So he's had. I knew he had those moments. I didn't realize he had been this steady and consistent all yeah, year. Just, I also thought he was closer to like a twenty-five point per game score on 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 his uh, on his he, career. Yeah, what's he? Would you say uh, this year, 50, 40, 80, high yeah. 80s or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, no, not high 80s. Low. I think it was, yeah, he was 80.9. But yeah, wow. 50.5, 41.6, 80.9. His, he, he's up four plus percent field goal percentage on his career. He's up four plus percent on his uh, three point percentage. Mm. He is having a hell of a season. Salute Brad Beal. I thought I thought I feel like some people talk a little crazy about Brad. Brad's they do. a really good ball player. They do. I mean, and and I think a lot of the times, you know, it's just that you can't necessarily stay healthy, or you know, you look at him and he's not a number one. All right, he's still a hell of a ball player. Hell of a ball player. Take him in a in a heartbeat. Was John Wall a number one, or were they two? I thought they were two twos, personally. Thought they were two twos. Well, Wall was probably closer to that one. I mean, and, and Brad would have those moments where yeah, they it feels like they like, both yeah. You know, oh, he he could be the one, and same with John Wall. Um, yeah. John Wall's career is over, huh? Yeah, we were trying to go, we were trying to go double header. She's trying to do. She's trying to do the let music. Me get, let me get the five hundred um, today. Let me get right. the five hundred today. I've never turned down a match. <laughs> Let me get the 500 today. It's going to be shameful. Here we are. Yeah, man. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah, man. This is the moment. Yeah. This is the we'll moment. We'll see. Get that, get that uh, final, hey, final cup, bro. But whatever system that you use, man, let's get it. John Wall, the former number one overall pick out of Kentucky in the 2010 NBA draft. Yeah. 13 seasons in the league for John Wall, his final year, the 2022 2023 season with the Houston Rockets. The most money John Wall has earned in a single season in his career 44.3 million dollars. $44.3 million for John Wall. 13 NBA seasons. The former number one overall pick in the 2010 NBA draft out of the University of Kentucky. Kenny Carraway looking for his ninth victory in a row. Yeah. Jesse, yeah. career earnings. For John Wall, 44 million. How many seasons? 44.3 million, 13 seasons in the NBA. Former number one overall pick. I'm going to go 383 million. Three, you said 383? 383 million. 383 million. Can you carry away? For your ninth victory in a row, or we're all familiar with here in Sacramento, Jesse Tapia for your Luke Walton special. <laughs> KC, 13 NBA seasons, former number one overall pick, 2010, 44.3 was the peak. John Wall. I'm going 360. 
363. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the streak has hit nine. <laughs> Let's go to break, huh? Kenny Caraway is back to 500. Uh, let's go. Let me state for the record. Let's go. This is another game that you both should lose. 383 was entirely too high. He is not. Way too high. 276 million. 483. Until Jesse said 380 something, and I just had to make sure it was close. I was going to say 275 because he had two $125 million contracts, plus you had his rookie. That's getting you the two. I did not ask on, your explanation, on, sir. I'm going to need you. That just lets you know I'm cooking right now. You see how I'm doing the math? You, you see sit- I'm adding the two? You see I'm dividing by four? I'm cooking right now. You see what I'm doing? Come on, man. Go to commercial or you're going to get a technical. <laughs> Did he have two hundred twenty-five dollar or one hundred twenty-five million dollar contract? He had. Um, Hammer. <laughs> he. Uh, he I'm not. I'm not as good as fine. I'm not. I'm not good at finding the individual contracts. Um, here they are. So he's got the five year eighty four point seven. So he's got the four year one seventy one. And he had five one eighty four. Oh. Yeah, John Wall, not eighty four. I said five for eighty four, not one eighty four. Five eighty four. Sorry, um, John Wall. That's the rookie contract, yeah, or the rookie extension. Excuse me. I can't believe you went three eighty three. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I was I was trying not to react too. I was like, my little. Hey, I'm, I was never a math guy. Okay. Crystal helped me in high school. I took one math class in college. Now I got the mic. And Soren, we got to make playoffs. So we can free up, free up picks on for the for the off season. <laughs> Special Ed might need to go get some work with the Stockton um with the Stockton Tapies or something. This is tough. This is tough, man. Too low. Two losses on a Friday. What happened? I said, you talk to Watson without me? Yeah, well, there's there's questions about whether your 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 games are sanctioned or not. <laughs> Un, unsanctioned unsanctioned games taking place. This this is this didn't turn out good at all. Yeah, we've got one. We got one down. Well, I'm fearful Jesse may never win again. There was never a method to it either. Just, oh, it's bad. You hit the skids, man. It's bad. It Hammer, I need tough. you. I need you. To, I need you to pick me up or something. You got to play Casey or something. This is, this is tough to watch. It's tough. Hard, tough. Oh, harsh world. Man. You did beat Kenny while I was away, right? Is that a, is that right? Yeah, I beat, you Kenny beat Kenny last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He lost his mind. Yeah, so I, there's there's a uh, Will Z proof of that. Oh, that's right. Unbelievable. Where Julian is right. These are the vibes me and Casey have been on lately. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Oh, that's, that's my. Bad. It's me. It's me. I got it. Oh, you got it. Here we go. Yeah. yeah I should have, I should have taken care of that. You guys both. Uh, you guys are both about to face Pete. PWL sanctions. <laughs> uh, where are we? Oh. Are X views down again today? Oh, uh, they're they're all right. I mean, I think interest is down more than anything else. I think frustration level is high. Frustration level running high. Mm-hmm. Threat level midnight. Oh, boom. There's the X number. (sighs) 
Did you eat the enchilada? Not yet. I'm going to warm it up after. All right. After the, uh, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get him. What's he What's he got? I forgot. Tagawoo. Ramsey Tag-a-woo. did get defeated today. Where did he play? And he did not get the belt. He was on a four-day a four day bender. What's uh the belt for again? The first texter? The first whoever's the, the first in the in the chatty house. Uh, that yeah. feels like a all time. Like he might have a four hundred and four straight days of being first. Well, yeah, but he was not first today. He mm. was defeated by by Cat. Mm. Oh, stays in the family. It's her birthday. It's a birthday. It's a birthday. <laughs> Talking trash. <laughs> I made some sort of reference that people got. All right. <laughs> oh, I made a threat level midnight reference. Oh, that's a good one. Michael Scarn film. That's the right one. Threat level midnight. Threat level midnight. My son has a movie poster in his in his room. Oh, that's solid. Framed. Okay. James Ham here with us. Talk Kings basketball. Let's get Ramsey real quick, though. 916-909-1320. Ramsey, what's going on, baby? Not too much. Just go, Just wanted to talk real quick about the other major event we got going on this weekend. The Glad speaker Tiger series with Chris Weber? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Masters. Glad, glad Tiger Woods made the cut at the Masters, and I mean he's eight stroke, he's eight shots back, but he's still in contention. But he's one, he's one over par for two days. I mean had a had a rough stretch going back out with twenty three holes today, which I figured he was going to struggle in the morning. Hmm. But he warmed up, shot a one over, or no, shot an even par today. What 72. happened? Did it get dark last night? What happened? Yeah, okay. yeah, they had two and a half hour, they had two and a half hours of rain. To start the day yesterday, so everyone got started two and a half hours late. So he he only was able to play thirteen holes yesterday, played twenty three today, and I mean scratch scratch out of even par. Yeah, good so stuff. was it a rain delay that cost you the belt this morning, oh, Ramsey? Oh, <laughs> oh, talking that talk. Just saying, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, 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 and I do, I do have one quick thing. Can we make it a third pocket watching today with Tiger Woods' career? No. Well, no, that's oh, a lot. No, we're not I doing that. today. Casey can play ham if he wants. We're not bastardizing pocket watching. <laughs> in two in a day. I don't even know how I would find Tiger Woods' career. Now that, that, now that one gets crazy. That would be, yeah, that I, that would be fun, though. $1.3 billion there. <laughs> Man, yes. you know what? You might be pretty damn close. Well, I mean, that would be. That would be I overall have. earnings. Oh yeah, That's this, not just this golf. would be this would be this 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 would be something. Um. Oh, okay, for the okay, you just want to have. A uh, we're fun. not doing it. We're not. You just want to have a little fun. Just a little fun. There ain't nothing on the line. I'm already cooking. What do we I'm do? What are we just a pocket watching show now? Is that all we do now? We're just we're just a little gimmick here. <laughs> like I said, Casey can play hammer. We got things going well, on over well, here. Look, hey. What, what what makes me so funny? Like, what are you talking about? What, what, how am I so funny to you? Like, what is it? The way I talk? Like, what are you talking about? How am I so funny? Oh, I was just saying. Uh, I'm funny to you? Am I a joke to you? No, I was just saying. No. You know. Look at it. I got it. Right, 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 right. You know what's funny right. about that? You ain't even seen that movie before. You only know that scene. That scene cracks me up. Anyone want to take a stab? At Tiger Woods' career earnings from golf, mm. so that's just like winning tournaments, right? Yes. I'll say. I'll okay. say. I'll say. I'll say. This is Seventy-five weird. million dollars. No, it's. Uh, I'm gonna say three seventy-five. You guys are ass. There's no point in even. But this is why you don't bastardize <laughs> the game. Well, there, there, there's a little math involved. The way it's broken down. By the way, these are all estimated career earnings from Spot Track. 
They have him at a hundred and twenty point nine million on official tournaments. So you're like, I'm not that bad. Everybody's sure for him, bro. Then they have that bad. thirteen million from unofficial tournaments. What? That's, That's one forty. Twenty three million from the player index program. One sixty three. I, and then and, and, and it has him at about 157.4 million in tournament winnings. Mm. What's an unofficial tournament? So what's his total? 157.4. Okay. I mean, he's, he's the official over tournaments with the unofficial tournaments in the play. Well, yeah, but that's like, I think he, I think he's clocked at like 700 million from Nike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's a lot. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Dang. I think, yeah, I think he's well over a billion dollars from from Nike, or maybe not well over. I think he's in the billion dollar range from Nike. You talking about what was his? It was Buick was the other one, and he got a couple yeah, other things. yeah. He 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 was. I mean them. I mean endorsements on golf. Mm. Oh my cool. god! So it's crazy. You money. know Birdie, right? Uh, Mike Bird, who who runs the Kings broadcast. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I believe you mentioned him before. Yeah, he. I don't, I don't. I don't know how well I know him, but he was in the truck running the the golf tournament and had a cameraman on the ball uh, when Tiger hit the what was it a chip U.S. Open shot? Yeah, and, where the Nike stop. And he was ready to go somewhere else, and the cameraman goes, "Hang on, wait just one sec. I want to see what happens." And they get the Nike swap shot. Oh, that's tremendous! Yeah, mm. it's one of the great. That's one of the greatest moments in that golf was, history. That was yeah, because they were iconic. they were panning away because they they thought it was coming up short. Yeah, that's mm. one of the great moments ever. Yeah, the Nike swoosh just as it falls in the hole. It'll be a it'll be a far more interesting weekend uh, at the Masters with Tiger involved. At least for me, I know some people don't care, but um, I'll I'll be. I can't say I'm gonna. I have I, obviously we have business to attend to with Chris Weber tomorrow at the Guild Theater. Tickets mm-hmm. available at eventbrite.com. Search Chris Weber. But I'll be paying attention. I when, mean, when we're having our potato salad and cornbread over at Fixins, I'll be yeah, looking to see they, what's going on with they're, Tiger. They're, mm. they're, they'll really get me locked in if he's in some real type of contention on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So that's when I'll be like, oh, okay, let me see what time it is. Let me see what's going on. Well, of course, we'll be at a hopefully very, very loud Golden One Center. Hopefully. Uh, on 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 Sunday. Hammer, uh, did the crowd ever really truly get in last night's game? Yeah. They no, did? no, I thought mm-hmm. they were, yeah. They, there was a moment it, where it got quiet. Um, but there was also, first of all, they started booing in the first half. No. Um, and you know what? I, I think that that's, I mean, for me, I'm perfectly fine. Like people want to boo. I get some people don't like that on the home court, but I also, um, it got crazy loud, especially when even in the fourth, when it was, it was pretty much over, but Keegan started hitting the threes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of feel like maybe that's why Mike Brown did that. Why he left his players on the court, even though the game was pretty much over and you knew you had a back to back. I don't think, I think what he wanted to avoid was, his players getting booed off the court in the final three, four minutes of a game, knowing that they had a game tonight and knowing that he wanted some momentum going into the game. And, and maybe he found it. Maybe Keegan Murray can carry over the five, three pointers in the last like 14 minutes of the game. Um, maybe that's something that you can like, again, getting the crowd to not leave with such a horrible taste and the players not to sense the, the crowd feeling that way. Like, I, I just don't think anyone needed the negativity and, and coming out of it. Uh, you know, you felt bad enough losing the game. You didn't need all of that extra. And I, I kind of feel didn't like need the chicken wings at center court. Oh, yeah. Wow. The chicken wing. See, I, I didn't even get to see what, or hear Kevin Harlan because I, I mean, I saw that the chicken wing land and I, I saw them uh, like guy run out with a towel and swoop mm-hmm. it up, but I didn't actually see. And the moke, like, just a reminder, please don't throw things on the court. <laughs> I believe Kevin said uh, someone would throw a ch- someone threw a chicken wing on the floor. Who would throw a chicken wing on the floor? It's delicious. It's crispy. It's warm. Who would throw a chicken wing? <laughs> I think that was Kevin's lighthearted <laughs> moment. At that point, uh, I was disgusted. Yeah, I was not in the mood to laugh. <laughs> I didn't even see him there last night. I- I'm bummed out because I love Kevin Harlan. Like he's, he's my favorite to listen to and, and he, I, I didn't see him. So I, I thought it was strange 
that I like we weren't in the same like realm with the with the TNT crew and, and I don't remember them being in like Mike's press conference. So yeah, it was just that's normally I see who's gonna be there like a couple of nights earlier it was Mike Fratello. Like we saw him there, the czar. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah I I didn't see Kevin Harlan. Did um did you get a sense last night that and talking to Mike and some of the things that you just said he 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 possibly could have done towards the end of that game that he is he is as a coach is trying to will this team to like two more victories like he is looking at and I respect it and I love it I love that attention to detail that he's he's paying but he's he's like trying to think of every little thing he could do to get this team that's undermanned right now regardless of people want to admit it or say oh they've been inconsistent all year so it wouldn't have been no different no they're undermanned right now um get them across the finish line hopefully in a 7-8 game yeah i mean i, I think mike's general takeaway from from like post game last night is like look they're they're disappointed but they also they understand how important it is that they're in this situation that they're that they're fighting through this situation that they're learning from this situation and i know a lot of people are like what do they have to learn it's like what do you, they have all kinds of things to learn all kinds of things i mean we're watching colby jones go out there and one game he tries his best and and it it looks great another game he tries his best and it's like oh no what just happened um you got keon ellis out there who one night shoots 15 threes the next night shoots like three or four shots like they're learning on the fly we're watching young players who should not be in that situation at all like Keon Ellis was a two-way player until February. Mm-hmm. Like he shouldn't be the starting shooting guard on this team. And at the end of the day, like, look, you accepted the, like, this is the job and you got to go out there and play your best and you got to, you know, try to make a difference and all that stuff. But there's also a certain amount of, you just don't know what you don't know. And he's trying to figure it out. And they're all trying to figure it out on the fly. I think it speaks volumes when we go through the first half and again, you see Colby who, you know, God bless his heart. Like he didn't mean to have the, the three minute stretch that he did, but it was like, it just was a train wreck. And so, but Mike, he had to go to Chris Duarte in the second half. And, you know, one game he's using Kessler Edwards here and there. Another game he's using Sasha. Like he hasn't stopped coaching. They're, they're trying to find the solution. And again, it, it's really tough when one night, you know, even a guy like Trey Lyles, who's still coming back from injury. I mean, people Mm -hmm. need to know that like when Trey Lyles is extremely effective and then two nights later, he's just not the same and they're, they're out there grinding, doing the best they can. Um, but you know, there are reasons why this team is, is failing and there are reasons why they've had this problem all year long. And, uh, you know, uh, those aren't the same reasons why they're failing right now. And, it's partially because of the reasons that, that have been going on all season long, that just the roster isn't quite good enough and the roster doesn't have quite the versatility that you want. Um, but at the same time, that that doesn't mean that this group isn't fighting tooth and nail. I mean, they're, they're 45 wins. You know, I made this point on the insiders earlier with Jesse. Like, people need to remember that the the 1998-99 Kings went, went like 27 and, and 24, or something, or 27 and 25, in the lockout shortened year, the second year of the Kings with Vlade and Peja and Chris Weber and, and Jason Williams and John Barry and all those with Scott Pollard, all those guys, they won 44 win. They had 44 wins and they, they lost two to three in the first round of the playoffs in the second year. And this current team right now in a crazy Western conference, they have 45 wins with two wins, two games left. So, there's no shame in what's happening with the Kings. They hit some adversity. They're trying to fight through it. They've got injuries that maybe you cannot get past. You know, maybe you can't. And, and that's the the situation they're in. Well, it, it feels like um, all of the issues that they've had this season are just kind of manifesting themselves again right now. We, we just talk about three-point defense or – Miss free throws or the offense sputtering. Like we've seen that over the course of the last five days. We, you know, we saw the offense play well last night, but we saw them give up 50, I think it was 50 something percent uh, against the three. Um, I don't think it's as simple as, 
well, Malik's out, everything's falling apart. No. But Malik is out, and I do think it changes some things that teams game plan. Like, I think Frank Vogel and his staff will game plan differently for the Sacramento Kings, knowing Malik Monk is not going to step on the floor. I think it changes the way they guard DeMontis Sabonis, and I think it, it I, I think to a certain degree it changes the way they guard De'Aaron Fox because they know De'Aaron is the only one who can get to the rim and create something. Yeah. And I mean, Davion it's... can, but <laughs> Yusuf Nurkic is going to be right there to, you know, hit the ball over to uh, uh, Lania. <laughs> Lania and Jason, shout out. I think it's, it's like if we, if we're going to sit here, like we're not making excuses for this team. Uh, like I, I keep telling people, uh, like when we're talking about this stuff, I don't feel like we're making excuses for them. Mm-hmm. What we're explaining is that there is a reason why Demonis Sabonis is taking fewer shots and why he's getting fewer wide open looks at the rim, and it's because Malik Monk is the best pick and roll guard in the NBA. Like that's what the advanced numbers say. They, he is the best pick and roll guard in the NBA. He hits the pocket pass as well as anybody. It's one of the reasons why they went after him. And it's, in all honesty, it's the reason why they went after JaVale McGee. Because JaVale McGee is the best lob finisher in the pick and roll in the game. And so, I mean, and I'm not just saying that because JaVale. I mean, it's literally, that's what the stats say. So when you take away some of these elements, like that's a reason it's not an excuse. The Kings don't have a secondary guy like Malik to go out and do the things that Malik does. And Keon Ellis is not that player. It he's not. And and he'll he probably won't ever be that player. And that's okay. But I, I think we were talking about it earlier. We always focus on the fact that the Kings are missing 25 points a night. They're missing 7.7 assists per night too from from Herter and Monk being gone. And it is that secondary playmaker. And and people discredit the fact that Kevin Herter's great in the two man game too. How many times this season did he score or did he set up Domas in the two-man game? Very effective pick-and-roll player. You don't have that with these other young guys, and it's not a knock on Davian. It's just not the style of play. And it's even, that's why they've tried to go to Colby Jones, because Colby Jones has that. I mean, realistically, you know what the next step is? Really, what Mike, I, I, he, I he won't do it, but almost like the next step, and I don't even think it's possible, it's Jordan Ford. Jordan Ford is the other pick and roll guy that you have. The other guy that can work in a two man game, get to the basket and find the guy and make a great pass. Now you're going to have the problem that no one's going to defend Jordan Ford. Well, he's just going to get a layup every time then Uh, Jordan Ford. Number one is hurt. Number two, like you're going to use him two games and then he can't play anymore because he's a two way contract and he hasn't played at the NBA level all season long, pretty much. But that's the problem that you have. If you had anybody else that could, that this is who they naturally are, I think you would be okay, but they don't. And, and again, I, you can't bank on Monk and Herter going down for the season. And, and a, you know, it doesn't matter what depth you have. Most teams in the league can't get past one position, losing two primary guys, both of which have high level passing skills and scoring, shooting, whatever skills. and, you know, maybe it was a different position. Again, Keon Ellis can keep bombing away from three, and that's great. He's just, it's a different style of player that they need right now. They still need Keon, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. But if they're going to have Domas get all these easy buckets at the rim, you got to have somebody who can run the pick and roll. And that's why Mike really... That player's not on the roster right now. He's not. And well, the only guy you have is is Fox. Right. And, and they just don't run the two-man game with him all that much. And for... For my money, that's what I want to see the next two games. Just run the two-man game with those two. I know you want Fox scoring all these points. Does but it eliminate Fox's ability to get downhill when they do that? No, because I, I think Fox has talked about this before, that th- the fact that they're both left-handed mm-hmm. makes things extremely difficult to defend. Because if you get Demonis down in the block, um, a team has to make a decision between allowing Fox to go inside or outside or Sabonis to go outside. So if Sabonis is down in the block, Fox's dominant left hand wants to go around the screen. But if Fox cuts back to the middle with his right, which he can't do, it leaves the the other side open for Sabonis to take the ball and go to his dominant hand with the left. And they just haven't been able to do it all that much. And that's your primary score. 
Like you don't want to take the ball out of Fox's hands all the time. You want him to be creative, but at a certain point, man, I, I need to see it. One of the things that I think I think about, like you talked to Fox about it, he's talked about it more. Um, they know better than I do, but I feel like that that Fox Domas pick and roll because they're both left handed is circumstantial, right? Because it's on a it's at a certain place on the court where that's most effective. It's usually that if we're looking at the court on the right wing is where it's most effective. If you notice where they do a lot of the pick and rolls with Monk and Sabonis, it's at the top of the key or coming off that left wing, and it works perfect because you got Malik going downhill on his dominant hand to finish with the right. But if he dumps it off, he gets that pocket pass to Sabonis where he can get it finished with his dominant hand on the left. When you have Fox and Sabonis, somebody's going to be off their dominant hand. You know what I mean? Because they're both left-handed. So if you've got Fox going, using the uh, screen, going to his left, if he makes the pocket pass, it's going to be Saponis gathering, finishing with his offhand, his right. If you get it the other way, Fox is going downhill with the ball in his right hand, and he passed. You know what I mean? So I, it's just my guess. These guys are great players. They could figure it out anyway. But it's my guess. It's not as natural as it's, it's like a dual threat with both of these guys being in their best – position to score as when monk and sabonis are running that pick and roll no i, I think you're right um I, I but there are variants off of that you know like again if sabonis sets up either at the free throw line or even gets like two steps down and, and he's closer to the basket and and it's fox who's feeding him right there there's like so many elements that you can play off of that and and to be honest like i think one of the things that we saw like reappear magically out of nowhere was when the the opposition starts closing in on Sabonis. Sabonis started finding Harrison Barnes underneath the basket for wide open looks. It's something we saw last year. You guys remember the game where they ran the same play like seven consecutive times and it was just like right over the top to Harrison Barnes for a layup. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, wow, look at well, it's like they pulled it out again out of out of the playbook. Hey, we forgot about this one. And there it is. You're like, where has that been? Uh, and for that matter, like Harrison Barnes, I, I we might need to see more of the two man game with Harrison. Harrison in the past has averaged three, three and a half assists a game at like this height. The one year where all they had was De'Aaron, Buddy, and Harrison, uh, where Buddy and and Harrison both were like pushing four assists per game like the whole time. So it's possible that Harrison's that guy, but he had played so poorly over the previous four or five games that. I don't think anyone thought anything was going to happen with him. And all of a sudden he pops up and just has like a, a throwback game where I thought he was excellent. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like we, you got to, we have to see that tonight and you got to see it on Sunday. And then you got to see it, whatever, whoever you're playing next week, you got to see it again a couple of times. And then who knows, you know, if they make the playoffs or not, if they do, it's got to be that Harrison Barnes that we saw last night again and again and again. Where do you think they're at? I know De'Aaron said last night um, they don't have their head down. They know it's they know the task at hand. Do you believe him? Yeah, I mean, because it wasn't just like we know the task at hand. It was like he was honest about like we don't want to be the team at the bottom that has to win two games to mm -hmm. get in. Mm -hmm. We want to be a team at the top that you have you have to win one out of two to get in. Yeah. And you want to win the first one, but you need to win one out of two to get in, and that's it. If you're at the bottom, you have to win two to get in. And so, yeah, I think that he understands like where they're at. And even Keegan said the same thing. Like, I, I think uh, I think it was Jason Anderson asked about uh, Keegan, like if they kind of if they're watching him, they know where they're at. They're having these discussions, and he's like. Yes, we know exactly where we are. We know exactly where we are in the standings and we know what's at stake. And we're hoping that, you know, we can come through and have a big night. Like that's like he he they all know. So and look, they're frustrated. Like we talked about this before. There was these two eight game stretches. There was the first eight games, and I kept saying you gotta go, you gotta go eight, eight and oh, or seven and one, or worst case six and two, and they don't, they go five and three. And then there's the second eight. And there were only two games in that second eight that you just like circled and said, okay, that's a win. Brooklyn and, and the Blazers. We're at the point where 
it's very possible they're going to go two and six in that stretch. And it will be Brooklyn and the Blazers that they beat. And that's because, like, man, the schedule's tough. Like, back-to-back New York and and Boston, a back-to-back Pelicans and and Phoenix, a 3,000-mile road trip in this two weeks left in the season. Like, what in the world was the NBA trying to do here? And everyone's facing it, right? Everyone's got a tough schedule, but that schedule in particular, you know, if you get the one injury and you're more prone to have injuries, I would even look, you know, we had the five games and seven nights that they had. Like, are the injuries right there with the five games and seven nights? I think they are. Like, that's when Malik gets hurt. That's when when Kevin gets hurt. It's right around the stretch where you're exhausted. And that's when bad things happen. So stay away from flopping ass Luca and just tumbling all on your knee. Oh, I think Luca flopped there. Yes. He didn't have to fall like that. Yeah. Okay. That, the, and, the, and people, when I tweeted that out, they're like, oh, you clearly see three fouls. I'm not talking about the foul was fake. Like, you know, somebody got him on his wrist, but the whole falling down. Like, yeah. Stop, bro. Stop. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Honestly, just thought he fell. <laughs> no, is, I did. I think because I think he's clumsy. I, don't I think, think that, he, he's a world class athlete. He's, no, he's absolutely that, a world class athlete. Because he always falling like that. He is a there's. If I can stay on my feet, he can stay on his feet. There was not enough contact for him. But I don't think it was the contact. The I think it, I'm not trying to like cap for Luca here. Like I don't think it was the contact. I think it was just the step. I, th- yeah. I think that's all it was, but it it doesn't matter. He he hurt Malik, so the hell with him. It was his one final f you to Sacramento. Okay, so, so hell with just so, uh, what game did who who fouled uh, Kevin Herter and hurt him? Desmond. Oh, Bain. that was Desmond Bain. That's right at the beginning. The uh, so the Kings played March twentieth and twenty first. Um, they flew from Washington to Orlando and played on the twenty third. They flew from Orlando back home and then played Philadelphia. And Dallas, uh, uh, the next game is when Malik hurts himself. Again, like it's a five game and seven night stretch. He gets hurt right afterwards. Like again, the exhaustion of these players are at no, the he end. He didn't hurt himself. Well, Malik, uh, Luca dropped the people's elbow on him. He did. He did <laughs> drop the people's elbow. <laughs> yeah, whether it was like accidental or not. Figure four. Yeah. yeah. This is Gilbert asked a good question that we haven't talked about. Did y'all see Charles uh, take a bump last night? <laughs> Charles, that was pretty good. Charles Charles took a bump. <laughs> James, you didn't see it. I didn't this. see it. It was uh in really they were talk, they were showing Zion. Zion goes down and as he going as he's falling, he puts his hands down. And Charles is like, You can't, you're too big. You 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 have to fall on your butt. Like you can't put your hands down to protect yourself. They used to teach us how to fall. And Shaq goes, No, they didn't. They did not teach you how to fall. And he goes, Yes, they did. And, and Shaq said, Go fall. So Charles gets up, he walks around, and he, he does it in slow motion, but he takes a bump to his ass <laughs> yeah. with well, no hands. Like, he goes down, and he turns, and he takes a bump to his butt. This you is how he's supposed to fall. And Kenny tried to do it twice and couldn't do it. He kept stopping himself with his hands. You don't want the snowboarder uh, injury. That's what that is, the reaching back and snapping your wrists, like hitting the ground the wrong way. I always felt that was easier said than done. Yeah. Like, well, it's instinctual. Charles, yeah. It's instinctual to put your hands down. Charles moved very slow in his <laughs> on his way to the ground. He took a very controlled bump, like when Kane choke slam Linda McMahon. It was very controlled. That's that's what Charles <laughs> did last night. Wrestling. Yeah, Always. they teach you to land on your butt, but also to keep your neck up so you don't bounce your head off. So, the floor. and that's what and Shaq said. Well, I, don't, I don't care about my. my and head. that's what Charles said. Well, I don't care about your head. Like, okay, Charles. <laughs> Chuck, fall on that big old ass. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> the best part, my favorite part, was Kenny trying to do it. I, I miss Kenny trying to do it. Kenny tried to do it twice, and both times. Ernie was like, you put your hands down. <laughs> Kenny couldn't take the bump. Yeah. There you go, Chuck. Fall on that big old ass. Plus, I don't think Chuck really has a neck, so he doesn't have to worry about snapping his head back. And you know, he's not like Roy Hibbert out there, like holy. And yeah, fuck. Sha- I think it was Shaq that said that, or Ernie said that. Yeah, phone yeah, your butt, keep your head up. I don't care about my head. I don't care about my head. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, yeah. It look. Someone mentioned Scuba mentions. Are we? Uh, are we saying Luca did that on purpose? No, we're saying Luca. Luca flopped on purpose, 
The fact that he injured Monk was that yeah, wasn't he intentional. Went, he wasn't trying to hurt Monk, but his reckless flopping got somebody. Yes, hurt. yes. That's I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Stay on your feet. I mean, how many times have I said like Chris Paul's gotta stop because he's gonna hurt somebody? Like when he flops on a three point attempt, he flops and then gets sideways and laying there on the ground and people are <laughs> tripping over him. And the same with Steph. Steph <laughs> does the like the kick out and then the fall back, and he's like he looks like he's falling off a cliff backwards, and you're like, hey, bro, you're going to hurt somebody. Like, where is somebody supposed to land while you're sprawling out, everybody? Just, like, be yeah. natural. I think One you guys are being a little weak. No. I'm, 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 yeah. He went up for a layup, and he just didn't have his feet below, underneath him. Like, I don't oh. think he flopped. Okay. He could, All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. He could have stayed on his feet. He could have stayed on his feet. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a radio tripped. show host. I, like, no, it, he's in the air. What I'm saying is he he's he's in the air. He he doesn't have his feet underneath him. I don't think who, he fell on purpose. Who goes off the ground and doesn't have their feet under him? Well, that's where because he he runs into Malik. He's running into Malik. But so so look, if Malik's not there, he's just gonna fall on his knees. No, I don't. I think if Malik's not there, he's not falling. <laughs> There's. There's a place for him to put his foot down. He, and also, it's he, not like it's not like he was uh, seven feet off the ground. He took a little Luca hop. <laughs> Your feet are right there. You're not you're not even like suspended in air. Your feet are right there. Just take the step. Land I think, on your feet. I think that if that's anyone other than Luca Doncic, no one's saying anything. Mm. Oh my god, that's not true. They okay, all, they all do all it. Right. Luca's not. It's not exclusive to Luca. I will say that they all do it. I guess I'm feet. just a clumsy ass because I, I i i don't know it, it, it doesn't matter you would have stayed on your feet well i'm a physical specimen i was just playing <laughs> into the are bit but so yeah, and you're in much better shape than luca is let's <laughs> well, be honest well Plus, there's no question <laughs> I'll, there. I'll, 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 well. I'll, I'll trade my shape for luca's bank account <laughs> yeah we can do that we can do a little swap swap here <laughs> that's fine but... <laughs> um all right what do you think about th tonight you think they know. got one in them? That's that's been the we've I been do. talking about that for. for do do oh, they that's a have a question? Do they have one in them? Oh, do they yeah. have more than one? Yeah. In them? No, I, well, I do think that this they just feels like it. right now. I mean, just get ahead of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I got it. Yeah. Settle down. I got it. Let me do my job. I've had a bad day. Let me have this. Let me have this. Oh, hey, that was wild, bro. <laughs> I, wanted, I just after, wanted to be clear. We heard it. It's after two thirty. We too, heard boy. it. We started to the oh. second grade, man. That's wild. No, that was a wild one. I didn't go live. Wow. Oh, Jesse. How, Jesse uh, back there. <laughs> Let me have this. Hey, have Jesse more was than one. <laughs> to answer the question, yes, I do think they have one in them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think that like I I've watched like they are fighting they they're trying their best yeah and like it, this is a really tough adjustment to get through I don't think they have the pieces to to make it I mean you could have reinvented who you were and try to change some offensive sets and do some things but mm. there's no time look at their schedule over the last two weeks three weeks since Malik's been out like there's no time to reinvent who you are and make some massive adjustment to hide the fact that you only have one like true playmaker. You don't. And hey, let's be honest. I, I know it might have been by design, but OKC, they got 58 three-point attempts and like like 42 of them were wide open. Mm. Like they're they're still creating mm. the shots. They're still getting the shots. What they're not getting is the 60% at the rim shot. And that's the one that that realistically you got to figure out no i mean i'm with you that's that's something that i've always looked at you know all season is it, even in the slumps and in the bad games are you still able to generate is the offense working the way it's supposed to be and it seems like it is they just got to hit it but uh <laughs> there's just no versatility in the offense so no, no, he is no, so no, fed up no, with you no, he is no, so no, no. sick of you my favorite part was the no sell Come on, what is happening? <laughs> my my question to you: Home man. stretch, baby. Home stretch <laughs> of the show. Home I stretch. I feel like you've the been season. there before, huh? 
my question to you, Chainsaw, is do you, because because I'm, I'm hopeful, but I got to I gotta keep it real. I'm not 100% like, yeah, for sure they're going to do this. Can they get two wins? Because now they're going to need two wins. Like they're going to, and I'm not counting the Blazers game. I'm talking about, are they going to be able to win tonight? And then are they going to be able to win a play-in with this group? Yeah, I mean, I think they can. I think they can rise to an occasion. I also think that they could really use, I don't know what day the play-in is scheduled for, if it's Wednesday or Thursday. They're, if they're 7-8, they're going on Tuesday. It's that quick? Yeah, if they're 7-8, it's Tuesday. 9-10 is Wednesday, and the the final game is on Friday. So if you lose, if you get 7-8 and you lose, you got an extra day. But let's, not, let's hope you don't lose. Huh. Well, okay. let's hope you're 7 or 8. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, look, I would have wished that they would have a little bit more time to to prep because they do. I don't know how far out Malik is. Um, again, the team told us four weeks at, when he got hurt and we're nowhere near four weeks at this point. But like we had we had Chris Peterman on earlier this week on the insiders and like his conversation with Malik when he was on. He said, look, the dude's working out like crazy. Like he's trying to get back like as quickly as possible. But, and I keep saying this, Malik needs to do what's best for him. Like he's a free agent. And like, like at the end of the day, it, it's his body, it's his money. It's, it's, you know, his family that's going to be long-term set. And if he's not a hundred percent, like I have a really tough time telling him to go back because it's a knee. Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't I, Yeah. I, I, I I haven't lost all faith in who they are and what they do and whether they can beat somebody because it's not like Phoenix is, has just blown anybody away. I mean, this is the same team that was down like 37 to 10 after one quarter, like two games ago. And also they were down like 53 to 13 or something. It was something ridiculous. They struggled in the game that they won against the Clippers where nobody played. Yeah. They almost lost to bones Highland by himself. So also, best player. Well, I think Russ might have played too. But those were like two best players on the floor. Yeah. It was 15, 15, and 15 in that game. Wasn't that was it? a triple double game. For yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll come back. Um, home stretch here. We'll get you ready for the Kings and the Suns, man. No rest. Right back at it tonight. Big game tonight, man. Big game. You can bring the vibes back. Yeah. Or not. Uh, but you can bring the vibes back with a, with a, with a victory tonight. Um, and then, you know, we'll start worrying about the trailblazers right now. It's all about Phoenix. So, uh, we'll talk more about the Sacramento Kings, uh, the playoffs, the play in, uh, in the Phoenix Suns tonight at the golden one center. And do and Casey return here on Sacramento sports leader ESPN 1320. Somebody mentioned in the chat, Devon is taking uh, more shots from outside. Oh, J Cliff. J Cliff, what up? Okay. Horse One, two, Cliff. three, Horse four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sabonis hasn't hit a three point shot in 10 games. He's only taking taken five over that, but it goes further than that if I keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 18 over his last 18 games, he's only hit two total. And like, look, I, I think part of that is he's he just doesn't have his legs. Hmm. Shooting 15% uh, from three over his last 18 games, but it's only on 0. 0.7 attempts per game. So he's probably at like 14 attempts over that stretch. He's just not taking them. And you know, stuff. <laughs> is that what you is it lazy? Is that what you just sent me? <laughs> this is a this is a this is an old this is an old clip, Lizzie. Uh oh, you got chatty house. Lizzie, uh -oh. what you doing? <laughs> Lizzie, this is old. <laughs> Take a lap. Lazy. Take a lap, Lizzie. Touch the fence and back. <laughs> Lizzie, 
What you doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. You guys are wild. Oh, boy, Lanny was out there with AI. Who was? Lane, uh, actively Black. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To see AI's tiny little statue. His little yeah. tiny man statue. You really got to do a better job. They they said, though, uh, I think Dave McMenamin tweeted it out. He said that they have a whole area and all the statues are around that side. Yeah, they all yeah. look bad. Well, why are the statues not by the arena, too? They're by Camden There's... Yards, aren't they? Isn't that what he said? No, they're Something by the like No, it looks they're, like they're it's they're out. Practice facility, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think the practice facility. I think I got Matt Pearson um, tweeted us about it. That's weird. Man, this man told the truth. Who's that? J. Cole. He said, might delete later. They took seven-minute drill off of, off of the streaming platforms. Mm. Well, the, well, another one for for the uh, JBP. They said they weren't doing that until after the first week sales came in. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> hey, J. Cliff, uh, Mike talked about this yesterday. He said that he, in pregame, he said um, – it's just that we rely on uh, on Fox as a scorer all the time, and that's why you're not seeing a lot of that. They need someone else doing that. And, and, and I mean, you can do both, where they're both doing it, where where you're you're allowing Fox to be a scorer, but you're also doing the two man game. But you only got so many shots there. <clears throat> they have to have somebody else step up. We talked about Kevin Herter. Did you guys listen to that? I didn't. Li I didn't hear Kevin Herter. No, I saw that he spoke. We, I think I was oh, on yes. my way home. Yeah, I didn't hear it though. Yeah, we can talk about it on the air. Okay. We played a clip of it earlier. Oh, it's up to you. I don't care. Herter, yeah, you can pull it up. Up yeah, to yeah. Dame. You can pull it up. Herter sneaky also is uh, uh, really good at getting two point shots. So everybody talking about like just shooting threes and stuff like that. Like her to get to that mid range. Get a he was like, like he was in the top ten and two point field goal percentage last year. Like just wildly efficient around the rim. And it always looked awkward, but it goes in. Okay, so Kevin Herter shot 60.4% from two last year. He was 20th in the league at the end of the season. That's fine. It's crazy. Lucas averaging 33.9 a game. Fox is eighth in the league in scoring right now. Uh, let's uh, hear from Kevin Herter. Uh, James mentioned this during the uh, commercial break. I actually haven't had a chance to hear this uh, yet. I know you guys... Uh, we're speaking to him um, yesterday before the game. Uh, so uh, let's hear uh, from our man, Kevin Herter. Yeah, I don't think you should get used to slam. So I would, I would rather not. Just what, what do you overall what kind of goes to your mind having this operation and kind of not being able to be here? Yeah, uh, timing obviously sucks. Uh, no other way to put it, but. Uh, successful operation. It's, uh, so I hate this do. sound, so let's no, just get rid of that. <laughs> uh, uh, that because, no, no, it's not too bad. We just to, can't whether... hear uh, Sean in, 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 in the question, so I'd rather just go to you and ask you what were your takeaways from your conversation with Kevin Herter. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, Kevin said uh, that he hurt his, his shoulder originally when he was young, when he was like 11 or 12 playing football. 
Um, but then he heard it again a couple of years ago playing for Denver. And uh, and since then, he knew he had an issue then, but it wasn't to the point where he had to have surgery. This time around, when when he heard it, I mean, clearly the tear in his labrum like had gotten bigger. And basically they said, look, they had a couple of doctors look at it. They're, they're like, look, you're going to have a repeated issue here. Your shoulder is going to pop out now. And every time your shoulder pops out, uh, not only are, are you going to have to deal with like how long the recovery is every time, but on top of that, it can start to do other things. So as of right now, like there is no other damage in there. We're going to go in, we're going to, you know, sew this, the, the tear back up and then, and put some, like they drill a couple of holes and put some pins in to hold the, the labrum in place inside the shoulder. Um, but he said like, look, if, if I had a really bad dislocation, I could ship a bone, I could tear the rotator cuff, I could do other damage in there and then never be the same. Mm -hmm. He's like, so it came down to like, at what point do you have to have a surgery? And I kind of get the, like, we asked him pretty point blank, like, did you have to have the surgery? And I think the answer was, well, not today, but it would have had to have happened before he was like a hundred percent comfortable going back out on the court. And so I don't think that what they could have done was like patched him up until he could get to a point where he could play and then go out there and play until the season's over and then have the surgery. Because again, the way that his shoulder is at this point, he was very susceptible to having it pop out again because the terror had gotten bigger. And if he, if that would have happened, there is a very good chance that he would have had, uh, you know, potential other damage and longer term damage and even permanent damage that, you know, could have changed like the trajectory of his career. Jeez. He felt bad. I mean, he feels bad. Like he wants to be out there with his teammates and like, he knows like this is a bad situation. And, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of like what we talk about with Malik, what I talk about all the time with Malik. Like at some point as a player, you have to sure he's under contract for two years, but you got to worry about the six year or eight years after that in the mm -hmm. league. Yeah. And, and you need to do what's best for, for your body and make sure that you're okay. Even if that does like short term hurt the team. And, you know, again, the Kings will make a decision on what Kevin Herter is to this team going forward in the off season, whether the shoulder was there or not, there was already, you know, like we've kind of got to the point where you have to make a decision on what you're going to do with him. And, uh, like this may have, uh, like, there's no hard feelings or anything there. So this is what, like the doctor said was the best like treatment for him. And okay. Like, that's what we do. Like, it's not like he went outside the bubble of the Kings and, you know, they know what the, the Kings knew who he was going to see. They they made phone calls. They helped him get wherever he had to go. And in the end, this was the right answer for, for him and his career. Just gut What's wrong with that? Gut feeling. You think mm -hmm. he played his last game as a King? Um, <clears throat> Yeah. I, I, I mean, do. like, I, I think that, that that's a good chance that he's played his last game. Um, I'll say this, like this offseason... I would be surprised now. Maybe I'm way off here because maybe there's no way they can do this, but I would be surprised if, if both he and Harrison were back, like not, I mean, one or the other, I think probably won't be back. And I could see Kevin playing more small forward moving forward. I could see, uh, you know, because I do think that you need to address a couple of positions here. There's no question about that. The Kings have to find a way to get, more length and athleticism at the at at the two, the three, the four, all of those positions, and um, the easiest way to do it is with guys that are considered good NBA players, have a skill set that is marketable and works for other NBA teams, but just might not be the right fit for your team. And you know, I'll keep going back to you know the fact that the Kings traded Jason Williams for Mike Bibby, and I I would make the the claim all day long that I think. Jason Williams was always a better player than Mike Bibby, but he wasn't a better fit for the Kings. And Mike Bibby made the Kings a better team. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like, like there, there are going to be positions on this team. The team that made the playoffs the first year and the second year will not be the team that made the third and fourth years. 
That's never the way it goes in the NBA. Very rarely do you see one team stay the course with one group of players, and it's just those guys. And uh, and so that means you've got to make changes at some positions, and it's not going to be a point guard, it's not going to be at center, and it's not going to be at the forward position, whichever one Keegan Murray's playing. It's going to be at the other positions. I think um, one thing that we've learned, well, I feel like I've learned this year, and I don't know how the organization feels, is I think Keegan Murray is his most dynamic and most impactful being a, a four, a stretch four. Mm. I think he he showed a lot of ability to be able to move and do some stuff at the small forward position, and he can go there in a crunch or in certain matchups or if you if you want a certain defensive matchup, but uh, especially offensively, I think he's he's more of a matchup problem being a four with how he can shoot the ball. And I only say that to say they should be whether it's Kevin or something like that, they should be looking to fill that small forward spot um, with somebody a little bit more traditional, uh, small forward, like a little bit more athletic, um, explosive, or you can go three guard, you know, and, and do it that way. And mm. I, I don't know how you want to go, but I think that's one thing that I feel like I learned this year in his second season and seeing growth in him. He's, he's gotten better. I, he's, he's surprised me um, with the way he can move and the way he can defend and, You'd even handle the ball sometimes, but I still think he'd be best used at the, at the, at the four as a stretch four. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, for me, like, look, what we've seen from him defensively tells me that he can defend twos, threes, fours without any problem. And so for me, when it comes to the modern NBA and offensive versatility, like the three and the four are almost identical in most situations. And it's who can you defend? And like at this point, I don't think Harrison Barnes can defend. Uh, I, I mean, he certainly, I'm never going to put Harrison Barnes on Steph Curry, which is something the Kings were able to do um, with, uh, with Keegan. And I don't even think there are a lot of twos that you can put Harrison Barnes on at this point. And so I kind of feel like Her uh, that, that Keegan is still like your wild card. Like, look, in some crazy world where you're able to find two like super athletic six foot eight, six foot nine, long, crazy three and D threes and fours, I would be comfortable putting Keegan at the two at six eight. I don't care. I think he can play it. I think he can play just about any position on the floor. Um, I will say, like, hat tip to Harrison Barnes and this against uh, New Orleans, but they they shifted Valanciunas. They they had. Sabonis so defend Zion uh, early in the game, and and Harrison defend Valanciunas, and I thought he did a really good job. Like he he's out there and just got abused by a gigantic like seven foot one, two hundred and eighty pound man, um, but like held his own, like sat there and fought. So I I think the the versatility of Keegan still to me is like the big key to this team because the fact that he can play the the two three four allows you to go out and, and attack the roster in a couple of different ways. Do you think Casey Herders played his last game as a king? See, I, I, I hear what James is saying a little bit, but I don't think if he's played his last game as a king, I think Harrison Barnes has too, because I think that's the move you make. They're getting traded together. Yeah. That's what I think. I don't, I don't think whatever he, I don't feel like whatever you would get back for just one of them would be like a, a major upgrade. Mm -hmm. Well, know? yeah, but remember that you've got Chris Duarte on a six million dollar expiring contract. You got Davion Mitchell on a six million dollar expiring contract. You got Trey Lyles on an eight million dollar expiring contract. You got Sasha Vazenkov on a seven million dollar uh, expiring contract with a team option for the next year. Like the the get Trey out of your thinking. Well, the financial like flexibility of this team going into this off season is pretty cool. Like, because that was what they had the problem with going into like draft night last year, after you had uh Rashawn Holmes's deal, the Kings didn't have anyone else under contract. Like they couldn't have traded Harrison Barnes. He wasn't under contract. So they had all of this like weirdness and they've had that a couple of times, but this time you got a bunch of movable pieces. So, so again, if somebody says, hey, I got a $34 million, $36 million player, 
you can start doing quick math and you're like, okay, I could take 18 million of, of Harrison Barnes, add in 6 million of, um, of Chris Duarte, add in another 6 million Davion. Next thing you know, I'm at tw uh, 30 million bucks and that's within the 25%. So what I think the secondary question is like, will you have your picks? Will you have the the draft capital to go out and do something substantial? Because while I think, you know, you could see Kevin and and Harrison going somewhere else, mm -hmm. even if it is as a package, because that right there is right right away you're at 36 million bucks and 36 million bucks plus or minus 25%, you can get all the way up to like a $42 million player. Mm -hmm. And then you still have the sure. Davion or like these other guys that you can throw in, right? So I, I think that, that that does make sense. But the question is, what is the value of those guys? And if all you have to offer is a, a 20, a possibility of a 27 or a 28, 29, 30, 31 draft pick, but every other year type deal, that's just not a lot of draft capital. Paul George sign and trade. <laughs> you got to have him want to come here and you got to have the Lakers want something that you have. Well, I mean, Clippers, Clippers, Clippers sorry. Well, the Clippers will lose them. The my argument with that all the time would be you're losing them for nothing if you let them walk. You can at least get some players back. Yeah, I, I would also like one of the problems that you have with sign in trades is sign in trades hard cap your team, and so they become extremely difficult to do. They're not as they, I think they used to be a lot more regular. Yeah, they're not yeah. anymore uh -huh. because of of that. It hard caps you. Don't I also, kill my dreams, bro. It's because it's a dream. <laughs> I really yeah. do think but it's a dream. And I think anytime you know who else fits in there. Zach Levine. No. Zach Levine, if we, they had the, if the Kings had Zach Levine right now, they'd be in a much better spot than what they are. Because they wouldn't be because Zach Levine's not well, playing right now. He's not playing. But if he's he'd be with Malik. They'd be really well dressed on the sideline, but yes. he'd be with Malik. If if he if he's healthy and playing, they'd be in a, they need another shot creator. They, even if they bring Malik Monk back next year, they can't be in this situation again. Where if one player goes down, Fox or Monk, heaven forget, bid both of them, that they just nobody else can get to the bucket, nobody else can create. Like they need another shot creator in a bad way. I agree with you, but you don't need a fifty million dollar shot creator. What you can do with that situation is again, like not to like single one guy out, but. Like if Davion's not that guy, you can back up your point guard position with a guy who's a more natural shot creator for others. Like that's something you can do. You can find another shooting guard that's a like a better version of what Chris Duarte was supposed to be. But again, at like the eight to ten million dollar range. If the Kings, let's just say again, they're somehow able to get Malik Monk to come back, right? At the seventeen point four million. The Kings at that moment, before they do any of these trades that we talk about, these potential, like what would they do with this or that? They would also still have a $13 million, $12 million mid-level exception. And that can get you a, a quality rotational player at the NBA level. Like again, what you did with Malik Monk, you know, there, there's a possibility there that you could go get that type of player in that situation. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think you can take a big improvement. But at the same time, I don't know that this team's going to pay the luxury tax if they're not guaranteed a really good team. And that would mean you need to clear out some of the other space. That luxury tax question is an interesting one because obviously you don't, you, Vivek, Monty, they don't want the team in the luxury tax position. They don't want this team in this position, in the luxury tax position. But where do they have to be? Like, are we talking legitimate title? Are we talking Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Denver? Like, they need to be in that range, which right now I think those guys are hovering around 55, 56 wins. Is well, that the type of team that Monty has to look at? This is a 55-win team. This is a team that can represent the Western Conference. Uh, I, I keep saying Monty. Really, it's Vivek's decision. All right, we'll go into the luxury tax for this group. Well, I think that that's always a possibility. And and look, I know Vivek is not, I mean, the Kings are around 20th, 21, 22 in, in NBA payroll right now, right? And they have been, they haven't been a luxury tax team the whole time. The key to being a luxury tax team is that when you take that next leap and you have to pay it, but you also have to have vision for what's ahead. 
So people want them to just go out and spend, spend, spend. You have to understand that De'Aaron Fox's contract is, is it like 36 or 38 million? Well, there's another contract that's coming that is the Jalen Brown contract that goes up to like 60 to 70 million. There's a Keegan Murray contract that you got two more years of cheap Keegan. And after that, it's astronomical Keegan. And so you have to, you have to be a little bit constrained with how you, you handle this. It's like, you just can't go out and do like what the Niners do. They, they bring in one big name guy after another, and then they, they rework their contract after a year. That's not how the NBA works. Mm -hmm. So in order to get that, uh, that big dollar player, I mean, it's going to be tough. You, you would need to like the next step would be to trade like two or three of these pieces for, for either one big piece or, or break it up in a different way. You know, again, I don't know that this team with a $40 million Sabonis, a $30 million Kagan, a $50 million De'Aaron, and, you know, a $20 million Malik, like they're, the salary cap is going to go up for sure. And the new TV deal will make some of this like a moot point. But in the meantime, you can't guarantee that. And you have to be, you have to be fiscally responsible. And that's, you know, again, whatever it was, if Vlade did good or bad, the one good thing is he always had Ken Catanella by his side doing these crazy two year deals with third year option or one year deal with second year option. They always had an out clause. They always had a way to make sure that they hadn't like put a stranglehold on themselves. And that's, you got to be that way. Yeah. I think the Kings have been fiscally responsible and it's just, how do you, how do you build out the team? How do you take the next step without just completely hamstringing yourself? And we see Glenn Taylor is claiming that he's pulling out of the deal with a rod and, and the other owner in Minnesota, because he said they had, they submitted a budget to him. that had them dropping the, the Timberwolves payroll to 171 million below this, the luxury tax. And he said, Hey man, look, that's not, we've been waiting forever for this team to win. We finally got a winner. I'm not letting you do that. Damn it. Who, who told him that? Well, could have got Nas Reed or McDaniels or something. Yeah. Damn. See? Well, I also think it's really interesting that report dropped like, yeah, yeah. it dropped at a really interesting time. I agree. That was our, that was I agree. Our but, man. but look at Minnesota's salary and you can mm -hmm. kind of look at the King salary and understand where this thing is going and how much trouble they're going to be in because they've got Anthony Edwards about to hit the lottery too. And then what do you do when you've got Gobert and you've got cat and you've, you've already paid Jalen, uh, um, McDaniels, uh, like 20 plus million a year. You've, you got Nas right, Reed uh, at 16 or 18 million bucks a year. You're starting to look at that and go, okay, like, how are you going to manage this? And what happens with Mike Connolly when he goes away? Like who are you going to have play point guard? Like it's, it's tough to stay at the top and without paying astronomical, like the $186 million, the, the golden state warriors are playing, paying in uh, luxury tax this season. What are we talking about Monday? Man, that's such a good question. I mean, seriously. Um, well, first of all, we're talking about how we're giving away $500 every day. <laughs> James. Amen. Come on, man. We're going to give away uh, $500 in monies. In every, monies, yes. Monies every in single dough. day. And dough. And dough. And cashola. Yeah. Oh, can I say that? I don't know if you, that was, that was a little too, chill, 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 a little too chill. close. Yeah. Uh, too so close. we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to have two more uh, Jiffy Loop fast break players of the game to give away very good hundred dollar gift certificates yeah. and no, uh, get your stuff off get all your stuff off and, yeah. and, a, no, and a jersey yeah we're gonna talk about all that but uh hey look man i, I really do hope we're talking about how somebody's got to fill in for james on tuesday because he's got to fly somewhere to go catch oh, a game man and I hope uh not. Well, I hope well, you're gonna be right here yeah that that's well, possible that, 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 that's, that's hey, possible. go that's go t wolves right go oh yeah because yeah, yeah. we're, we're only talking about phoenix yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Kings got to get one tonight, and then it's go Minnesota. Who, if Minnesota beats Atlanta tonight, I gotta imagine that game is gonna be for something. Oh yeah, that game. I mean, on especially Sunday? with all of them being at twelve thirty, like they're not gonna they're not gonna know what Oklahoma City did. They're not gonna know right. what Denver did. Right. I think Denver, by the way, plays. D Denver's <laughs> Denver. I, I feel like Denver was one of the teams too that had like a, a pretty. Like the, you see yeah, who the Lakers play. Matchup. You see who the Lakers play tonight. The oh tonight. Yeah. Who's tonight? They play Memphis, and Memphis has 13 players out. 
Well, they play the Pelicans on Sunday. Yeah. No, that's going to be a battle royale. Well, it is. maybe not because the mm-hmm. Pelicans may have just secured their spot. And that would mean that the Warriors kind of got out the way too, if that happened. Mm. Yeah, because right, because the Pelicans play the Warriors tonight. Yeah, not completely out of the way, but you you got them pushed back. Uh, who bit. were we looking at? Denver. Denver was who we were looking at. They got Denver. Utah Wild. and no, Denver has uh, San Antonio mm. tonight in Me- Memphis. Oh my gosh! Why Both is- on the road though. Both on the road. Why is Memphis still in the league at this point? Hey, <laughs> that's these a team- lot. Well, don't get Portland out of the league. Keep them. Hey, in. Portland's a good basketball <laughs> team, man. They're just. They're just fighting. Oklahoma City closes out with Milwaukee and Dallas. Dallas is kind of chilling. Yeah. They're still trying to get home court. Mm. Trying to get Clippers. Home court. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we're talking about um seven eight matchup. Okay. okay. A- at home or away? Um away. Away, because they need Phoenix to lose twice to get Phoenix home, has right? to lose twice. Yeah, but Phoenix plays Minnesota on Sunday. That's the that's that's the other thing. You beat them tonight, you got a shot. Look, I hope you're I hope you're say, right. I hope right, we're talking I'm a, seven eight. I'm not gonna get too greedy. I'm gonna say away. I'm hoping seven eight too. Let's just uh, I just hope we're talking seven eight. That's it. Um either way, we'll be talking Kings. Uh we'll be doing it tomorrow with Chris Weber too at the Guild Theater. Eventbrite.com. Search uh Chris Weber. Come through, use the promo code ESPN1320 to get a discount on your tickets. Still a few $25 tickets available. Uh, if you don't want the book, you don't want the meet and the greet, you don't want all that stuff, just come through uh, and hear one of Sacramento's greats, Chris Weber, speak at the Guild Theater with Dilo and Casey uh, tomorrow. And we will see you here Monday at 10 a.m., beginning with the Insiders on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Vamos Kings, light the beam. <sighs> Thanks, everybody. It's been a long week. Thanks for hanging out. Well, 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 where are the tacos at? What you mean? Where do where 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 are the tacos? What? What? Yeah, we're not do that. What you talking about? I thought that I thought the tacos was out there. Damn, and don't do that to Jesse. That's wait. That's, you have to. You said Jesse don't, doesn't deserve tacos. That's that's kind of disrespectful. Well, holding my pocket, watching losses against me. You know, it was disrespectful. The the guy who asked, uh, what did they ask if if Jesse was? <laughs> Oh, he's out here. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, might pull up. Mm. He right over there by the uh by the joint, by the Sharif. That's that's where he's been uh recently. Oh, Chris Weber pocket watch. No, we're not no, no, <laughs> enough. No, and, and, no, and James, my guess is 223 million. James is barred from doing Kings players. It's not fair. I might be over on that. That might be too much. Tomorrow, for beginning 5 p.m. Yep. $178 million. 1251 Roseville Parkway. Thanks, guys. Someone tell them, save us a taco. We're going to pull up. That's seven minutes away. Come on, man. All right, we're leaving, guys. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks for the heads up, Manny. Um, we'll see you guys on Monday, man. Let's, like get a, let's get a dub, baby. Let's get a couple dubs.